Travis Level come through on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, etc. Got some uh, great tunes actually lined up. Excellent. I've brought in uh, some Amy Mann, some uh, uh, Neil Young. I'm playing my favourite Clash track. What, are you, what have you got for us, Steve? I've got a dynamite uh, hip hop tune by yeah. The Roots, which I think you enjoy. Love it, love um, it, love got it. a little bit of uh, Joni Mitchell, maybe swing that on later. Oh, and excellent. Um, I nearly brought in some Joni Mitchell. It's a uh, good job I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Um, wouldn't made sure we'll, so wouldn't have made any difference. No, we, 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 we would have probably played yeah. yours and yeah. then I'd have been Fine. told to. Go away. Go away with the uh, Carl, what have you got lined up for us as the producer? <laughs> right, well, uh, uh, Rockbusters. Been Excellent. off this week again. Has he? Yeah. Another had, week off? Another week off, yeah. 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 No, I didn't have a full week off. I had three days off yeah. because I was working all over Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, still didn't stop working, preparing stuff. <laughs> You've got a nice load of prizes there that yeah, I've sorted out. I had to come yeah. in especially to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Rockbusters Did you rifle continue. through the drawers up at Capital Gold instead of Daily? Yeah. 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 Uh, Rockbusters were still doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're bigging it up. Yeah. He's bigging it up. <laughs> yeah. Still doing that. We've got that. Uh, last week, um, we sort of changed educating Ricky a bit. Um, just a little don't bit. say we. I don't want to be incriminated in it. Well, yeah. well, changed it in a sense that rather than giving you too much information about different things, it's hard to sort of keep it all in. Yeah. I'm giving you sort of information on one thing. So yeah. last, last no, because some of your stuff was a little bit too intense. We've done. And that, the, my favourite story was there was a blind girl. She hit her head and got better. And I couldn't take all that in at once. <laughs> yeah. So you should really ration well, some we, of the we education. Sort of, we sort of Wasn't last you... week um, war related uh, stories. Yeah, it was. Uh, war. Do you think of that then? War and it was that, three sure. things. And it was the French um, battle. Uh, going over the top was John's got a moustache, <laughs> which you think was ambiguous because someone might have said that anyway. Well, look, you've remembered it, so it's working. So yeah. we'll be doing that. And, and last week, loads you of French people have just gone to war. Who were listening to this? Yeah. You uh, you said you wanted to learn some science this week. Did so, I? Yeah. <laughs> so so the title this week for that is Acid. I would sort you some science out. <laughs> Acid. Acid, that's How soft. long did that take you to call Listen, but you know, um, people, people love Carl. There's comedians coming to me and go, Carl's the funniest man. They, they absolutely yeah. love him, right? But I think we're only seeing half of it, right? Mm. If we can get him on television, his face then, when he's told me that title, was like a child at Christmas. Yeah. It was, it was... He was so proud of it. He yeah. was excited what I was gonna- it was brilliant. It's a bit like when a child's drawn a picture in art class, you you know you've got to stick it on the fridge, you've got but to, you basically yeah. think it's crap. Yeah, yeah. It's very much like that. All right, Carl? Is that good? Yes. So, we'll be doing that. Do we need them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, have you got another one? We have got another one. Looking at, uh, Snails. Oh week. yeah, snails. Do we okay, need snails? Because I know you're not a fan of snails, are you? Well, after a bit of research, I found some good stuff out about um, like they sleep for 13 years, some of them. Yeah. And that. So we'll be looking <laughs> into that. Where you that one? <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We've got ritual. <laughs> ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something that I told last, you about. Yeah. Well, last week's was brilliant. What it's was good it? to have a flat head in India. <laughs> it's good to have a flat head in India. That's I brilliant. All that. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just play one of my favourite Smith tracks. Can I just uh, make a request? So I'd quite like if you know if you've got time to bring back um, just for one week only White Van Carl. Sure. Because there's some quite interesting topics this week. Oh, is there things happening in the world? There's some things happening. There is. <laughs> there is a light that never goes out. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, isn't it's it? Amazing. What are they called? Those things? I just I imagine that just then I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, I'll just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sign that is. I don't know. <laughs> it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. When found anything and said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig. I said, if they need a wig, what, dogs going bald? <laughs> and he went, like, this is fine to him, he went, 
It's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke putting a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, but the and, the baby, and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child. Didn't, you didn't like, did you? I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it's a bit daft, that. Are you sure he's not the, the aging pop group? No. The but, animals. But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Cos my mum, um, we had a cat, we used to get through loads of cats cos we lived there. <laughs> Just what are you doing? No, Running a restaurant? We lived on- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, what do you mean? No, we lived on, like, a main road. Oh, yeah. Right? So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. It was their saying, risk. You know, stop wasting money, you know, it's, it's not- Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats! Right, so, um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> It's just bag of noobs, probably. <laughs> yeah, Melingra. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrified- I'm going to witch house. Vroom. Oh, God, <laughs> bloody hell. Vroom. Don't, so... don't let me go to the Pilkingtons. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason it kept being sick all the time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. That's definitely nice. So, my mum sort of, kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she <laughs> shaved it. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting So she off. wanted a dry wipe cat. So. <laughs> Why didn't she just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, it's weird so, so, now, so now he's cold and sick? No, but do you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that! Shave it, cos it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, that uh, is it's, it was the weirdest looking thing, I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. But as soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Can't me! Touch it. And then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- I-, I Carl! It must have, I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the- <laughs> Yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did, it. Ah! Oh, God! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, uh, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God! Oh! oh. Yeah. And were you upset each time, or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. <laughs> yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, f the, f the, f the first- Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look, and you don't- <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna pass. Yeah, I'm gonna, you got to play a record. No, but- Cos I just- Please, please. No, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up. Let You Down. Gold Rush on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Brilliant. Rick, so I was in, uh, uh, I don't know whether I should tell you this because it might rock you to the very core. Go on. But I was in an Indian restaurant the other night, and, uh, I don't- you've not seen the film- have you seen the film Notting Hill? I haven't, no. Right, in the film Notting Hill, have you seen that, Carl? Yeah, yeah, Do you remember the bit, uh, Julia Roberts plays uh, a movie star, rather like She's Julia She's the Roberts. most famous yeah. movie, yeah, I know And she's yeah. in a restaurant having dinner with, uh, uh, Hugh Grant, and she overhears some people in the restaurant slagging her off, and saying, oh, you yeah. know, she's a slapper, probably all actors are, all actresses are. And, uh, she's sort of stewing on it and, uh, Hugh Grant wants to say something and she says, no, I won't, I won't let you. And, and then as she's walking out, she goes and says something to them and of course their faces drop, they can't believe it's her. And he, I was in, uh, in a, uh, Indian restaurant the other night and they were slagging you off, Rick. Mm. Well, they were, what they were saying is they were going, oh, Ricky Jones, the thing about Ricky Jones is he's just like the character he plays. Right. He's just like David Brent in real life. And I was listening in and I was thinking, well, I want to say something. I want to go over and have a word and say, you know, you're, you're partially right. <laughs> but, uh, but I couldn't. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. I, I couldn't. 
What can I do? I couldn't really go over there and get into a rumble. I want to say, what do you mean that I'm yeah. like him? I, I use his face and his vocal cords, mm. but I mean, I, I can't help that. Uh, but it's that thing as well of, I don't know where they've got this information from. But, uh, no, 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 no. Because no, you're no, not, it's, so it's they're wrong. Well, it's, so it's, 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 yeah, they've received it from somewhere, or they've, they've read it or something. It's, it's just, I, I, but I don't know, I mean, I can't really be annoyed that they're just wrong. But it was it's, very it's, weird. It's like, it it's like being annoyed at a vicar believing in God. I can't get annoyed with him. Mm. I just don't believe. But because obviously they didn't recognise me, it's rather like you know when they talk about that idea that if you could go to your funeral, what would people yeah. be saying about you? It's yeah. the closest you could get to that. Well, you, that you you can hear what people are saying about your friends. But why don't you um to g get around to the go you go he is yeah. What do you think of the other fella sometimes <laughs> with him? <laughs> yeah, that tall fella he's good, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, yeah. it's the same actually because um. On the occasions I do get recognised from minor appearances, um, I never get any cool fans. I just get the nerds. I get the real nerdlingers. I don't get, you know, <laughs> beautiful women coming out. You're putting out. them off, though. Putting them off. You've got to take what you can. Well... So, but you'll have nothing. No, I know, but this girl came up the other day and she said to, hey, are you that guy who's involved with the office? I went, oh, yes, I am. She went, my boyfriend loves you. He's over here. And she pointed him out. I was uh, devastated. I thought, I'm in here. Yeah. There was nothing. There was nothing going on. But there was a guy who was in HMV and he was working with the tea. He'd been working with the tea and he saw me. He said, uh, would you sign this DVD? I went, oh, no problem. Me. I said, and I was trying to make conversation. I was trying to be frothy. And I said to him, oh, selling well, is it? And he yeah. went, it is, it is. Although we've had quite a lot of returns. <laughs> I said, well, don't tell me that. I what, don't know that. What did he mean? That they didn't like and it? I said, I said, what? You, people have been bringing no, it back. No, I think it's he went, glitches. He, went, oh, he said, they've been bringing it back. I said, what was the problem? He said, they didn't really like it. No! Yeah, they, some of them didn't really like it. You can give it back if you don't like yeah, it! No! I mean, I don't know whether they gave him the money back, but certainly that's what he dealt with. That's what he'd encountered. And then I he mean, said, we didn't give the money back, they just wanted to drop it off. What, they didn't even <laughs> want the money back? Yeah, yeah, they just wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't want it in the house. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want this rubbish in the <laughs> house. Oh, but we still get the money for it, do we? We still get the money, but Brilliant. do you know that I told you that time? Again, because I'm pe people that recognise me, again, I was in a record shop, there was a stack of office videos, and this guy went by, and I sort of heard them as they went by, he went, oh, office, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people like that. I think it's shit, he's made one, I agree. Really? And, uh, and of course, again, I was like, what could I do? I couldn't say anything. I couldn't pipe up and go, well, that's sort of... Well, I, I, like the, I like these, the fact that you're always hearing these loud vocals. Yeah. It, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Great. What's the chance of that? Two feet? That's brilliant. Maybe, well, that, maybe really everyone's always slagging it off. But it's part that's of it. it. Yeah, that's part of it, but also yeah. because I keep stand hanging out by stacks of office <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Wearing a t-shirt with a picture of you and me on. <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. What we got to play, Carl? Something that Steve wants. Well, actually, um, I must uh, dedicate this to uh, someone who's emailed in. I mentioned earlier that I was going to play some of the Roots, and Joe from Peterborough is very excited about that. So, uh, this is not from the current Roots album, sadly, which I've not fully absorbed yet, and therefore don't feel I can make a decision on which track to play, but maybe that'll come that's uh, sort of something in the future. That's the sort of and thought we put into our... You know, picking music. Exactly. I had these cassettes in my bag from last week. <laughs> sure. Anyway, this is from the album Things Fall Apart. It's The Roots featuring Erica Badu, You Got Me. Let's play it. Featuring Erica Badu, that's The Roots and You Got Me. Good. I like that one. Yeah. You've enjoyed that? Yeah. I love it, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's coming up to 1.30 and so it's time for Rockbusters. <laughs> it's a structured show. It's a new leaf. This show in the new year is going to be structured. Set pieces, um, hitting our marks, do you know what I mean? There'll be time checks, uh, uh, weather checks, <laughs> Rick hold out. Um, if you, if you, if you're driving, careful on that. <laughs> so do the prizes. Weather check for traffic, like yeah. if it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well again, an arbitrary selection of, uh, goodies. What are those politicians doing? <laughs> Was that XFM News? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> right, what have we got? So we've got, uh, for those that are a fan of the movie Donnie Darko, which a lot of people rave about this year, a sort of weird teenage movie, then, uh, there's a sort of, uh, sweatshirt there. It is actually quite nice. It's not bad at all. It's, uh, it's medium, so if you, if you're a bit of a bloater, yeah. don't bother to apply, unless you've got a friend already. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got here, um, a Graham Norton video. Certificate 18. All that. <laughs> so, it, please don't phone up unless, or, t sorry, don't email in unless you're above the age of 18. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, the best of his TV show. Yeah. Look forward to that. It's um, a big stiff video, that, isn't it? It's a big <laughs> stiff <laughs> cock of a video. <laughs> Thanks oh, very much. I meant you the- can't say, yeah, yeah, you meant the brood. Yeah. Um, there's also a fairly mediocre British wartime thriller, <laughs> Enigma, um, which a lot of people, it was hyped for a while, but it's actually interminable, I've seen it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, first series here of The Kumars at number 42 on DVD, uh, I think that's award winning, so, uh, that's available as well. We've got two CDs by the look of it. We've got, uh, Pulp's Greatest Hits, which I don't think sold very well, and so presumably they are giving that away. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Johnny Cash's um, current uh, album, uh, American for the Man Comes Around, there's some good cover versions there. Again, another big sell. A big yeah. sell. We're really pushing um, this. But it, it, yeah, it's a quite kooky. Uh, Johnny Cash here does covers of things including Personal Jesus. All oh, right. By Depeche Mode. Uh, we've got Bridge Over Troubled Water, his version of that. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it's, it's not bad. That's probably the best treat in that bunch. And, right. Um, I'm assuming there's some questions there, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we uh, go. If you're a new listener, the way it works, I'll give you a cryptic clue and some well. initials, and it sort of makes up a band. Yeah. Um, makes more sense when you hear it, I reckon. Not particularly. Well, not really. Although so, people do get it. I just worry about the. The state of our listeners. Go on. <laughs> right, so there's three of them. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. It's email only. It's I email repeat, only. it is email only. We Can are have too that lazy to <laughs> answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. here we go then. Number one. Um, there's, there's normally two easy ones and a difficult one. Sure. So here we go. Uh, number one. Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Yeah, that's AA. A.A. That's, yeah. So that's it's the first one. He's not gonna change his mind. Um. What do you mean, um? You just, just, just got them written out, have yeah, you? Yeah, I'm just thinking about what the answer is, so they don't write the answer down to Oh, for God. Don't <laughs> worry, they'll get it. Yeah, don't well, worry. Um, what do you, yeah. Well, you can't remember it. You came up with it. There's only three. I know, I know. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not weird. It's incompetent. <laughs> right, the second one, anyway. <laughs> I, I hope you get this. Um. <laughs> I hope you get this. <laughs> Yeah. And tell us the answer. This is a shambles. Hang right? on a minute. On, Go on. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. <laughs> and you don't know. You don't know that is. It'll, I'm sure it'll come to me once I see it on email. If I'll what do you mean? It. Once they get it, you'll agree with them. I'll know if it's the one I had down as the answer. This is brilliant. Come Imagine on, Jeremy Paxman doing that. Going, yeah, you'd have what, your time. Is that right? <laughs> Go on. Right, so, uh, that's give that us, one. Give us that one again. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. But you're confused. I don't understand how you can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, what's the final one? The third one, uh, <laughs> I'll have to put that woman in the oven. And that's A, B. Alright, quickly give us them again. Right, so the first one, don't argue with him, he ain't, he ain't gonna change his mind. That's A, A. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. And, um, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. All right. Okay. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm gonna play a classic track now by, oh, uh, Neil Young, Alabama. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Neil Young, Alabama. Uh, Carl is still confused. He's waiting, he's biting his fingers, waiting for an email to tell him the answer to the clue he made up but can't get. <laughs> I love that as an experiment. <laughs> as a psych- I mean, that would confuse psychologists, that you come up with something that you can't get. It's brilliant. Yeah, you came up with the question, you don't know the answer. And you expect them to, but you can't, and you made it up. Look at your face, look on fi- Play some adverts. Honestly, Juan, by, uh, Billy Corgan's new band there, um, X Smashing Pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit like them, but yeah. I like it. It's alright, not bad. I like it. Yeah. I'm excited to know, Rick, incidentally, that someone's got the right answer. So, uh, Carl's Carl really knows the answer, yeah. Brilliant. Well <laughs> done, Carl. <laughs> You're a fool. <laughs> right. Well, um, talking of which, <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, <laughs> um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway. Here's the first one. Uh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you I familiar know, with the story? I didn't know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium, and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium, which was incredibly vague, but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not enough. <laughs> ah, oh, but I'll tell you what though, talking, about, talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> no, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh. I don't even know if it's ghost really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Right? Sure. There's this woman yeah. and she's, well she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> Okay. She's, sure. she's walking down like a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, she's walking down and a woman comes up cycling past, right? 
the woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About fifteen years later- Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She's riding her own bike. Riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh, yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened, like, 15, 20 years ago, right. it's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, not, not another child. No. So right. it's her, she's seen well, herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, what, why do you ever con- I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I, I don't- I, I, I'm honest, I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird though, isn't it? But it's not true. It didn't happen. Nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, uh, and as an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did she stop and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <sighs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, and where is this information? Was it, did it happen to someone you know? No. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the 14 times. Ah, oh, right. Well, uh, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Now what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's, he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. Or right. the next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because <laughs> I, I'll tell you this, they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, uh, no, where, where would they start? Yeah. My <laughs> fellow is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, isn't it, like cowboys and Indians, they didn't have playstations and two-pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean? In the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's, you know, that's the world, isn't it? It's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right, in a way, in his, in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what it's, he said. He just said there's always been violence. You know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like- you know, dinosaurs, look at them. They, they caused a lot of And then trouble. he went too far and made himself yeah. <laughs> sound no, like no, a fool again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened, it always will. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't try and change it. Yeah. yeah. Just chill out is what you're saying. Do you know, uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're <laughs> little and go, be careful what you do in life. <laughs> Oasis, Supersonic, still good. Still as good as ever. Still good on XFM 104.9 with Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You'll be pleased, Rick. Go on. Ricky Anderson has, uh, emailed him. Dickers! Dickers, Danderson. Oh, yeah, what are you doing, uh, Dindo? He, he's, uh, he's probably our, uh, biggest fan. Um, diddler, you little diddler. <laughs> exactly. He has emailed in, as ever. Ricky, your show fascinates me. How do you maintain such levels of senseless drivel? <laughs> That's from, uh, from Randers, from Randy Anders. Little diddle dummers! <laughs> Oh! <laughs> so, uh, thanks again, uh, um, Dudley. Yeah. Uh, well done. He's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice I get a there. buzz. I, 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 I was disappointed last week where he didn't. What? what ask him why he's, uh, didn't. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't respond last week. No, it's a shame. Probably busy. Yeah. I don't believe he had something better to do. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. I can't believe that of anyone no. when uh, <laughs> no, you've got this sort afternoon. of level. Exactly. Uh, intense chat. What have you done this uh, week, Carl? Well, I've had a, uh, got a few days off, haven't I? Yeah. I'm still. You know, doing stuff for this show and that, but <laughs> managed to get a few really. hours in. Yeah, um, not really. Just, just doing, doing nothing and uh, bought a place. So I was, I was looking at kitchens. Yeah. Weighing some of them up and yeah. uh, checking them out. Checking them out and uh, also ordered a sofa. Yeah. Nice sort of comfy sort of le leatherish mm -hmm. sofa. Oh, a leatherish. Oh, I don't, I don't like leather sofas. I don't, no, I don't... Yeah, but what are you picturing? A leather um, sofa. A leather sofa. Yeah, I just, like, I just squeaky and it's- No, uh, this isn't. This isn't, isn't it? No, this isn't like that. But I want- I want a really old, sinky, yeah. dent of fabric. I want- it's I want a sofa that is as comfortable as a bed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, if it was acceptable, you'd have a bed in your lounge, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> If that was allowed, yeah. without seeming <laughs> like you were sort of, like, elderly, 
or That'd just- That'd be good. And I'd have- I'd have a drip going in- Yeah. Sort of like with nutrients, you know, I, I can't be bothered to chew. No, no you can't, lager, yeah. Sort of lager with sort of, uh, uh vitamins. Vitamins. And then- yeah. and then one going from the knob down to the toilet. To the lower tree, uh, yeah. And with all the remote controls, and mm. I- uh, that would be amazing. To be fair, you're almost there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. certainly seen the toilet tubing. <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my dad's bed, right? My dad would never change his chair. My mum would try and get rid of it because it it would just fit to him and it'd just be absolutely dilapidated, right? And what, like he's bed. got he had like his own chair in the lane. Yeah, his yeah. own chair, right? And then uh uh and his bed, right? When uh they had separate rooms towards the end. Um and his bed, right, it was just he had it for years and it was a big dip. It really? was just like a spoon in the middle where it was just- it was concaved where it said it. Wow. And my mum <laughs> used to just vacuum it out. Oh! Where all the little bits of like, you know, he'd have a fag in bed or he'd do his roll-ups in bed. Yeah. And uh- <laughs> Oh, that's great. Him, what, why do you like that bed? It's curved. You, you, you know, he goes, he goes, it means I can't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that it was like <laughs> in a hammer. That's great. That can't uh, be good for his back. Well, I don't think it matters towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. A, a hammock would be, I, I, I really yeah. would love a, a hammock. Or anything. A big bean bag would be good, wouldn't it? With a telly. A, a bean bag as big as a bed would be amazing. Yeah, but this is still the telly thing, because uh, do you, Prop yourself up a little bit to watch it. Do you watch it on the side? Which is annoying. Do you turn the telly on the side? That's always. I've always wondered about that. The, we the weird thing is, right? You know, I've mentioned before about certain things that are just right. Like your hand, five fingers is is just enough, mm. right? <laughs> one more. The sex tip. It ruins stuff. Yeah, well, one less. One less than you. You know, I was saying about drying your pots and that, it'd be really slippery and that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and the weird thing is, right, I think bed, that's na what nature had in, in mind. <laughs> no, yeah. but like, like, um, my mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right? And, um, they had loads of furniture that they collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had s too much furniture, right? Mm. And, uh, they had this double bed. And that was for like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped around because, the bed, yeah. yeah, but because the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And well, he just sliced some off. Like a big sandwich, just c cut just a bit off. Just cut, cut the crust off. How, how much is that, would you say? But. Eight inches, six About inches. Eight inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. Because it'll all fall out the side and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? It so just collapsed. It didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed. <laughs> but, but the weird thing is, he did it and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is- this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he- why did he build the wardrobes first without <laughs> measuring- putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric- one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just, presumably there was just kind of what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh. with the legs? Did he have to move the legs he in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the, the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was like, sure. yeah, that's all right, done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about 45 minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. And you goes, really you are mean? your father's son, aren't you? <laughs> I said, <"That's laughs> not, not right said, with not that. right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said that- and there was a big kerfuffle. My man was saying, look, you have our bed then and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know. <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you like every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six can, months. I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, do you know I mean, Channel 4 or something? Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pennington's. Be... Uh, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Ho <laughs> ho That's brilliant. Is anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or Ex Bravo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? Or do you want to play, do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing something of yours? 
Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you, maybe? Oh, yeah, no, I'd say, yeah, I'd like to play this. Yeah, Bronze Age Fox, uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, tune, Carl, the always the working, he's always tune. working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's yeah. on the bobby ball. Coldplay, the scientist, X-Men 104.9, I'm looking to raise with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkers, and Carl, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you doing then? Let's, uh, let's have on. a quick uh, reprise, if we could, of the, uh, of the Rockbusters clues. Yeah, Rockbusters, if you've just tuned in, you've missed it this week, uh, it's your three well, no, you haven't, that's why we're giving the clues again. Yeah, I know, but if they haven't. Eh? What? Like, say if they've been busy. Just, just give the clues again. <laughs> um, first oh, one. Oh, God. Um, don't argue with him, because he, he isn't gonna change his mind. That's AA. <laughs> Second one, um, he always gets what he, uh, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P, yeah. And the third and final one, oh, I might have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. Interesting. Are we telling him or still- No, 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 no they, they, yeah. people have still got a chance to win those extraordinary prizes. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've still got on. features to come though, Steve. It's Go incredible. On. We've still got Ritual, got where, that, remember last time? People in India, it's good to have a flat head. <laughs> yeah. We've got Do We Need em. Mm. I've got That's Ridiculous. That's a great game. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get Do We Need em out of the way? Get, get Do We Need em out of the way? Yeah, just, uh, let's, yeah. Uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we need them all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus, just yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not. Right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Sea snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, I don't know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Um, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Do you know what I mean? Because, because I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a, a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right. So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps. Apparently, the glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right. Right. Um, apparently, a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones. Mm. But that, that's a problem they're causing. All right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. Well, get you glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. He doesn't. And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But I think sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They um, graze on algae, isn't they? But, they but provide food for other, other animals. I mean, you'd say that about any fish, you know, or any animal, why do they, why do they exist? Would, would you be know. upset if, you know, someone said, we're getting rid of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. You would they're, be? They're an animal, you know, I wouldn't... Forget being like favouritism and all that I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around you can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job, don't be worrying about that, because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine. Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, yeah, that's what I think anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, uh, descendants around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I, I, I think that sounds a bit... 
years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got a, this is, you know, it's not for us to say do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> I'm proud of you. That he was, was getting really quite annoying. I know. Why did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You just well, don't tell the them. the thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be <laughs> safe because he could look after jellyfish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid, you could oh tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So oh. they've been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, they done? that was great, Carl. Play a record. Oh, well done. Better uh, than man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's, it's brilliant. I love that. Amy Man, Red Vines. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our, um, regular email from, uh, Dickie Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy Sam. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned that because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain, uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week, only I was in, uh, HMV returning the 14 copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> That's, uh, that's from Randers. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's, he's explained himself. Oh, he's dear. He's excused himself. Oh, Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Right, okay, Carl. That's ridiculous. Three amazing scientific facts, one of which is spurious. Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, one. Um, girls can't throw because the part of their brain that allow men to throw properly in a girl is used up in emotion. Two. Gravity isn't instantaneous, it works at the speed of light, the force of gravity. Three, statistically, you're more likely to be trampled by a donkey than dying in a plane crash. Now, even though the last one sounds daft, I think I, I've read that, about the donkey thing. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, girls... The force of the first one. Girl, not... Girls can't throw properly because the part of the brain <coughs> that allow men to throw is yeah, used up in emotion yeah, in a woman. Yeah. Gravity in, isn't instantaneous. It, it works at the speed of light. So when you drop something, it, the force kicks in at the speed of light. What do you reckon, Steve? Well, it's well, not for me to say. Is this a trick one where none of them are ridiculous? Or no, one, one of them. One, one, of one of those three. One of those three is not true. Right. Well, it's definitely not the donkey. Right. So. Uh, I reckon the, uh, the girl one, throwing stuff. Is ridiculous. Yeah. Correct. Well done. Well Very done. Very well done indeed. Yeah. Very well done indeed. That's two out of two he's got so far. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, yeah. well, I'll teach you some stuff now. <laughs> right? I've so I just say, I've always been fascinated by the, uh, the donkey fact, because it is an extraordinary fact that more people are killed apparently by donkeys. Yeah. Than they are by airplane crashes. Well, I suppose in countries where they're used, and, yeah. you know, used a lot, that, you know, they, um, they go a bit mad and squash but, it. But my concern is that <coughs> there's, when you go on a plane, there's so many checks. I mean, it takes on 40 minutes to go through all the checks, the air pressure, the cabin pressure, the fuel. Yeah. Checking the, you know, flights, the take off, all the rest of it. Our checks for donkeys. Nothing. Did someone close the gate? I think so. Exactly, That's yeah. it, that's our, that's is our he donkey annoyed? Checks. Is he annoyed or not? <laughs> yeah. You're not working him too hard, are you? Yeah, yeah. He's got his arm. Is there two, is there two holes for the ears? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's accident. I think they're picking us off. I think they're yeah. so annoyed that a nickname for them is ass. Yeah. And they've got to wear the little hat. You know, they, they get, they've got ride kids, you know, give kids rides on the beach and that. I think they're just sort of annoyed. Yeah. Maybe they're sort of just picking us off one by one. Yeah. Teaching us a lesson. Not, we, if we had the same stringent checks <laughs> exactly. on donkeys as we do on f international flights, maybe exactly. there'd be a little less there. <laughs> exactly. Wise words. <laughs> Cheers. Wise, <laughs> if slightly incoherent <laughs> words. <laughs> Go so, on, Carl. Got that right. Um, so, um, <laughs> acid. I would sort you out with some science. Brilliant. I forgot the puns in mind, didn't I? I forgot the puns. Yeah. Go on. Right, so, um, yeah, you asked to sort of be taught some science and that last week after being taught about war, so, yeah. uh, did some research. <laughs> and, um, there's a few things, I think we'll just cover 
cover one of them now. Go on. Um, we've <laughs> talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> <laughs> we have I love the fact that Simon Sharma has never started a programme <laughs> like that. Uh, the, the Jacobites. We've talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> Go on. It's, it's a little bit, I mean, it's not your traditional science stuff, but sure. it's still well, interesting and it's a little bit, you know, it's still Yeah, we've talked about hairy kids. We have, we have disproportionately, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think this show's talked about hairy kids more than any other radio yeah. show. Well, it's, it's one that- it's Sorry, I noticed both of you there dropped the H, or the H, or however it's I called. I had to. So, it, airy, airy kids, yeah. hairy, yeah. hairy children, not, yeah. um, yeah. sort of airy, kind of light-headed or- Yeah, Well, there was, there was the case of the, uh, <laughs> the one who lived in China. Yeah. And, uh- Which was weird for two reasons, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, go on. Uh, one was, like, he was covered in air. That's all really weird. And yeah. the doctor sort of checked him over and said, well, yeah, he is airy, but he's quite healthy apart from he had a little bit of eczema <laughs> and a boil. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we have sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad, he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, going out of school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had, had an argument, and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this. It's happening all the time now, they kept having arguments, so the kid, Ran off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. God. Now he he left. He went and ran in the woods, and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. <laughs> right. And he thought this isn't a bad life. You know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them. Um, <laughs> and the weird <laughs> he loved thing bananas. is, this <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. Yeah. He grew a load of hair on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's the, it, 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 I bet someone will back me up on this. But th no, no, you can't, you, you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit, uh, more downy or they might, uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much that we, you know, but you don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange in that, but he, he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted listen, to Listen, listen. He was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day, with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dillon's was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, he was living with them, and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food. <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um, what, he, went, he went in naked. <laughs> no, it was there, covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair. So it was decent. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they. That was a weird thing. They thought it was a monkey in the shop. And <laughs> so went, presumably he had a big long beard as well because he couldn't shave, could he? No, no, he just covered. He looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a the monkey. How did he walk? Newspaper How did he milk. walk? How did he walk, Carl? Did he walk start upright or? Whistling along. The, just pi the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know if that's when he was running he was. away after he did, did sort of, you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well. He wasn't even like an adult with the beard. No, he was a kid. Brilliant, brilliant. And the the beard went, kicked in a little bit. So early, listen. So the Go people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him. Yeah. Shaved him. Right. Got it all off. Didn't grow back again. Right. It just. It You're grew. an idiot. Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it. You're an idiot. And they'll email in, they don't let me down. And they'll agree that you're an and idiot. The, no, no, they'll, they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. Libertines, time for heroes, and XFM 104.9. Right, okay, so have you got anything that is science as opposed to nonsense? Well, um... Kid went off with some monkeys, grew air, yeah. came back, shaved him, it didn't grow back. I mean, just think. Right, like something else. Um, there's a few things I found. Yeah. Um, there's a fella. Oh God. Uh, who had hiccups for 69 years. <laughs> that was a bit annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a dog with a wig that we've discussed. <laughs> uh, Imagine if you just tuned in. <laughs> yeah. There's the dog with the wig that we've already discussed. Uh. Did we discuss that? that? Not really. Did I not tell you what he said? I did, didn't I? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What else have I got? Well, there's something here that you sort of know. Is this going out live? Yeah, this is happening, right? right? Go on. But remember when you talked about, um, 
sponges. Yeah. If you get a red sponge and a blue sponge. You liquidise them, pour them back into a tank, after a few hours, that they, they know which was which and they, they reform as a red sponge and a, and a blue sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was weird when you told me. Yeah. Looked it up, did a bit of research. Yeah. Thought that's sort of sciencey. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with a mouse's brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain a bit more. No, you can't. Uh, if, if you get a dead mouse, yep. um, put its brain into a blender, you know, blend it up, um, leave it standing for a bit. Making that up, aren't you? You get, you're confusing this, you watch Nigella Lawson make some sort of pudding. No, <laughs> What no. do you mean, what, do you, wait, it, it, wait, it won't work with the brain. Well, it, it does with a, I mean, not, not human brain. Don't be trying although, that. But, although... No, a mouse, a mouse one. <laughs> a mouse one. And what happens? It sort of reforms. Goes back together again. No, it's, it's you know. Because apparently it's made up of the same stuff as... But it doesn't, does it? Because if it's dead, if it's a, if it's a dead brain, the cells can't act anyway. The fact the sponge is that it doesn't kill the cells, it liquidizes them, it doesn't kill the cells. Yeah. So it couldn't be a dead brain anyway. It would have to be a live brain taken out from a live mouse for the cells to be getting oxygen and working and, and being sensitive to each other. And that, uh, I, I don't see how that could work like it does in sponges. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, do you know what I mean? You're not a scientist. I've sure. just sort of read it and yeah. gone, oh, that's, that's interesting, I'll tell Ricky and Steve about it. Yeah, yeah. You're quizzing you me as it. if I have come up with it. No. It's someone else has done it and said yeah. it works. Mm. Sure. So I'm not, do, you think, I'm not... do you think ghosts are behind it or do you think there's a scientific explanation for it? No, it's just, uh, it's just one of them weird things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, that's, uh, that's what you sort of science covered yeah, for this yeah. week. Well, that was another barnstorming feature. <laughs> 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 is that it? Is that the two things you got Thanks this week? Thanks very much for that. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, there's... They're, they're there's the nothing behind them, do you know what I mean by this? There's not a, there's not like a weight of intellect behind these facts. Why don't it? you make that your science project for this week? Find a dead mouse somewhere, Carl, and a <laughs> blender, <laughs> and we'll bring that in next week, we'll do it live on air and see what happens. <laughs> oh. Well. Do you feel sort of let down a little bit sometimes with our reactions? Well, what are you expecting us to do? What- are you expecting us to just like look at you, open mouthed, staring at you in awe? Just like, oh god, yeah, where did you find that out? And like- yeah, but you we, know, we, we know, we know, we know where you found it out. You looked on the internet and a strange homemade website by a maniac somewhere, uh, who puts on stupid things that he heard through Chinese whispers. It's- that's where you get your information from. I, I doubt that anything you've ever come up with is, is verified. If it is, it's luck. But what, what do you expect me to <laughs> do for you? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just- <coughs> You know, I'd like to know what the source of the information is. I'd like it to be, you know, a research study by the University of Columbia, rather than, you know, a guy who calls himself Mr. Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> on a website somewhere, <laughs> www.lunatics.com. <laughs> I mean, oh god. <laughs> Something, some kind of evidence, do you know what I mean? I'll go, I'll just warn you now, you know that Steven Spielberg thing's coming, Taken, yeah? About alien abduction. When you watch it, I just remember this, it's not a documentary. Okay? Alright. Alright? You remember our E.T., we were yeah. discussing that earlier, you know that's not fact. <laughs> fact or fact. Brilliant. Black Star Radiohead from the Benz on XFM 104.9. Rick, John has emailed in. Yes. It looks here like he's maybe trawled the web himself. I mean, I don't know if people just immediately leap onto the web every time Carl says something in, 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 in his defence. I think our listeners are always on the web. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he seems like he's reprinted here a news story, which seems to confirm Carl's monkey boy story. Yeah, what was the news Doctors story? Doctors baffled by boy six covered in ape-like hair. Doctors in Kazakhstan are baffled after finding a six-year-old boy covered in ape-like hair. Yeah. The boy, called Able, was found in a remote mountain village close to the Chinese border. He's covered in thick hair from head to toe and has an oval-shaped skull. Doctors suspect nuclear radiation or a genetic disorder may be responsible. Fine. Um, but it's an interesting bit But here. But sorry, it's not that you could have genetic defects. I've seen lots of people born with, um, long noses, five feet, etc. I'm saying you that he wasn't story. normal. <laughs> he, he wasn't normal and then went to live with, um, monkeys and grew the hair. <laughs> well, that's, that's my true. point. But it says his mother and father are distant relatives. Such marriages are common in the Kazakhstan mountain hamlets. Now, uh, the village elders 
were consulted as to what to do with him, right? Now these are the villagers, these are the, these are the wise men of the village, these are the people presumably that all year long are telling the, the village how to live, how to survive. Yeah. You're in charge because you've lived longest. You're, yeah, exactly, you're presumably solving any kind of moral conundrums, yeah. any sort of awkward things. Do you know what they suggested that they do with their hairy son? Go on. Send him to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> the cow's not in. Put him in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> that was what they suggested and uh, the mother actually wanted him to go to school. Um, Instead, there's a, I don't know, school circus. or circus, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's better for him. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure. <laughs> we must consult the elders. What do you think, Carl? Uh, it's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> what, the circus? Yeah. Well, you ran away from it. it. Think yeah. Love it. But remember that thing that I saw about that fella who, uh, Come I don't on. know if you should talk about it really, so Go on. Tell us now. You've hooked me. Come on. <sighs> you can say it. It's okay. What, are you worried that it might be insulting to someone? Well, it's not, it's not nice, but... It, well, you're not taking the mickey out of it, you're telling us to go on. It's just, it was in that book again that you got me, you know, the book full of weird people. Go and, on. And things that are wrong with them, and airy people, and... Yeah. Lad with three legs and that. There was a fella, mm. um, basically just a head, and, uh, and a little body on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. Right? Picture of him having a shave. <laughs> and he was shaving with his, with his <laughs> mouth bit, uh, his tongue. Like that on the radio. Yeah. Like Carl is now doing an impression of a man shaving with his mouth. Yeah. Well, it's just a head, bear in mind. He's doing an impression. Imagine a head <laughs> with a very tiny body on a skateboard shaving with its tongue. That's what Carl was doing. Oh, uh, and he was depressed because he kept getting hats for Christmas. <laughs> but, but, but if you were him, you would just grow a beard, wouldn't you, rather than... <laughs> Oh, Why? God. Rather than go through all but that hassle. But the wheels of his skateboard. True. <laughs> Clash. Rock the Cars Bar on XFM 104.9. Nearly it. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Plumpton. So the answers to this week's Rockbusters. Yeah, yeah. Can you give us uh, the clues again in the answers? Yeah. Uh, the first one was, um, don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. The initials there were AA. That's Adamant. Adamant. Yeah. Alright. That's, that's, that's good. That's a good one. Uh, second one, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Pixies. Right. <laughs> picks his, picks his, it kind of works, yeah. yeah. And the, uh, third one, I'll have oh, to, I'll let uh, you have that one. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was AB, that was Anita Baker. <laughs> Anita Baker. <laughs> it's good. Anita Baker. Anita yeah, Baker. I'll let you have all three today. So, uh, You've done well. So, do you want to pick a winner, Steve? Well done to Mark Ledder from Bo. He wins those fairly mediocre prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy them. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, we've had a few laughs. A few we've had a few today. laughs, a few tears, a few scientific breakthroughs. <laughs> exactly. Um, Gotta get a picture of Carl somewhere in the national press, just his little round head there. I had an email here. Carl is trying to distract attention from the fact that he is a monkey raised among humans and horses and has failed to develop hair. It's, uh, I, I can just imagine him yeah. being the second cleverest in a troop of monkeys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Second cleverest. <laughs> it, do you know what I mean? So, uh, it, 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 it fleas out of their hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his little face. I'll tell you what. Pete, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a picture of you. Just put it in the radio section of Pete. Just, this is what Carl looks like. Oh, another email. Someone said, um, when the monkey boy went to the shops, he was naked. Where did he keep his money? <laughs> Good point. Didn't happen then. Right. Well. <laughs> 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 oh. So that's that. We didn't even do all, all, uh... What do you mean? Get, we didn't get round to ritual. Oh, come on, give no, us we ritual. Haven't, we haven't really we have, time. quickly, quickly. No, it's... We have got time, just do it! Why haven't we got time? It's ten two. Right, well, we've got a long track to finish on. Well, just do it. It's... Do are it! You, are you familiar with the place called, uh... <laughs> Go on. Easter Island. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you know what they do out there? Uh, eat eggs. I right, don't know. Well, Go that's on. Close. Go on. Right. What they do, right, there's, uh, there's a lot of people living on an island. Yeah. Easter Island? And <laughs> to find out who's gonna be running the place, <laughs> they, um... They don't hold elections, do they? They have these, well, they have these birds that lay, like, expensive eggs on a, on an island. Expensive eggs! Okay. They lay expensive eggs. Fabergé eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. On this island. Yeah. Uh, Easter once Island? A year, once a year. No, off, off it, like, about, oh, yeah. about two miles out, right? Oh, yeah. And Whitson the, Island. And the sea, yeah. the sea. Shrew <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, back Just tell us! No, 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 you, no, 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 tell us! Right, finish Next it now. Week. You, don't you dare! Oh, I'll, I'll see you later. Johnny Mitchell. You. Blue Motel Room from the album The Jerry. It's a song that this week. Thanks for listening. The Flaming Lips.
Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me is Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good morning. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna own up straight away, I've done very little work towards this show this week. <laughs> <I'm a bit laughs> you busy. surprised me. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I apologise if it sounds a bit sort of- Thanks for being honest though, Well, Rick. no, I don't, you know, I don't want people to go, oh no, that was a bit shoddy this week. I hope it's not gonna be that every week. Yeah. So, it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So, right. you know, you normally- You'll probably have to help me out. All right. You have to do some of the some of the work, Carl. You might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know. I mean, because I know Steve's done nothing towards it either. So, the onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In the, you know, essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, for you know, people on buses to uh, comedians like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day, and that you know. It, it, they go, uh... People on buses? I've never been on a bus you for years. You haven't been years. on a bus no. for like twelve years, yeah. have you? Yeah. <laughs> People <I've>... on buses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny, I just know well, the idea no. of you being on a bus. Well, the idea of you well, handing over your fare. Well, They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, I love Carl. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? Twenty pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously, how much is it? Uh, um... W one, one adult for Terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact, you know they do that thing where like if they're interviewing kind what of is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone p? famous- No, uh, it's a quid, isn't it? It's always, a quid. They always say how much is a pint of milk and that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. It's not a quid. 120. No, it's not 120. Pint of milk, about 50p. <laughs> 30p. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Wow. Because, well, I mean, it's fascinating because you gave this stuff, I mean, you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity, didn't what? you? You were, you were always- Lazy. Because people always say to me like, oh, um, you know, Ricky seems a bit obnoxious. Who know. says that? Well, no, they say, you know, no, they, no. Who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it? <laughs> I swear to God, he came up, he said, uh, he said I was watching an interview with Ricky, he said, see, he's not a nice piece of work. I went, well, I mean, he said, no, nah, I've got friends like that. You know, just, and it's like they're always talking, they're a bit irritating, you know, and you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute. He went, well, no, no, well two things, you know, it's sort of my job talking, and mm. being interviewed, essentially you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah about yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> He had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> well, I say a list, a it, petition. It wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? It's yeah. a great tune, but I'd love to hear it remixed. Yeah. Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? Remixed by Slim. Yeah. Yeah, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington. Ooh, <laughs> stuff, oh, stuff to dear, do, what's going on? stuff to talk now? about and that. What's been, oh, going so. on? what's been going on? Oh, um, before you came in, oh you saw it didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the- <laughs> <laughs> An experiment? Yeah. Well I, all I know is as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area, you were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray? Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but I'm interested, explain more about the experiment. Well I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate. Right, before I either caved his skull in, or, right. you know what I mean? So, you had to hold it quite loose, okay. so it could like vibrate, but you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on. <laughs> is it? It is perfect. Cause Carl, it's like could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, you haven't said a word. It's had a bit of an effect on me. <laughs> <laughs> Still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We right. were talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not going to mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, I'll be alright. Yeah. Okay, so. Good. Can we I replay that later, maybe I towards the end of the show? Just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound? He said, really he said about, uh, said talking about time out, I said about something about in time out, and he went, ah, uh, yeah, do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah, I read it, I get it every week, yeah. He went, ah. Uh, there's no point though, is it? Because it's, it's like a f telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> when I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were and there was 42 pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you, were you sat in your room? You, there was nothing else that you could I, think I've of I've been to do. working, it's when we did the show from, you know, XFM did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah. You were sat in the hotel day, room? Sat in the room, waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. 
sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're, we're all listening? gonna meet up, we're gonna meet up with, you know, with Simon So you, you thought, I'm not gonna switch the TV on, I'm not gonna read a the magazine. The telly was on, nothing was on, I wasn't impressed with anything that was on, so I'm looking <laughs> around the room, I had a couple of the free shortbreads. <laughs> <laughs> He remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. Had a couple of them, and then um, looked around. There was a bible, and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up, and I immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Macintosh. Yeah. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. There's loads of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> I wonder just how popular it is. Forty-two pages of Max. Did you count how many pages there were? Yeah. Did and you did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page, or did you literally no, I count counted? Them? I counted. Right. And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. If quite someone could tell you that approximately how many sorry, names I, they what, get on one page. How long did it take you this whole procedure? What, ca the counting? Yeah. Not, not that long. No, it's just two pages. pages. Yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together, and what did you luckily. do once you digested that information? What What did you do with that information? Did I you tell people? It, I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the biscuit, I love to get in his head. I imagine it's a big warehouse, and there's l lots of partitions for weird stuff like bo kids born with tentacles yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, th uh, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, <laughs> and you yes. go in there. So I'm looking for it. He goes, "Hang on, hang on. I know where they. I, I put that somewhere. Hang on, somewhere. hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang is on, this on. the one when uh, they shave the cat? No, <laughs> it's not shaving the cat. This oh. is the Max. The Max. I know Scotland. The shortbread. <laughs> well, don't don't give me the shortbread because that's putting me off. But um. The, uh, the what's the name though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the airy kid? And uh. <laughs> I think that's talking. every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. Alright, well, we were talking about that airy kid in the woods. Mm. And, um. Did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll, uh. told Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me, come on, tell it now. No, right. no, no, no. Oh, well, tease I me with we it. should keep this. It sounds exciting stuff. Right. That's, that's got him. Right, so we'll be doing that. <laughs> we've, we've, we've got. Got, got the audience. <laughs> we've got. We've got Rockbusters again this week. Yeah. Okay. We've got, do we need them? Yeah. What, right. are you, what are you trying to get rid of this week? Cockroaches. Right, no, good I one. Can't, I can't think of a reason to keep them. No. Looking into that well, I, I sort the matter out, that's okay. coming up. <laughs> Excellent. We've got, um, I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh yeah? Yeah. He phoned me up today, uh, yesterday it was, you know he's been researching, like, educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, what do you want to know about? I don't know, he said, uh, you interested in space? And I went, yep, yeah, right. Yeah. Phoned me three hours later, he went, no, nothing about space. I went, what? He said, I couldn't find anything interesting. I said, you couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right. But uh, no way, he said, is there anything else you want to know about? I went, all right, uh, I went, anthropology. He went, what's that? I went, study a man. I sent a man. He went, like what? I went, like, our roots from, from caveman through and all the, he went, and I said, Australopithecus, uh, Neanderthal. He went, well, you know all that then? I went, no, I, he went, <laughs> right. He went, don't you want to know how a lung works or something? <laughs> how a lung works. <laughs> and I said, well, tell me how a fridge works. He went, oh, I said, it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, so how a microwave works. He went, I know. I went, I said, fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket, went past some sort of ray thing, it melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. So today we're doing, uh, sort of medical-ish type things under the banner of, um, colon then. Educate me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do it again. Colon then. Educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So, yeah. colon. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's, uh, oh. that's a little heading. You're gonna be learning three things, sort of medical-ish, uh, yeah. before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you want to, uh, Pretty much, yeah. A bit of suede. Go on then. How many O'Reilly's are there, do you think? <laughs> no, I don't. Little chance for you. <laughs> suede, animal nitrate. That's really got a Johnny Marr influence at the end, that guitar, hasn't it? Brilliant. And still, yeah. still brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Tell us about this monkey, Carl. You're gonna love this one, Steve, Go right? On. Uh, yeah, so last week we were talking about how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood, he got airy. Right? Yes, no! Leave it there, oh, Rick. We haven't got time to go into right, it. So that's what happened. And that's what happened. He lived with the monkeys, he went airy. That's, anyway, what, happened. that's what happened. Looked into, uh, some other stuff about, like, airy kids and all that. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. came across this story about a bloke, right, who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right? So, uh um, Trouble's brewing. L loving his job and that, but it's, qu it's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people, you're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, well. he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to, to a human. Well, that he pays. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. Is well, it dangerous? What, what do you mean? What type was it? What, do you Just let him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. So it's a chimp. It was okay. a chimp. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Does so it? he it's gets pally with him. Right. So he gets pally with well, him. Well, they gone all together. Well, no. I mean, it starts off. It starts off just checking each other out and uh, you know probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right. Anyway, this goes on for a while. Is uh, you know they, they're getting on well on that, and then after a while, right. The monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. Right. So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks he could he could live at home with me. This yeah. Because we're getting on the storm. Yeah. Right. So he takes him home and before is this you know the beginning it, of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried because he's already <laughs> imitating him and they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> Ah, brilliant! Right, so Go anyway, on. so it's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. It's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pinky tips. As a, <laughs> as a, uh, it finishes the day off with, oh, a, with a. Oh dear! Finishes, <laughs> finishes the day off with what? With it a, does, a, a it doesn't have to move a piano at one point. Does <laughs> he it? finishes the day off with a little brandy. Yeah. <laughs> what, he pours himself. Up. Is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl. You're, you're listen, a maniac. Listen, mate. no, this is this is why it attracted me. It's amazing, right? <laughs> so he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of. Um, I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body is hairless. Hair this. Right, apart from his head. Right, so he's right. got a nice so it's the head. opposite of the kid. No, yeah. This is what well, I'm that, that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if you he's don't shaved even know. or if it's How did it say, uh, then the, the I'll hairless, bring, what, what? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep so going. anyway, so, well, um, so this is going on and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because He's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the zoo. This is such <laughs> rubbish. So the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying, well, he's got his other Well, it gets to a point when he friend. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back, so he said, you stay at home. So You the... are j you're talking such a- Just let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me- oh, I'm fascinated. It's, it's, it's nearly over anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary, Carl. So, <laughs> it, he's walking up right, he's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy. Um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Make him go away, please. How does he do that? <laughs> well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, well, but, what, what, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? He didn't say. He's but, built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he is well known. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. It's obviously not true. This, this wasn't on the internet. This was in a book. So, it's not a quick joke and just, uh, put it on a website. This is in a book. I don't understand how- I love that he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he- ah, oh, that what is- What was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know, I th maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing, <laughs> Carl? <laughs> He's not gonna be talking with her, they're not gonna be playing, like, Trivia Pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't- I, he didn't go into that, he just said it, that's when the trouble started. Carl, hey, wait, go on. Right. <laughs> Is that what Suzanne did when she brought you in? <laughs> Feeder. Just the way I'm feeling. XFM 104.9. I love that. Carl, you're- you're- you're panicking. You've just remembered a song from your childhood, and I don't know what you're talking about. But um, I'm going to give out a number. Please take this number down if you can help, Carl. It's 08700 800 1234. Right. I, I'm not. I'm not that bothered. We were talking about a track from the 60s. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Quinn. Yeah. And it was on the same compilation. My dad had a tape in the car, and the tape was always on in the in the stereo thing in the yeah. car. And I used to sit sort of, sort of sit through all this stuff I didn't like. But knowing that coming up soon was a song about a, a monster with purple eyes. It a wasn't monster Puff with the Magic Dragon. Eyes. It wasn't, it wasn't that.
A monster- there must be something else about it that give people do, a Do you remember a chorus or a few lines? Um, it says something like, it was a one-eyed, it had big eyes, purple, and it eats people or something. The it big eyed purple eater, wasn't there a song called something like that? I, the I, big eyed purple- And it was a hit, was, was I'm it? sure there was. A song which is something like the intergalactic purple eater or something like that. It's some like, it's a novelty song. Rubbish. <laughs> what, the, by the Bonzo Dog Yeah, it's that sort of thing, yeah. I'm sure well, if you know what car- look, 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 the telephones have gone mad! Yeah, well, we'll find out in a bit. I mean, I'm not that bothered, I'm not gonna buy it. It's just that we were talking about songs and that. It'll be good to know who it was, but- Yeah. yeah. Right, what? Rockbusters. Okay, right. now how long- where did you get the phone? Uh, what, do you want to just answer well, that? Well, that's the phone, so just answer, answer the phone. Yeah, see what it is. Just see, so Hello? Hello, uh, mate. Alright. Yeah, uh, that song, I don't know who's by, or is that what you want? Um, that's the bit I wanted, well, what, really. what's the name of the song? Well, you know that how it goes, it's like, Yeah. Oh, yeah. I d sorry, I don't think you've helped much, though. You, you can't- you can't remember what it's called or who it's by. Well, no, I mean, I know the tune, but that's about it. But yeah. he's it done seems well. to me it's Steve, yeah, he's done well. He's given up his spare time to call in and sing us a song. Don't diss him. Rick, I'm concerned he's just only marginally remembering it more than Carl is. It was actually in, um, I think it was in the Blob- no, it was in- in something like the Blob, actually. I think Steve McQueen was driving away and it was- it, it, running in a secret- This show. is so very familiar. See if it- thanks very much, mate. See if we can get a title off someone. Uh, and uh, XFM. Hello, uh, yeah, I know the name of that tune. Go on. Uh, it's the- boy, is it the Purple Eyed People Eater? Yeah, that sounds about right. And really? Who's it by? Yeah, well, I'll just, I'm just at work and, uh... Who is it by? It came to my mind. Do you know who it's by? I don't know who it's by, mate, sorry. This is not enough information. I wouldn't phone in we if I had ask the information. But we asked them just what the tune was. But I want someone like Paul Gambaccini to call in. He knows what, you know, what chart well, okay, position it got okay, to. Okay, right. right. Well, I don't think this is enough information. Well, That's well, two people. We've barely is, got any information. If you know the title, we can put it in the internet, can't we, and find out who did it. Yeah. That's full of Brilliant. information. Well, well, thank, thank you very much yeah, for calling nice. I, I don't know why they bothered, Twinkie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, so, like, No, I mean, I just think if you're gonna bother to call in a radio station, have the facts. You're have so all the facts you have. Well, he hasn't got the facts and he runs the radio station. He doesn't run it, they keep him here like a mascot. He's like a pet, isn't he? They have him running around the office. God. Now listen, um, it's Rockbusters, I've got the, uh, the prizes here. Rick, I'll be honest with you, I mean, we've given away some, some shoddy stuff in the past. This but is the worst collection. Tight, is it? This is really scraping the bottom of the barrel, Carl. I mean, let's roll on the phone. How many more of these if, you, uh, if, you, if you're still phoning, hang up because we're, we're not gonna bother anymore. We, really sorry about that. Maybe email us or something. How uh, many of these can we give away? Rick? Look at that. It's <laughs> only Only Fools and Horses that, that, the it's videos. the Christmas special from not this year, the year before. <laughs> yeah! I mean, we have given away so many of these. I imagine there's charity shops throughout London. <laughs> throwing them away. Yeah, throwing them away. <laughs> yeah. So we got oh, that, that and I, you know, if you didn't watch it, you know, if you weren't it one of the uh, 20 green, million that watched blue it. Blue eyed, fat legged, purple eater, big boy, they had a big, and it had a big boo. It's something like that. Uh, and once again, the best chill out album ever. With, uh, I mean, this <laughs> pretty much rubbish. It was a big boo boo. Actually, no, the songs were okay, but it, either. it's just basically a collection of songs you might have heard on adverts. <laughs> so enjoy that. Oh, God, this one again, the best air guitar album in the world, <laughs> volume two. This, this is no longer an entertainment show. I, this is three people chatting to each other now and again. Sometimes we remember it's going out, sometimes we just take a call for our own amusement. I, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the same price to get. Uh, it's the David Attenborough um, uh, compilation of DVDs, <laughs> which I'd be very surprised if actually makes it to you. I imagine someone here will have had that long before we post it. <laughs> oh dear! There's a T-shirt in here. XSM one hundred four point nine. You get sent a lot of uh, crap t-shirts. You what you're listening to. You're uh, this, listening is, uh, to. this is a what Quicksilver is T-shirt. What is that? Fine. What T-shirt is That's that? That's a T-shirt made by the Quicksilver people. So if you're a bit of a surfer dude, and by the look of the size of it, you're a midget. <laughs> <laughs> you can't then say you're, midget. You're welcome to it. And this is, I think, the uh, piece de resistance, Rick. I mean, what? I because you know. The kind of fans we have, they're pretty cool cats, pretty yeah. groovy guys. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine they'll be loving on DVD <laughs> Doctor Who, the Aztecs. That's one of William Hartnell, the first Doctor's uh, classic episodes <laughs> oh, on DVD God. there. Um, oh, you know, um, um, rubbish. That's rubbish, Carl. Those boys. Yeah, yeah. I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know, our mate Johnny, he's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember, um, he bought, um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and, uh, he went, um, to the toilet, and Steve got post notes and put geek on every page, and Johnny opened it on the tube, 
Right, and it had geek and everything. And Johnny brought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right? And they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan. Right, what the geek is, right, and it looks exactly like Steve. All right, don't have a go, really. It does. And, he, and I, I, it, I, I'm going to try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses, it stands like you, it's sort of dressed like you, and it's only, and it's, it's hilarious. And he's, he's, he was, I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's, it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it, you'd like, play a... Well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just, uh, three clues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In this show, aren't well, we? I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little. No, you did, though. I thought I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, but uh, I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, like, just emailing Ricky Dr. Bay, What are we doing? I'm just, I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this, let's put this one in for the Sony Award. Let's put this show in for the Sony Award. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I've talked before about in second down. Get this down to three minutes, it'd be a great show. We'll Busters in a minute. Next FM. Learn some day. By Bruce Springsteen from uh, his new album, The Rising, on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Former just phoned in and said uh, to Carl, uh, stick up for yourself. Don't listen to that merchant. He does my head in. He's so arrogant. I don't think I'm arrogant. I think I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think I'm sort of objectionable. I don't think it's arrogance. I think no. it's sort of nastiness. Yeah. I'm just not a very nice person. <laughs> But believe me, I'm not arrogant, I think I'm pathetic. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of emails, um, s saying, could you bring back White Van Carl? Oh, yeah. Which is that section of the show where we ask the questions that the Sun asks Someone else. random punters yeah. uh, of Carl. But sadly, recently, they've got very politicised and very kind of, uh, basically a little bit depressing. So, uh, there's not really anything appropriate. But I have trawled the papers looking for other questions posed in other sections of the, uh, the Sun. Good idea. Uh, I was just looking here at the Dear Deirdre section, which is the sort of problem page. Uh, I don't know what your views are oh, on, are on this. Oh, I'd love to see Carl. Oh, God, can we get him a job? That's Just ask, oh my God, that would be amazing. Right? Well, here's one. I'd like to see uh, your view on this, Carl. I'm a happy married 42-year-old woman with four kids, yet I've developed a huge crush on pop star Darius Dinesh. Yeah. It sent my hormone levels through the roof, yeah. and last night I woke my husband up at 4am for sex. We've been married for 20 years and he can't believe his luck. Recently I've been having- I wanna- you... sorry, I wanna go to a- I'll stop you there, why are you telling me? <laughs> I, d right, carry on, sorry. Recently, I've been having erotic thoughts about Darius morning, sure. noon, and night. Yeah. I haven't felt like this since I was a teenager and mad about Donny Osmond. <laughs> My husband is amazed at the change in me. We had sex twice last night and again this morning. Again? Uh, why are you telling me this? <laughs> yeah, go on. He's just boasting. This is not a problem. <laughs> There's yeah. not a problem What's here. the problem? No problem. Just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> Thanks very much. I watched Darius on TV last night and when my husband came home, I dragged him into the kitchen and we made mad passionate love. Right, they've done it- they did it then, twice last night, once this morning, that's four times. Uh, five, five times she's mentioned it so far. Yeah. Um, she's doing alright. Uh, my husband- this is- this is a great bit. My husband thinks it might be his new moustache. <laughs> <laughs> or that I'm going through the menopause, but you I know You were thinking different. of growing a moustache, just thinking of, of changing your luck with the ladies. I love the idea, that's what he thinks it is. He's telling his mates in the pub. He's you should grow with these. Grow with these, Tom right? Selleck. Five times in the last <laughs> 24 <laughs> exactly. hours. Hooray yeah. for sexy Darius. So, um, what do you make of that then? What, uh, what are your views on that? Well, Hold on, though. If that bloke is reading that paper, that <laughs> narrows it down it's a bit. It's got to be, yeah. Uh, who else uh, d did he know? But His wife you... likes Darius. He's had sex five times that night, <laughs> and he grew a new moustache. <laughs> He's thinking, I wonder if that's, I wonder <laughs> if that's <laughs> me. Maureen. Yeah, go on. But what's your concern? Because she, I'll tell you what her problem is, she's worried that, um, you know, the reason that she's now kind of overly excited and she's, you know, having this great sex with her husband is because she's actually fantasizing about someone completely different, younger. She's having these wayward thoughts, isn't she's a bit concerned about that. What's your concern? What, what, what are your thoughts? I reckon she's gonna start shoplifting soon, coming out in hot flushes. <laughs> go on. Just, um, they're both happy, aren't they? He's getting what he wants. Uh -huh. She's happy, I'd say, yeah, whatever, get on with it. Do you think that she could, Brilliant. she should confess? Um. She wants to be honest with him. I, I wouldn't, because not, not that many fellas like Darius. Right. So, <laughs> if, if you're sort of thinking, oh, she'd rather have him than me, I don't What do you think Darius work. would think of this? Uh, he'd, he'd probably be happy with that. I mean, if, what if, you do if you, there, What if, would you do if you got, got loads of phone calls, right, from, yeah. um, women going, yeah. Carl, whenever you're on the radio, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Your voice makes me... I'd say, all right, well, you know, it's all right. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Yeah. 
I mean, uh, just in case anyone is doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do to sort of like egg them on a little bit to help them out? What do you think- What sexy what, things would you say? What do you think is your quality? What do you think people would find, you know, pretty horny about you? Is it your sort of mank wine, do you think, that? Just- just say this. London shit, innit? Oh, that, I don't I think... say that, but, you know, <laughs> London, it's not that good, is it? Like oh! This. I think you've done it there. So. So that's Say something of... quite sort of sexy though. Say something like, you know, well, I love to love you. Well, say something sexy. Say that. No, yeah, say yeah, something no, sexy. Susan says to me, you know, do you love me? I go, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> job done. Uh, but and like, job the thing done. is, I know that's true. Yeah. I know that's true. That's, so. that's brilliant. But cause one of the things that Deirdre says is that she's, she's wondering if uh, this marriage is going a little bit stale and needs to be freshened up. They need to give a new spice, a new spin to the marriage. What would you do? What would advice would you give? To spice up, you know, something that they've been married for quite some time. Get them, get them, get, I think get Darius, all Darius things, get David Snedden's new video <laughs> on the telly. Uh, what do you reckon though, Carl? Just, mm. just treat them. Do you know what I mean? Just surprise them now and again with stuff. That's oh. what I do. It's what you, you got those condoms, didn't you? That you got two, so two on hang on, what, you've never done that. What, you've surprised Suzanne with what? You know, I've like, uh. <laughs> he stood behind the door and shouted out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some, yeah, some Don't drop the jelly! <laughs> Yeah, you know, just just the usual stuff. There was some free chocolate delivered to work the other day. I took her a bit of that home. Most of you, that's pretty thoughtful. She didn't like dark chocolate, but I said, well, it's a thought. <laughs> so, I ate it. I ate it. But, um... You know you often benefit <laughs> from any gift that you give yeah. her. The chocolate, uh, the meal, the condoms. Yeah. Always, there's always something in it, it for you. Yeah, there is. I love the idea. She's so got bored with a Christmas present now, though. <laughs> what, the condoms? Yeah. Or the food that she ate. No, oh, they, they condoms. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah she's, she's got tired of filling them with water and throwing them to the passing <laughs> kids or putting them on her head and inflating them. I love the idea of asking problems. What do you think of, uh, erectile problems? You know that Pele advert, he goes, be careful, we haven't got erectile problems, call this number. What would you do if you're impotent? What would you do? What's the advertising? <laughs> it's just saying, like, you know, if you can't, you know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Why have yeah. they got him doing it? <laughs> well, well, he used to, you know, he used to be able to keep it up for hours, <laughs> the ball, and they... Uh, yeah. What would you do if you... To suddenly... advertise that? No, if you suddenly couldn't get, you know, what would you I do? I don't think it'd bother me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you're 30! <laughs> what is that? Man? You're talking like you're an 80 year old. <laughs> no, it? but do you know what I mean? You've you sort of been there, done that now. <laughs> It was like the boxing and the dancing that I did. It was good as a kid, and now it's like, yeah, take it or leave it. I think you need to write to Deirdre! <laughs> Supergrass, seeing the light, XFM 104.9. Um, we're a little bit worried. We might have a technical hitch here. We've had no emails, and usually we get loads and loads. Um, so we're worried it's us. Can someone send an email? Uh, well, yeah, just a test email. Yeah, but we won't know if they have or not. They might just be ignoring us. No one might be listening, Steve, so this isn't proof. I, I guarantee there's at least one person who would send an email. Maybe if Dickie Anderson's listening, he could do it for us. Anders! Anders! Do us a favour for all the pleasure we've given you over the last few years. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Somebody you know. the rockbusters, might as well give them out. Well, let's check the emails working before we do yeah, it. Yeah, otherwise it's a complete- yeah. this- this whole show has been a sham and a farce and a waste of time. Well, I think they can take that as red. <laughs> <laughs> well, educate me, Carl. Right, well, uh, Go what on, you say? Right. Educate me. Well, what we, uh, what we're looking at this week, we've, we've done war, we've done, um... We've nailed we done? that, we've nailed war. Did, um... We did summed up war with a little French bloke whose battle cry was John's got a moustache. Right. So, and last week we did science. What would you do on science then? Off, uh, Airy kid. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. So this week we're looking at, uh, medical problems. I'm sure we do Airy Kid every week. Mm. Um, medical problems then. I've got, I've got a couple of things under the banner of, uh, colon then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, this is interesting. Right. Do you mm. know if you have, uh, an operation on your brain, <laughs> right, what yeah. they do is, the, I mean this is why I'd never go to the doctors, I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out, right? They can operate on your brain and what they do is they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> <laughs> your skull, yeah. yeah. Your brain case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you're sat there with your head open. Yeah. Messing with your brain and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? 
Is it, what, you think they do it for fun? No, they but- they go, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he'll freak out. Go well, on, is wake it, him is up. It, is it necessary that you're awake, do you think, or- Well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep, you're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. <laughs> go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But, so your brain's still- your brain's- <laughs> Where is this conversation? Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out, I go, no, Carl, I was there, that wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but- <laughs> So, I mean, if I had an operation- On your brain, heaven forbid. Well, <laughs> operation anyway, I'd like to sort of think, well, I'll have an injection, I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah, yeah. The fact that- your brain the case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? They say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you, and yeah, your brain- See, I don't think they do that. I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that like, you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything but Carl wh says. Wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. They'll well, they, they give you a telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. No, but do you know, like, when you- What are you- what are you telling me? What are you I'm asking me? I'm just saying me? how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? And it's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be- a When bit you go for a haircut? It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's <laughs> wet and I used to hate it and I think do you have to do that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I mean. Similar, it's you? very similar to uh, open um, skull no, surgery. What I'm saying yeah. is, it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit. And there's women coming in and out and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that? Do you think they do it in a shop window? This brain operation? I'm just saying it's a bit weird. Do you think, why are we doing it in John Lewis's? <laughs> Just so more people I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain Look case. at the twatty look for this brain <laughs> out of his head. Take a Polaroid. Red, take yeah, a Polaroid. Take a Polaroid. Look at him. Look, 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 <laughs> at, look, at, look at his face. Right, look, right, clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl, this fake nose and glasses sorry, on. Sorry, is that- did you teach me something then? Was so that education? I thought you that your brain- your brain case can be open with your awake. And you just sat there sort of letting him get on with it. Brilliant, I've learned that. I'll never forget that. Right, go on, anything else? You'll love- let's play a song because the next one is amazing. <laughs> what, even more amazing than that? Yeah. <laughs> play a song? Yeah, bit of Bowie? No email still, by the way. No, I don't think it's working. It's not it's working today. Lady so Stardust. We'll have to do a phone-in for Rockbusters. Off the Ziggy Stardust album. Alright. Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon then, educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of doctors though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, cos... Yeah. Did I tell you the time when, uh, <laughs> the doctor said uh, I was gonna die? All right, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And uh, at lunchtime there was this. We used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have um, like a like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at, and uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So. Um, she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they, they cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Scavenged yeah. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be chocker. Uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster crying for <laughs> fighting the kids off. Right, so I'd have like, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven, uh, jam donuts, few congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> Start. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> uh, and uh, if anyone maybe... can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. 
So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, yeah. once or twice a week you'd have a load of cake. <laughs> in your life, yeah. yeah a so normal anyway. day in your life. And uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So. And the horse in the city, uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, in agony, could mm -hmm. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> you could hardly stagger to the free cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk. He gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. It's, you know, the doctor said he ain't got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. So she said, yeah. So I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, Carl, <laughs> I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she yeah, didn't come into detail. Now, 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 well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, 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 you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not gonna probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on. short story, so, right, uh, old woman, about seventy years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yep. just to check herself out, because she's yep. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does, and, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round, uh, he said, oh, God, he says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock, right? So, she goes, oh, what, can you do anything to sort it out? So, they go, yeah, 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 we could book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, 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 serious. Right, okay, Carl, I'll tell you now, I'm leaving. I'm no. never, I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly. You're talking, I, I, I've never had any such but You are, play a record. Play a record. <laughs> I can believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record, stop the record, stop the record. Right, okay, right, what do you mean you couldn't believe it? No, when I read it, I said I've got to uh, tell this This woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years, you mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. Syntax, Fry, XFM 104.9, Richard Gervais, Steve Merch and Carl Pilkington, right, get off. Right, what you got next? Right, well, uh, running a bit late with this, but it's time for, uh, do we need them? We're, we're looking into what I'm really worried about this, because everyone's getting that last clue wrong. I reckon it's so rubbish that even your mental fans can't work it out. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but... Give that final rockbusters clue again. The Jamaican fella, uh, had to have some aspirin. Why is that? What why, why did he have to do it? Oh, no, hold on, that's changed. <laughs> well, do you, I mean, it doesn't matter, the story's Oh, it doesn't still matter. There. That's the point of a cryptic clue, isn't it? Oh, do, do. What have you got now? Right, so we, we're looking into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoken to someone about jellyfish, and that, and, uh, looking at cockroaches today. Right, now who's the expert? Um, it's a woman called, uh, Jessica Marshall. Right. Does she know that you're gonna play this on the radio? Well, I called up, right, in the week and said, can I talk to someone about Just cockroaches? And she was like, is that Carl? She knows who you are. Yeah. Right, so she already knows maybe your angle, your approach. Yeah, she And uh, is she, she's an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's a one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. And that's the history museum? Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> not sure. He's <laughs> <laughs> not sure. This is Go what on. happened.
Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much uh, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, that I found out is that, um, that they have a 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects. So they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia. That's sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee. So with six legs, you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double-jointed? Cover I, I tracks? I think you're grasping at straws or something. All right, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that. Because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so... Um, no, if they're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got their mouth shut, they might be able their to slide. Their nothing to do with breathing. So just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something and so got bored after 40 <laughs> minutes Again, and said, well, we'll call it right. That's a unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all... You can't do that. Yeah, but... No. Pretty unkind thing to do anything, to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleed to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Ah. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, to your family and maybe write them, write them a note. You won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying, it was my own fault, and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, that I would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. All right. Well, I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75 percent of the time. Rest? Yeah, they just, just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, not... maybe maybe the 25 uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make up. they're probably searching out food and, um, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge and they'll become very, very quiet, you might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, we, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we, you know? Uh, well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... N not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little, um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with, with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches... Can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yeah. I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean, 18 knees, where did you get that from? It's, uh, it's on the I, internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right. The cure, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Right, Carl's been taking phone calls for these clues. <laughs> right, and so everyone's been saying the same thing for the last one. He's been going, no, no, and I'm worried, I'm always worried. FD. I just overheard him on a the call, they're going, oh, what have I been saying? 
Oh, no, it's FP. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. Right, give me the clues out. It's a roller. Right, tell people, that's, we're really sorry to anyone who would have got that right. Okay, right, do the clues quickly. Tell them, it'll be a rollover, so we have to do three new ones. Do you not write these You're down, such Carl? such a t I don't, uh, I don't write the answers down in case Ricky looks over the thing and sees the answer. Why would I cheat? I'd rather you do something right with your life. Right, well, the clues were, I've got three other jumpers like this one. Yeah. That was FT. Yeah. You got that, four tops. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Good, well done. That bunch of people can't make up their minds if they'd want to sit in the sun or not. That was C, they were getting that. That was charlatans. Charlatan, right? A bunch of them, charlatans, right? What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> what's char- What's Charlie? No. No, it's like, shall I go out? Shall we? Charla. Charlatans. They got it, right? <laughs> Where I went wrong with this one, uh, the Jamaican fella, he had to have some aspirin, why? Um, it's my fault, you know, I'm not, I'm not cutting, there's no point passing the book or anything. Um, I said FD, a lot of people were saying, uh, Fred Durst, like, f four Ed Ertz, which is a good <laughs> thing. Yeah, which will have been as good as any of yours. But I made an error, so we'll roll it over. No, 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 what is the answer? We'll roll, we'll roll well, the what point is the answer? Over. Jamaican fella what? Add some aspirin, why do that? What's the, what's the thing? FP. FP, it was Frida Payne. <laughs> Frida Payne? Frida Payne. Frida Payne. Frida Payne. <laughs> That's awful. Frida. You've got to write these down next week. No, this is I'm, right. I'm sorry, you are, right. I, I, you're the producer. I, I know, I know, but I've had a busy week, haven't I? That's it's doing not stuff an excuse. That isn't an excuse. Our excuse is we don't. We have. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. You, you do put care. the work in and you, then make a mistake. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's better not to try than try your hardest and be rubbish. <laughs> do you see what the point? We've got. We don't care. But you've got standards. Yeah. And, and you're not meeting them. You're for- think of that! You're not even reaching your standards. <laughs> God! <laughs> right, uh, well that's that I guess. Well, the prizes will be, uh, giving those away next Bollocks week. again. And, Just completely- uh, Song for the ladies to end the show with. It's from Nick Cave's new album, Nocturama. This is a track called He Wants You, back next week. Remember, Free the Pain. <laughs> There you go, feeder, just the way I'm feeding, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a great show lined up this week, haven't we? Go on, what have you got planned? Uh, well, I've got songs from David Bowie, Thin Lizzy, Gene, ACDC, you heard feeder, they got, oh, oh, Smiths, mm. all mm. that. We've mm. got a great feature, a new feature. Um, spoke to Khan in the week, and we worked out a new feature where, um, people are gonna give him sort of like problems to solve. There could be scenarios, there could be management scenarios at work, you know, problem solving, things like that, organising things. He's a very good organiser. So I'll tell you what, tell you what happened. He's dropping Do We Need Him because he's getting fed up with scientists. He thinks there's a conspiracy and they're getting together and they're never gonna lose an animal. <laughs> right. So he's just fed up with that. Uh, Rockbusters, we've got some great prizes. Uh. Well, have you seen them yet? No. Be careful. They're not gonna be great, I just they? peeked in and all I'm gonna say to you is, Fools and Horses Christmas special? <laughs> not the little one with the little car. With the little one. car, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That is excellent. Carl, what have you got to say for yourself? Hold on, it was a rollover, wasn't it? Cause you really mucked up yeah. Rockbusters last time. What was he doing? It was saying FP for the whole thing. No, FD you were saying and it was Frida Payne. Have you written the clues down this week? Cause that seems like an obvious way I, to I, improve I, this. Yeah, I, I write the clues down. A week down. before he couldn't remember what the answer was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. You know, you learn by your mistakes and that. Mm. You don't. <laughs> well. So, so, yeah. so I'll give you a little taster. But we were uh, having a, a pizza in a, in a pizza establishment. Uh, when was it? Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah. And uh, he was going, I'm a good uh, organiser, I'm a good problem solver. Give me any, any scenario, right? Obviously he didn't say scenario. Um, and I went, okay then, so uh, you're the manager of this place. And there's a couple, they're elderly couple, they're about 60. They've had a lovely meal. He went, yeah, right. I went, but the, the gentleman, he's got a little bit of a heart condition, he takes a pill after his meal, as he should, after he was, <gasps> he's only taken Viagra. Oh. And now he's stuck in. Wedged in? Wedged in. We've it's gone. It's gone and it's stopping him getting out from the table. Yeah. I said, what would you do? He went, what? He's stuck in because of his dick. I went, yeah, he went, right. He said, I'd use the situation, I'd make cash. I said, you're not going anywhere, do you want a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneurial, <laughs> yeah. I like it, Carl. Anyway, no. so that's that sorted, I've got the job on that. Next, I went, okay. Another, oh, you won't believe it. Next day, there's a little problem in the toilets. Two, two gay men were having sex and they got stuck. In, in each other? Yeah, yeah. He went, right. I'd say, is it the same fella 
yeah, as yesterday with Viagra. If so, why was he let in again? He was on the door. <laughs> yeah. I went, it's not, it's too yeah. He goes, right. Does his wife know he's cheating on <laughs> Yeah. He went, right, I'd go down, I, I'd go, and then he went, oh, I'd say this isn't a restaurant problem, call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly speaking, not a restaurant problem, no. <laughs> but I'm uh, alright. Huh? I'm alright. Well, I don't know. Would you give me the job if, if say, like you were the boss of that restaurant and you. Uh, do you know what I like about this? At no point did he say, Gervais, why are you being so mental? Yeah. Yeah. Why would someone get stuck because they took Viagra by mistake and two people get stuck in each but other? But you've heard the stories from his past. <laughs> that is a perfectly legitimate situation <laughs> yeah, to find yourself yeah. in. If you grew yeah. up in his part of what Manchester. would you do if there was two fellows with big heads and webbed feet and they had a horse in a? Well, what I do is, what would you do? What did you do when you when you first saw him? What saw the uh, the, the lads with the big heads? And yeah. That? Yeah. Um, we should very quickly remind people if they didn't listen to that particular show. Um, they were they had webbed hands. Yeah. Did they or webbed feet? Well, they had they had webbed hands, right, and, big and heads. enormous heads. But it wasn't related. But they weren't related. I know to they were completely. No, 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 no but I'm people. saying that the webbed hands isn't due to the fact they've got a big head. No, sure. It's two different things. We're just unlucky. Yeah. No, hold on. If they weren't related th and they both had webbed hands and big heads, I'm saying there was a condition that had, that was yeah. related that had those two. Con I don't think it was. So what do you think the chances of that are? They're not related, and he goes, "Oh, you've got a big head and webbed hands as well." Yeah, just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, I, d I honestly don't think it was related. Right. Because I've I've seen I've I've since seen the the same problem again on another kid with a big head. His hands look good. Right. So the, do you think the big head is just a separate issue? Yeah, it's a totally different illness. It's right. like having a headache and a cold at the same time. Right. So not always connected. But the weird thing is, right, looking looking around in the week at weird stuff on the uh, on the internet. Yeah. There's this woman who's got a big head. Oh yeah. And. Um, she was fed up with it because when she was walking down the street, it was so big, she couldn't hold it up. Right. Right? She couldn't hold it up. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, keep, shut up. So, she when, she, hold it up. when she was walking, she, her eyes were hurting because she had to sort of look up all the time because her head was that heavy, her chin was sort of balanced on her chest. Right. right? And she'd have to peek up, yeah. So, uh, she goes to the doctors, and this was after years and years, and, uh, said, you know, I thought I could put up with it, but I can't. It's, it's <laughs> How big eyes. was her head? It's big, I, it, I don't know if it was, like, big, because there wasn't a picture, I don't know if it was just big or a lot of bone. So it was heavy. <laughs> heavy. Right, like the elephant man, just so, outcrops. Yeah, right, yeah. so, uh, so the doctor said, yeah, um, we can sort that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll have to take your head off. Right. Okay, no, okay well, listen, so listen keep to going. this. Okay, listen, keep going. Because no. I, again, I, what you don't seem to understand is I, I have the same reaction to you when I see it. Yeah. What? Right? You're quizzical yourself. So I looked at it, they took her head off, um, chipped away a bit of the bone, mm -hmm. made her head lighter, put it back on. <laughs> right, play the Smiths. They ass. took a woman's head off. Yeah, this is arse by the Smiths. <laughs> yeah. And if you'd like to ask Carl something, details coming up soon. Ask by the Smiths on XFM 104.9. So, uh, what's the email, Carl? If people want to ask you something, a problem, they've got a problem to solve. It could be anything. It could be a personal problem, it could be a scenario. It could be about, uh, it could be about war. It could be anything. But it or it could be more flippant, I suppose, and like yeah. right. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but I prefer stuff that I could so sort. you can get your teeth into. And, and, and actually, you know, sort out. What, war, like war? War is too, it's a bit, bit big for me, that one. Do you think? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know? Tricky one. I don't it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one, yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, innit? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath, put a mattress on the- on top of you. That's it. Sorry, wh why are you doing <laughs> that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If so what kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's just what I read somewhere. Yeah. You get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no, no. No, no, no. No. That'd be daft. Okay. <laughs> I think that, I think they were enamel baths then though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, my dad hates, uh, 
Yeah, it's being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, no, I can relate to that. That's important. Um, Ace coming to London now. He always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. And then, uh, we had an argument about that and then <coughs> we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like twenty quid or something. And he said, twenty quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. He said, I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day, he said, how are things? Are you alright now? He said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one of in course, off, yeah. right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out, he was happy, the bed arrived, it's a nice bed, he said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it, and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right? So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're a rip-off merchant. Uh -huh. Right? Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by. Post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. He's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back, and it said on it, "This catalogue will always be property of you know the company that that does it." Um, if w so, you can't throw it away. If if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to to get it back off you. Right. right? So he thought, right, well they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up. And said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you conned me, and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours. Yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. He said, you already owe me six pounds twenty-eight. <laughs> something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it So hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened, he said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said I'm not bothered, they can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week it was like six pound odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday, so, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving, it's like laughing. an investment. Yeah. It's like an, <laughs> it's like an <laughs> antique he's it's just, yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh. Well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, 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 one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to be asked do. of him. But I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington. <laughs> your son Carl. <laughs> New single from uh, Nick Cave, I think. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That's okay. the uh, forthcoming single from Nick Cave from his album Nocturama. That's called Bring It On. That's great. I, I must admit, I was a latecomer to Nick Cave. He's I was, extraordinary, uh, yeah. That, I mean, years into his solo stuff before, you know, I decided that he was brilliant. Mm, yeah, he's fantastic. No, he's, he's fantastic. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased to find out. Um, I d I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you'd like things to be quite, the, quite sa you know, samey. You would like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you, I remember. What did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day of XFL? I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring? Do you want to I'm just being honest, honest though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, "Well, he's a bit weird." <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I know that Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm you're sure that wasn't what he said before. No, did he, he said before. Yeah, he, well, well, he's I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look in his face. You know when uh, when you know you your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why does your kid?" Goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look in his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might have just got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there, then. But not just in the office. As you walk through <laughs> the building. It's done. worse than you ever thought. Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought because, as you well know, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did I do on uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing? Uh, 
For those, uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine, apparently it sells quite well, it's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of, uh, issues magazines. I think it's called Company Magazine. You know, it's like your sort of, I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year the 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the, in the 50, in the top 50 of the entire country. And then they vote, they vote and they put them in order and see who, who's the most eligible bachelor. But that's of, that's fifty people, right? Most, I mean, the, I, it always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it, it, it kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. Yeah, it? No. Which always sort of unnerves and me And also they try and do a different fifty every year so they're but getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, you know, no, it's no, not no, really, no, no, Because no. also a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are married, so there's very little to- No, 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 on, no, 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 there's a huge, no, there's a huge, I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm sure. not sure actually, so sure. I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, sure. etc. So, uh, Fred Durst, yeah. that sort of person, you know. So anyway, l l this is what's exciting, right, although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year, all right, uh, they get, because what happens is the, all, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two-week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, I'm rather annoyed, because all I'm gonna win is a moped. That's whoa, the prize this year, that's the prize this year, a moped. Whoa, 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 backtrack. What? Sorry? Last year was a two-week trip to Bahamas, and this year Just what? a moped, I'm all, all I'm gonna get is all a moped. All you're gonna win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so- not You've uh, got no chance. You You've got enough. no chance. Who enough. else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of people you'd never heard of. There was, I know, Duncan from Blue. Dean, and so, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're you're going to come behind the other 49. No, 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 so, uh, no, no, but, 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 because you know, there'll be people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They see, was, my, see my photo. Uh, according they can vote to, for me. Yeah, according to he, I was 22nd most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I was. ACDC. Brilliant. You shook me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is. Ricky Javay, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I came up with a new, uh, um, strand for Carl as well. He likes, he's always got, you know, we've done, uh, I don't think there's a wheat garment we haven't mentioned, an airy kid. A hairy right? child, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, some related to a monkey and that. And I thought you could do a regular thing where he's got to come up with a story about a an ape or a, a, a monkey, and it's called Chimpanzee That. <laughs> of course. Of I, course. Have, I have got one, but I can't remember it at the moment, so I'll just It'll come to you whenever you join the yeah. show. Well, listen, while you're thinking about that, while you're stewing on that, here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Yeah. We're taking, uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have, you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a, a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Summers some, were nice as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and- Police the, are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here, I mean, the but thing is, I was- I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself, <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door, and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is the fellow who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you he, were. He came, Did he keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. And, uh, he, he came down. Chucking a <laughs> uh, stone in the air, love it! <laughs> to see how far I it's could brilliant. throw it. brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent that, that game? Right, <laughs> did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> 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 you 
go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> yeah. no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle, and it ate, of course it did. It ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. You know, in case yeah. you've got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee. Went to sleep, knocked at the door. Genius. This is a brilliant sleep. plan. It's a brilliant <laughs> plan. I couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh. the thing is our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door, right? So this family who uh <laughs> have saw me do it let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, Go and get the door and I sort of went, Oh as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. I went to the door like rubbing my eyes and uh, the fella said, What did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, Oh no. And I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working sort of evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said That's when he, he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, no, the thing Carl, he, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was going to belt me. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll be more careful next time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you the, do? the, the father's support. I don't even, I, I don't know if, if I you were living help. in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? What if, what if they'd come over and they'd, they'd just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you'd been saving over the years and just threw mm. your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's <laughs> the only way. <laughs> and I don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite Go out. sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes <laughs> down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, Equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, a yeah. bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It won't well, work. It's like with, with our kid, right, he was, um, I told Ricky about this the other day in the, uh, in the pub, but He's- Is this your brother? He, he never, yeah. Cause he, he was a terror, wasn't he? Well yeah, a little bit, but it he was He did more drive a tank down the, the high street once, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was in the army. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, Another story. But, but this time, I remember, um, <laughs> my mum and dad were going out, right, for the evening. And, um, I must have been about, I don't know, five, so our mark was like, I don't know, s probably eighteen, something yeah. like that, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So my mum and dad go out, and our mark says to me, right, uh, here's a deal, do your little deal. I'm gonna have a load of, uh, women round. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, deal is, I'll let you have your tractor in the house. Wow, right. he had a tank, you had a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but his brother didn't have the rocks that Carl had. No, no. So he needed the so tractor to put on, his what toys kind along. Of a man was he? He brought a bunch of women round. So, yeah, there's loads of, but do you know when you're a kid, you don't think, ooh, I know what they're up to. You're not bothered, are you? Do you know what I mean? You, as long as I've got my tractor, I'm happy. Yeah. So I was, I was- <laughs> <laughs> He hasn't changed a bit. But how many women did he have around? Was it just him and like a bunch of women? Yeah. Was it like, what, what's his name? What's his name? Like, like Nedwell from Confessions? Yeah, yeah, Confessions yeah. of an older well, brother. Just came he he liked orders. his women. He li uh, seriously, right? My mum and dad had to move because they got sick of women coming round saying, I've got a kid and it's your marks. They had to move because it got that embarrassed. You know, did you hear, when you were playing on your tractor and there was women running back and forth in underwear, did you ever hear this noise? <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah. you ever hear that? Or kind of wow 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 wow, wow, wow. and just see your wow, brother's wow, wow. ass disappearing down yeah, the exactly. thing being chased by a butcher? Did you ever? <laughs> it's not important. Is, it? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's going to be like? Do you think when I'm voted number one most eligible bachelor in Great Britain? <laughs> yeah, and you're coming on your moped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Like, am I going to get a tractor? <laughs> Cheering brakes, painkiller, open brackets. Ah, uh, summer rain, close brackets. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Rockbusters? Is it that time? It is yeah. indeed. Last week, of course, it was a disaster. Yeah, every, every Saturday at 16 minutes to two, we do <laughs> Rockbusters! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to say that by, I've not really gone through them, but the prices look exactly the, the same as they were last week. Yeah. There's that t-shirt. So it's a rollover, still... but you haven't added to it. 
Have you not the had point of a rollover is you've got to add to it. That's the excitement. Yeah, no. there's, a, there's a couple of albums that were Okay, well, there's okay. also the uh, Fools and Horses, um, video with oh, the, the free- I don't think- I'm bloody jealous of that. <laughs> I like that! <laughs> that little yellow thing! It's a little, uh, there's a little kind of, um, model oh, three-wheeled van. Rodney, you plonker! Oh, who <laughs> do What's that? Uh, this is what looks to be some kind of best of of the stereo MCs. Don't call me a plonker, you <laughs> wanker! The David Attenborough <laughs> DVD collection. Oh, the unk shit himself again! <laughs> Oh, yeah, the big prize that we tried to give away. Oh, I see you! Cassandra! Who is that supposed to be an impression of? Which member of the cast is that? <laughs> oh. Is that Cheeky Dell? <laughs> I don't know. Best chill out album ever, the best really? guitar volume two. Really? And of course, for all our fans, Doctor Who, the Aztecs. That's on DVD and that's uh, one of the William <laughs> Hartnell <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's the worst impression I've ever heard. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> then. Right, er, uh, three, three, uh, cryptic stuff. Oh, come on. Right, Three, I, c I can't do it. No, come on! Right, three, three, uh, cryptic, um, clues. <laughs> Some of which may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, don't take the letters literally. Yeah, yeah. Right, go on. And, and some initials, and it makes up of a uh, makes up a band. So um, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, there's three of them. You email in Ricky at uk. Yeah. Right, here we go then. Yep. Uh, number one. Uh, hmm. The weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, that's R. That's R. Right. The weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Second one. Um, look, Grant, just get on the boat and help us out. <laughs> All right, give us that again. Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. Look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out. What's yeah. the initial? R again. R again, interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna do that with your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. CK. CK. All right, What's so, for? So quickly, all the way through then. Number one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? That's <laughs> R. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? That's R as well. And then the last one, if you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. C K. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Fantastic. Right, we'll have a bit of vinyl. Let's have a classic, let's have a classic from right. the uh, the merchant collection. <laughs> On XFM, one oh four point nine, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, alright, Carl? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter? Huh? Just um you know what's the matter. What? Should I explain? I, if you want. I'm sort of an independent adjudicator, and I couldn't help but notice that you both went out to make the teas, <laughs> but only one of you came back with a wig made out of that <laughs> poppy stuff that you pack. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, yeah. That you and he didn't want me to do it with sellotape, so I kind of did it with elastic bands that I found. Uh, apparently it hurt his ear, it's cut into his head, uh, and, and, uh, and look at him, he's annoyed. I don't know. Uh, oh. There's not many, uh, many times I've ever done, you know, any form of work, really, where halfway through it, you know, let's say a two-hour live radio show, one of the people has said to the other, can I make, out of this big cardboard box, a bishop's hat for you? Well, I did that, and, and the- start fashioning that, and, when yeah, he should but, be and the set hurt his eyebrows, so when we went to the kitchen, I kinda did it with elastic bands, and that, that was cutting into his ear or something, I don't know, making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Carl, you are here for Ricky Gervais' amusement. Hmm. I think oh, if you check the small print of your contract, have you got I mean, have you got anything interesting about a monkey or an ape so we can do chimpanzee that? I know something that a lot of other people will know, but I'll I'll Well, well let's do it then. Chimpanz chin what's it called again? Where should we do a jingle? Well <laughs> do a little jingle for us then. <laughs> oh chimpanzee that <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. Right. So I look forward to that every week. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's the interesting chimp fact? fact? Right. It's about um this monkey ages ago. <laughs> of course. Uh, don't know where it happened. 17th century? I think it was a chimp. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> got caught having a fag. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. What do you mean, do I know it? Oh, now it down. Loads got, of chimps are caught with woodbines. Right. He got caught having, having a fag. So it was sent to court. <laughs> and, uh. Well, was it underage? It was, it was, uh... And it got someone to go into the newsagent forum. Like, Did he get a bigger gorilla yeah, to go into the newsagent and get in 20 Rothmans? 
it ended up doing time. Because it was, it was Go back a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 No, whoa. I don't know the that's, that's as much as I know, so there's no point questioning. That is as much as you know, isn't it? Quite literally. <laughs> Sorry, but why did he go to prison? Uh, it's, it's against the law to have a monkey having a fag. Where <laughs> In a built up area. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's against the law for a monkey to have a fag. What if he got it himself? Even if it just. What about if it, if it earned it himself, just like moving tyres around or mucking mucking out the zebras? I don't know the full story. That's you don't know the full story, do you? But do you think. <laughs> you never do, <laughs> do I you? I presume it was a monkey from a zoo, right? Yeah. Do you think it'd be fed up, though? Because in a way, it's home from home, isn't it? When I read it, I didn't think it was that bad because I just Carl, thought, well, they don't put monkeys in prison. They didn't put the monkey in a prison. They're overcrowded. <laughs> they haven't got the space. Well, I'll, again, I'll find it and give you the, the like, the, where I got it from and you Chopper can... Harris was furious because the monkey got the top bunk. Yeah. <laughs> can I just, uh, <laughs> At least he did. Okay, then. Oh, chimpanzee that. Another one next week. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Rockbusters, right? Can I just, yeah. uh, recap? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, actually I have to say you've really stumped people this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or well, oh, either that or they God, just can't be bothered wrong. anymore. Well, or they're wrong again. No, no, right. Uh, I think the prizes are so pitiful they can't be asked. Let me just explain it again just in case they don't understand it. It's a cryptic clue, right, right. and it makes up a band and the initial that I Sometimes. give you is the initial that the band start, or the artist starts off with. So, last week, uh, well, I can't remember, but we did, we did AK an exploding pet, atomic kitten. That explains yeah. it. So very quickly, uh, number one. No, last week right. we did, uh, FP, uh, that you gave out the clue, FD, free to pain. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an error. So, um, the They're first They're all right one, this week though, are they? Yeah. The weather stinks, doesn't it? That's, that's the cryptic clue and the letter is R. Uh, number two. That's the rainy smell, boys. Right. Uh, look, Gran, just get on the <laughs> boat and help us out, will you? Uh, that's R as well. And the last one, if you're gonna that's, rigging, do, that's rigging nanny. <laughs> if you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. That's CK. Right. Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Plus, keep your uh, problems and queries coming in for Carl. We've got another one as well, which I'd like to give you after the next track, Carl, if I may. All right? All right. You've yeah. got a problem, haven't you? What with? Oh, yeah. Listen, listen to this, Carl. Listen Let's to play this, a record. Dude. Let's come back with this. Oh. It's an amazing problem. <laughs> wow. You're getting celebrities asking me questions now, Carl. That's David Bowie. Is there life on Mars? Mm -hmm. Do you reckon? Uh, I reckon there's more going on than just us. <coughs> messing about. I reckon. I hope so. I think. Tell Steve your problem that you were, you aired to me. Well, um, do you know how, like, I'm always thinking about stuff when I'm washing up? Mm. Um, I'm just gonna look at Steve for the reaction when this question right. comes out. Okay. There's been a few things I've been thinking about. Do you know like how I try to confuse a computer by putting in Y in the search engine? Yeah. So, so along the lines of that, I, I, I was thinking in the week, if uh, you put a chameleon on a mirror, what would happen? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and also, this, this is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff. Right, um, in the world, you know, big buildings, big planes, mm -hmm. big boats and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right, what errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical, scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't, I can't begin to explain it. Carl, we're not getting the rocks from other planets. It's already here. It's like having a, a it's like having um, a big pile of books in a room, and then moving them over to the other side of the room and build a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where's that come from? Other chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you see, do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute, though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, right? That's bigger, that's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl. He's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right. They they take they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our um, the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right. You get it. It's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. 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 They they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but. You <laughs> But you know, um, but you know that's, uh. you know famously that's how Atlantis disappeared. You know, you've heard of the, the legend of Atlantis. 
Have you heard of the legend of Atlantis? I think so. Go this on. was a, this was a city that existed. It's proven, yeah. right? And what happened was they just kept buying stuff in mail order. They just <laughs> kept ordering stuff, like the king and stuff. Just kept ordering stuff in mail order. He brought girls across carpets, you know, lots of carpets. Carpets. He kept buying TV set, big screen TVs and stuff like that. And eventually, he bought up all the mayor. That the wise men didn't want. Yeah, he just, cause he's from like olden times, and he just kept buying stuff, crazy, like he was just a shopaholic basically. Mentor it was. And he was ludicrous, it was like, and, and in and the it end it heavy. just sunk, it just sunk. Too heavy. And it just sunk. So, um, um, to the earth, the more planes we build, the more trees we let grow. Yeah. From acorns. And more than that, what about all the, uh, the people that are overeating? There's only, there's a, yeah, I, there's only yeah, one Rick thing to do. in this world. I think we, we've got, a, I think we've got to kill off endangered species and burn trees. <laughs> That's the only way the earth <laughs> can survive. <laughs> you mental. Right. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> right, uh, okay, look, quick um, query for you. This is from uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer. Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't want to do so. He's got the arranged marriage coming along and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think- Live the, your dreams? The arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Cause mm -hmm. I think too many people go on looks. Right. And then you soon get bored of that. Mm -hmm. And you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right? Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right, so I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then, you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah. Put up with it. That's sure. Right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> that's that solved. Brilliant. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined a uh, joined a dancing thing just near um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> went along. I wanted to learn some moves. And How I, old were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was like pretty big, so about eighty, eighty three, eighty four, eighty five, oh, something yeah. like that, around there. Um, Wanted to do it. Um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for a toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry. How is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, you I'm told me before you what, you did boxing for a while. You did dancing for a while. You had <laughs> true fight in the boxing. You didn't <laughs> even get in the. Pl That's not an. You. Yeah, Imagine but... if that was a film! This is not a, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, yeah, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he won, <laughs> won, won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, a brilliant. Footloose. Alright? <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm fed up, they banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. Um, <laughs> yeah. do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and <laughs> kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's, always, there's always other just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yeah. Yeah. So he just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's, uh, so that's, that's solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there, emotional problems I can foresee, uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice oh, there that. is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. If she's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart, cheers. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Keep your problems coming in. <laughs> Truth, Rest Your Head by Gene on XFM 104.9. Richard A, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. While I was, uh, with Carl in that restaurant, while I was giving him the, uh, you know, the problems, did the old fellow with Viagra and the, the two fellas making love mm -hmm. in the, uh, in the cubicle, um, we came up with a new idea, um, cause he, he is dumping, um, do we need him? As I say, he thinks the scientists have got together, they're never gonna wipe out a limpet or a, or a slug. Um, they, they, they think they're good, but they're not that good. This is, the people that are lauded as great minds, or, and Carl has brought them down. He's taken issue with them. Uh, like what? He went, right, um, great thinkers, and I went, okay, then, um, Sir Isaac Newton, the, the father of modern physics, he went, is he the fellow with the apple? I went, yeah. He went, there again, see? Why do I need to know that the Earth sucks us towards it, gravity? He said, if I was floating around, it would be a problem, I'd ask his opinion. <laughs> I went, what about Einstein? He went, again, I've never needed 
and this is what he said, I've never needed MC squared in my life. <laughs> the fella who invented the video, I watch one a day. <laughs> you know what I mean though? Give credit where credit's due. Right. And I think that a lot of this stuff that was invented, like when we were talking about inventions, you know, uh, I started to look, look in books and that, finding stuff out, and there was some fella who got a mention on, on an invention site just because he came up with the fishbowl. And it's like, is it that hard? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's clearly a bowl. Sorry, you're, you're not putting him in the same category as Newton and Einstein, are you? He was on the same list. Einstein was on there. It was saying about him doing that, and Newton with the apple, and uh, who else was in there? Da Vinci, whatever. He, he was Leonardo on there. Leonardo Da Vinci. Yeah. Um, uh, is he the so, one who did so Mona Lisa as well? Yeah. Yeah. He said, he said it took him 12 years to paint the lips. <laughs> I don't think that's like, that good. That it takes that long. I saw, you know, when you think, saw so Tony Hart do like a, an Aborigian man with a elephant in the background took about three minutes. <laughs> Aborigian. <laughs> an Aborigian? Yeah. Really? And an elephant. So what just, about some of the big names? Well, just, on, what's, your, what's your, what's your first reaction when I say some big names from history? Go on. Gandhi. Uh, again, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Right. Good point. Good point. Okay. Good point. But you do, well, yeah, all right. Do, do you understand what he represents? Well, go on, tell me, and then I'll tell you if he deserves to. But you be know, his, his whole kind of attitude towards peaceful, peaceful protest. You know, it's quite a sort of modern idea. You know, you know, very much the forefather of you know uh, the '60s movement. You know, where people would sort of sit in, you know, and protest. You know, Steve, song, Steve, perhaps, Steve, or... Steve. Right, look at the glazed look on his Did face. Did I lose him on Gandhi? Yeah, yeah. So if just it's Pick not. Someone else, do someone else. Pick someone else. Okay, okay. Right. Well, uh, someone you know about that's obviously. Um, Oh, let's think. A great, a great thinker. Isn't part of Kingdom Brew now? Right. Yeah, he's all right. Brilliant. Thanks. Um, <laughs> what about- What about Jesus uh, Christ? Well, I'm thinking more your modern day, like your Richard Branson's and that. Okay. Who, like, you know- I would- to be fair, I wouldn't put Branson up there with- with Gandhi. Christ, Newton, and Christ, Einstein. Einstein. But why? Stephen Hawking. Because he's mainly known for having a beard and a funny jumper. So yeah, honest, you have to start including uh, no, Noel that's, Edmonds. That's Noel Edmonds, yeah. You're, you're getting mm. confused there. But Branson's a businessman. He's not one of the great sort of you know scientific yeah, minds or philosophical time, thinkers. Right in time. Whereas Clive Sinclair, out. in his little car on his way to work, <laughs> brilliant. No, but in time, there's certain things like the apple falling off a tree. Right. Whoever was sat there would have gone. That's a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? It's just that yeah. they were there first. But to be fair, Christ instigated 2,000 years of um, religion based on his teachings. Richard Branson, to be fair, he did launch Mike Oldfield's Jubilee Bells. Yeah, they're not the quite difference. comparable. It, it, just, it, it depends what you get impressed by, doesn't it? Suzanne's always saying. Maybe I, maybe Newton was there. He was coming up with a brilliant theory, like amazing. He was probably inventing the helicopter, right? The apple hit him in the head and he went, uh, the earth's stuck in me. The earth's stuck in me. Do you, you know what I mean? Could have happened. But see, you know, my girlfriend's always saying, uh, you know, what impresses you? Yeah. You know, because you were saying the other day, do you want to go to Egypt? And I said, no, not really. No. She goes, but don't you want to see the pyramids? Not interested. It's like, I've seen them on the telly. Uh, okay. You know. Sure. Are they going to be that much more amazing when you see them yeah, in real good life? Yeah, good point, good point, good uh, point. How did you ever move out of your street in Manchester? But hang on, no, sorry, I'm interested to know because this is a, this is something that, um, that he came up with, and this is someone that loves him and that he respects, so I'm interested to see, what, what was your answer to what impresses you? Um, I don't think I did answer it. I just said, you know, the odd, the odd thing. <laughs> you just said I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> little things, little <coughs> things. Like I, I ran home the other night and said, oh, I've just learnt something today. She goes, go on. And um, do you know Lego bricks? Oh yeah. The name came about because some kid's mum, the kid was messing with the bricks, and she said, let go of them and come and have your dinner. Play record. It's got to be rubbish. It's got to Play be rubbish. It's always rubbish, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, 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 they're they're Scandinavian for a start. Well, so, the Scandinavians. Well, yeah. yeah. Let go. Boys are back in town. Thin Lizzy, what a classic. Beautiful. Carl, should that be our anthem, me, you and Steve, eh? Eh? <laughs> yeah? Can I just uh, get a bit, a couple of bits of admin out of the way? Go on. We've had an email from Peter Goff. He has said, uh, where is Richard Anderson? Where he is Dickers? He only tunes in to listen to him. Where's Dickley? Where's enough. Little Dicky Docker? Little Dicky Anders is not uh, emailed in. If you don't listen normally, uh, Anders is our biggest fan. He he's loves got us. He lo I, I just absolutely But he's normally the world got of... a little bit of constructive criticism. Oh, which right, we always no, appreciate. Not, yeah, 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 we're open to that. Sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Like sure. Rob, so, you! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shove this up your- <laughs> 
So if Dickie Anders is uh, listening, then you might want to uh, get in touch. Uh, also, uh, d dear Ricky, I've developed a bit of a fetish for the way you say winnish in uh, your hit sitcom The Office. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to get my fiance to say it, but he hasn't quite mastered it yet. Anyway, we're getting married in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks' time. Could you please say winnish on air uh, as a sort of uh, it's wedding present? It's becoming one of the most popular requests at weddings now. The <laughs> me saying winnish. So uh, winnish. There's a few I didn't get in. Um, Thatcham, <laughs> Shinfield. <laughs> so there's there's a there's Woodley. There you are. There you go. That's uh, that's beautiful. That's keeping uh, them happy. Good luck to them. That's uh, I didn't. That's uh, Leopard. Le Leopard. I saw one of those stupid email names. If you're going to email us, at least mention your name, because otherwise uh, it makes me sound like a, a fool. A Leopard, the original name for a giraffe. Interesting. Thanks for that. Whereas Lego. Was yes. uh, event when a mother had sent someone to get some. Though there's no name for them, she went, "Can you go and get some?" There was a gap. He went, yes. "Oh yeah, I'll go and get some," because they weren't called anything. Brought them back, started playing with her, <laughs> and then she went, "Look, give me those." He went, "No." She went, "Let go, you idiot." Yeah, the actual explanation, various people have emailed us in or phoned in now. The company was set up in 1934, it's a Danish company, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Lego comes from the Danish words leg got, which means play well, and it was later discovered that it was also a Latin phrase that meant I study or I put together. That's the actual, uh, where so, did you get that from? But the thing is, you see, that's where learning's got to be interesting, because if it even started like that, I'd just go, I'm not interested. Mm. I'd be looking for Oh! That. So if a, f a fact might be true, but it's just not good enough. It's, it's not just interesting just enough for you. Not interesting enough. Okay, another quick right. dilemma for so you, So if, if, if uh, Newton would have said, uh, apples are attracted to our heads, be careful, they, they attack you, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Total bollocks, but you'd have been interested, therefore, in all modern physics. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, here's another dilemma for you, a quick one from Kate. She says that she's a single woman, she's six foot tall. Uh, recently she's found herself being approached by men of, let's say, restricted height. And she's not desperate, <laughs> but is it ever acceptable in her, you know, she wants to know now, is it ever acceptable for a taller lady to go out with a person of restricted growth? Uh, what do you think about that? If you see that on the street, do you think it looks bizarre, do you think it looks odd? Or so a six foot with woman with, um... Someone of a, a dwarfish persuasion. <laughs> You ca we can't say sort of that or or, or, or the or the magic word, but you I mean that, no, that's a, little, a little a little a little um, a little fella. Yeah, is that uh, so? There's a noticeable uh, difference in their height. Is that ever a problem? To she's you feel? she's six foot. He's three foot four. Yeah. If I saw it, I'd just think she's doing it. Okay, know. okay, let's not do this now. No, 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 come on, she's doing it what? Oh. No, for, for attention in a way. <laughs> <laughs> because right. there's loads of other See, people. See, I told you, Steve. Yeah, okay. I know, but I'm just just. I mean, I is that serious? I think so. Well, I oh, mean, if it, whatever God, makes her happy. Please don't ask Carl no, these sort of questions. No, but do you know questions. what I mean? If it makes her happy, then do it. But in a way, you're not gonna have a normal life. Oh, <laughs> God. No, but you're not, because they're gonna get sick. I'm There's so no point bringing sorry. trouble onto yourself. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of, of anybody the else in the world. <laughs> 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 Hold on. This woman. She doesn't live in a forest in a little <laughs> cottage, does she? She hasn't got long black hair and wears a sort of. She says the guy she's going out with is a miner. Really? In a crystal mine, yeah. And he just sings all day on his Has way he to got work. six mates? Apparently so. That, yeah. Okay, was it that, Carl? I'm, I'm still th sorry, I wasn't listening. I was just was thinking about. Someone just called up and called him dopey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, they? I mean, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Why? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you today? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just, what, is, big, what? You're fed up with people, um. Uh, uh, taking issue with some of the stupid things you say. Lego was invented by a mother going, let go of that. What are we gonna do with all the buildings? The earth might collapse. What do you expect people to say? Well, Even our it. listeners know you're talking rubbish. And some of those d d aren't allowed to wear socks. I mean... Listen, right, last week when I did Do We Need Em, um, do you know when I called up, um, one of the museums in a science museum? Yeah, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I wanted to tell you before when the song was on, but you're so busy listening to it. Yeah, oh, God! To... Oh! Was I so busy listening to a song I was playing? Yeah, but we're doing a radio show, aren't All right, we? what's your point? Well, <laughs> I just wanted to say, she emailed in to say I got her name wrong, so I'm just apologising for that. What did you just call her? I think I called her Jessica. What was her name? I don't know, I've got it on email somewhere. Well, this is not an apology! <laughs> no, I know, I'm You've just got saying... it wrong again! You've not even said her real name! How is that an apology? Well, I remember, I read the email, so, uh, yeah, I-, I But who are you apologizing to? Apologizing to? I think her name's Jackie, I think. Oh, you've got it wrong again, haven't ya? You... Well, uh, well, anyway, and she just said if you, you know, if you want to see dinosaurs and that, go to 
the, uh, museum. You were complaining about that as well, weren't you? You went to a museum and there was too many dinosaurs. You just said, he said you just need four. <laughs> no, well, Steve, have you been to the one at, <laughs> in Knightsbridge? I think this so. This one that I called up, right? It's nice. You go in, you get a good collection of stuff, you walk in, there's three or four dinosaurs, you've had enough, right? <laughs> go to- I went into New York, right, went to the museum there, hundreds of them. You can't move for dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they're responsible for them being extinct. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them. So all I'm saying is, if you want to see a dinosaur, um, go to the one near Knightsbridge. They've got a nice selection, some old vases and stuff. <laughs> it's worth going. So, do you uh, work for them? Because that was a pretty big sell. Well, that, 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 you could work that up into quite an advert, I imagine. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Carl, what, you're fed up, aren't you? Because you had to get up early. Well, that's another thing, but let's- will we give out the answers for- Let's do that after we've played the next tune. Um, I have to say that the- I'm wondering if Rockbusters, like Do We Need Them, is beginning to run its course, because yeah. this week we've had very, very few right answers. I think what you're just you getting too complicated. Yeah, because this- his clues and his answers are rubbish! Why don't you start doing proper ones? These are good. We started off easy. If I you don't know, these are- I think some of them are a bit tortuous. They but don't anyway. work. Some of them don't work. Well, come up with some stuff then. Let's play a tune. Well, I have. And, uh, we'll come back with the Rockbusters answers <laughs> in a second. You haven't come up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> the Gravediggers. 1-800-SUICIDE. It's a good tune, that. I've always yeah. enjoyed it. XFM 104.9. Well, that's an idiot from, uh, Ricky Gervais. That's me. Steve Merchant. One of the 50 most eligible bachelors in Britain. I hope people as well, if you buy Company Magazine, if there's any ladies listening, every week of course I've played you a song for the ladies, and I hope now that you'll be able to return the favour and maybe vote for me, buy Company Magazine, vote for me, so I become, uh, 50, the, the, the number one That's eligible bachelor. That wouldn't mean anything then, would it? What do you mean? Well, it wouldn't mean anything then, would it? If they voted you and you got, even got into, you know, the top 30, it wouldn't mean anything because you've asked them to do it. What are you talking about? Because it, it means that they care for me enough and that they are impressed and charmed by enough that they've actually made that effort. That's beautiful. That's I, beautiful think that, I think that would ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let's wait and see what the results are. Do you think, do you think, what do you, I mean, just, uh, you know, I mean, getting off that, you know, because we don't want, Steve to use as a platform to get in the top 48. That's bound to, he's bound to be a couple of people. Um, but, uh, what do you think of him now, Carl? Now you've known him for these many years. I mean, what do you think of his looks objectively now that you've known him? Can you remember what you first thought? He, like I say, he's changed a bit. He's sorted himself out a bit. Yeah. Looks a bit better. How was he done? Was he I done? I don't know. His hair's better. Yeah, what was it before? It was just a bit nothing-y. Do you know what I mean? It was like a- just like if you just let your hair grow and do its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now it's got a style. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. it looks good. Glasses, he's changed. His glasses are stylish. Yeah. Um, just stay sat down. <laughs> like rockbusters, rockbusters. <laughs> Some people like tall men. <laughs> yeah, go on. That's, yeah. Uh, but. right, first one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. That was R, which was rainbow. Right? Rainbow? Like, like rain is the weather and it smells like bow. Body bow? odour. Body odour. So it's B-O. It's B-O. It's B-O. Well, yeah, but you've got to play- It's not pronounced bow, and it's not spout bow. Um, Who calls it bow? Everyone knows it's B-O. Um, <laughs> what, you don't care? You don't care that that doesn't work? Well, they got it, so again, as long one as person it, got as it, as long Carl. as it. One person got it. Of all the emails, one person got it. Um, second one, uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat, will you, and help us out. Go on. That was R. That was Ronan. Ronan, right? Ronan, who's Ronan? <laughs> Ronan. Who's Ronan? Ronan? Ronan Keaton. But he's known well, as Ronan Keaton. Keaton. No, it's oh, okay. not. No, it's not anymore though. He's gone on, on his own, hasn't he? He's just known as Ronan. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's Ronan Keaton. He's always been known as Ronan Keaton. All right. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't work either. Go on. Third one. <laughs> Next. Uh, if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a little bit before you open it. That was CK. All right. Shake a can. Shake a can. If you're going to shake, <laughs> you can. This is the worst competition ever. So <laughs> it's Chaka. Have, have you got? A it's Chaka. It's Chaka. It's Chaka Khan. Shake a Khan. No, Chaka Khan. What you got? Chaka Khan might have worked. Is, to is, throw a can. Who got all three right then? Well, 
Well, because basically what happened was people just emailed this. in three guesses, we're stopping and, this. The, and the guesses that were right came from Mandy Thompson in Hendon. That's ruined that frankly, one. Then. Well, that's that's run that into the ground. That's do we need him ruined? No, we can't that's, just bin everything. That's on that's, one week. that's uh, I, I don't think we're going to get that. Oh, they're not as good as they think they are because you've only picked on Newton Einstein. You don't know anyone else. You don't know who Gandhi is. Um, uh, chimpanzee, that you've you've run out of. Uh, sort of I did like, like the one. jingle for that though. <laughs> oh, Jim Pansy that! That was a great jingle. Yeah. But sadly, um, we won't be able to use that again. So who's won anyway? Well, it was Mandy Thompson I mentioned, but as I say, she guessed, so I mean, she can have the prizes, she's welcome to them. But, uh, yeah. I think well, we should knock it on the head, Carl. Maybe she should come up with something yeah. new. No, I think it's still got a few weeks in it. I think we should ta take some time off. Well. <laughs> yeah. What about, like, the foreseeable future? Don't know. Song for the lovers. Do you want to just play A song for the ladies. Listen, um, you know what's a, you know, I think it's maybe the March issue of Company Magazine. Buy that. Uh, top 50 most eligible people. There's probably an address or a phone number to call. And here's another song for the ladies, maybe just to charm you further. Tom the Model by Beth Gibbons and Rusting Man. Carl, say and goodbye and say, say it nicely like you're happy. See you later. Oh, is that the best you can do? Badly drawn boy. Born again on XFM 104.9. Here we are then. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, raring to go. He's a bit grumpy, Carl. Woken up at because eight o'clock. Because he's from the north. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's in London. <laughs> yeah. And London's rubbish, right, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Where can you? You can't even get a band aid in London, can you? Or grouting. <laughs> in Manchester, I could walk to the next shop and definitely get get some flash or maybe some vim. You can't <laughs> get it down there. You got to go to a trendy bistro, haven't you? Carl, why are you grumpy? I told you before, I'm just a little bit tired today. Cause he had to get up, the builders next door woke him up. No. He's always going about his hours, those build builders probably got up at six. Yeah, but to I get can understand builders who, who get up early because they're building outside and they've got to get the job done before it gets dark, but he's working in someone's lounge. If it gets dark, put the light on. <laughs> it's not, it's not a problem. So why is he starting work at like seven o'clock in the morning? Well, because the builders get paid by the day. And if you get a bill there and go, I'll just do eleven till three, he's not gonna go, I tell you what, love, just give me a just give me forty quid. I didn't do a whole day. It's a day's work, isn't it? So you want to get the most out of them, don't you? Plus he probably wants to finish early so he can have a good night out. Yeah, it's a Saturday night, you know what I mean? He wants to Yeah, he like, wants to get at least fifteen pints in. And he was cheery, I bet he was whistling and you know, dancing yeah, around yeah, and tapping to, to you know, so I don't know why how you can be annoyed at that. Why don't you get earplugs? I don't like it, the idea of earplugs. Why? Because I live in a flat, so it's not as if I'm looking after my house, right? I, I know. Out already, already I've lost you. No. That wasn't even a whole sentence and I don't know what you're talking about. No, but what I mean is, what? if you live in a house, right, you know that you've turned the lights off downstairs, you know you've, you've, you haven't got a frying pan on, right? Right, well, okay, so, not the really. The pick keep going. But I live in a flat and I don't know what the other people are like, there might be some daft people in there who, who oh, don't. imagine that. Right? Who don't turn stuff off. Now if I have earplugs and the fire alarm's going off, yeah. I'm not gonna hear it, I'm gonna have a good sleep, but who knows what could happen. So <sighs> I don't- I don't like earplugs. It's not- it's not safe. Okay. If you live in a block of flats. But I think you'll find, cos I've used them, I think you'll find that a fire alarm will cut through I the I wear earplugs. them sometimes, uh, if it, it, it annoys you or I want to go to bed early or something, and I hear my alarm clock and it's- it's- it is- it goes- beep 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 beep. It's All that right. loud. Okay. Well, and a, a fire alarm is deafening. All right. So we've talked in the past about snails who sleep for thirteen years. No, you have. That's never been confirmed. In fact, the expert didn't hadn't heard of it. D well, they do. Okay. I, I read it on different sites. Okay. okay. So how much does it take to wake them up? <laughs> Got you. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, they sleep for thirteen years. Yeah, but it's probably. But I don't know what you mean by sleep. It's not the same sort of pattern that we have on a in a mollusk, is it? It's different. What what is sleep? It's it. It's, it's, when, it's when you're sort of shut down, and but they can estivate. They can actually literally no, shut down. No, but they didn't say like, that. They said they sleep. They sleep for thirteen years. <laughs> if, I, bet, I, I mean, have you ever had like more than ten hours sleep? Yeah. Feel really groggy. Well, yeah. no, I feel good after ten hours sleep. I feel rough. I just was thinking what a snail would be like. Be like, oh. Be even slower than normal. Be even slower than you. <laughs> Play a record. Well, anyway. Email yeah. in if you know what on earth Carl's talking about. Ever. Yeah. Who's Hank Clang? Who's he on XFM 104.9? Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a lot. 
We've got a lot to get through. We've got a lot to get through. We've got things like, uh, Radiohead to play. We've got Feeder. We've got, you know, Teenage Fan Club. You sure. know. We've, sure. got great, we've got two new competitions, Steve. Go on. A great one coming up. A film competition. I'm excited. That's great. And, uh, uh, a music based competition. Is it right to say that Rockbusters is no longer? We've still got Rockbusters. We really? still It's oh, hanging yeah, on yeah, by yeah. the oh, skin what? of its I teeth. I thought we got rid of that. I generally th I thought we'd all agreed that we got rid of that, Robin. No, no. I, think, I think we should do it. I think people like Nobody it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. It's because he got his name in Heat now. It's, it's no, Ricky Gervais, honestly. Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington, and Heat said they like Rockbusters. That's why Carl, he's I thought we had a he's meeting and we agreed that it was not going to happen anymore. He's well, worried about the fans. There's not a guy here emailed in. He just emailed in three band names. He said, "I may as well email in now, on the off chance these are right, because it's such an arbitrary quiz. Yeah, it's essentially a waste of time. The clues are so F complicated." D. Free de pain. <laughs> that was a classic. That was a classic <laughs> rockbuster, wasn't it? <laughs> when, when when they start getting a bit ridiculous and that, and people aren't getting them, oh, then we'll. You can't drink that pop now. Shaka Khan. <laughs> no. That was another that? piece of genius. Well, um, it, it, I think we've already reached that stage, Carl. To be I've truthful, only mate. just got in this river, and there's loads of logs. Just in Timber Lake, he said. River, <laughs> Lake, he said. River, Lake, he said. River. Um, <laughs> just few of the highlights of Rockbuster. Can you please promise that this is the last one today? Because it's really, I think it's just, it's bringing the show down. Uh, Steve, he can't promise he remember the answers today. How can he promise <laughs> what's going to happen next week? I still right. think it's got legs in it. Let's just see how it goes next week. You're not going to bring it back next week. It's got to be finished. We've got to put an end to it. We've got to give it a sort of final sending. Okay, let's, let's, let, I'll tell we've you We've got what. to smother it, Carl, for its own I, good. I do, I do want to trail this new film quiz we've got, because it's, it, it's, I mean, I'm excited. I think it's the, the best competition we've come up with, to mm. be quite honest. I mean, Carl, it, you, you agree, don't you? It's, it's all right, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a film-based quiz. Right. Uh, there'll be a, we'll, we'll play you a clip from a, a classic film. I can tell you the film we're gonna play, it's The Sixth Sense. Right. And there'll be a, a, a question afterwards, and you can win The Sixth Sense. On DVD? Yeah. Not, not the ability to sort of tell when someone's behind you, but just no. the film. You know, you know. Do you believe in sort of like, extra sensory sort of perception and stuff, Carl? Ghosts and that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course uh, you yeah. do, of course you do. Yeah. Not ghosts, no, the fact that people maybe can sense, uh, you know, b beings. There was a woman in on the Christian's breakfast show, right? Yeah. Blind woman. Right. Uh, clairvoyant. Is that her name? Uh, forgot. But she, she was a bit useless. Um, <laughs> she was a bit right useless. Now, oh, as it, I'm always worried about what's gonna come yeah, out of Yeah, I'm worried what you mean. What? Do you know what I mean? She's a bit rubbish at being a clairvoyant. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think if you're not that good at something, don't, don't go on the radio and do it. Carl, you better leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, sorry. What she was saying, So like, what was the relevance of her being, uh, blind? What was that for? What did you I say? I thought it was a bit weird. I think she was using that, because the fact that she can't see living people, but she can contact the dead ones. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, when so when sorry, this is XFM 104.9. No, once listen again, to you. Carl's opinions do not necessarily reflect, reflect those anyone. Of, those of any human beings. Any other person <laughs> alive today. Sorry, yeah, Carl, so why, she, why, wh how did she demonstrate her, her clairvoyance? Right, why was, was it not very convincing? She was sat in the chair you're at, mm -hmm. right? And people called Ooh, up and said, I sensed uh, that. Weird. Said, um, they called up and they said, right, uh, can you, uh, have a word with me, Gran? Yeah. And, uh, she goes, yeah, she's dead, isn't she? And it's like, yeah. She goes, ooh, and everyone's like, ooh, she knows her stuff. <laughs> it was 50-50 <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, and especially with a Gran, cos the person sounded about 35, so the chances are- Yeah. They haven't got a Gran anymore. Yeah. Um, and it was just- Unless it's like, the fellas from Busted, because they, in the year 3000, it's only, they've only got to a great-great-granddaughter, and that's a thousand years, so presumably, you know, they can live a lot longer. Yeah. I just wasn't convinced, anyway. I don't want to diss her, because, you know, she came in and she did her stuff and, and if people believe in it, I'm not gonna put it down, but it just was a little you bit You believe in it? You just <laughs> think she didn't have the real power, as opposed to it being rubbish. No, whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know what we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing <laughs> going. <laughs> I don't know what we were talking the about. Film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it, oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I, I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just, right, Steve, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you, right? <laughs> that, that isn't an insult. What were you talking about though? What was it, why did it you- It was the fact that 
people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's, it's like, you know, they, they were, they should, they should wear glasses. I, okay, w why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even if it wasn't no, intended as one. It, well. wasn't, it, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I but should listen. be made to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not. Oh, I'm doing go. it. I'm going to give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's, it's, it's you. Like you, you always even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Well, what you. <coughs> oh, that was real. Play a record. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Like you that's mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't Good. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. Cardigans, and for what it's worth, uh, in my opinion, one of the best things I've done for many a year. It's XFM 104.9. Look at your eyes with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Cayman Pilkington. <laughs> I sometimes wish you spoke like that for real, because <laughs> I, I wouldn't leave the studio with a headache then. <laughs> there you are, see? It's just kind of stinging back. <laughs> oh, dear. A lot of people sort of, I meet people in the street, they go, I wish I was Ricky Gervais's mate. No, you don't. <laughs> Let me put your mind at rest now. You're not missing anything, am I right, Carl? Who says that walking along the street? <laughs> no, people with that other instead. They shut up. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, just thinking. Oh, what's wrong with Reggie mate? Well, no, I've, I've met people that are friends of friends. Yeah, or... God, he must be fun to be yeah, with. Yeah, you know, you must in, in, in an enclosed space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In an echoey small oh, space. Oh, imagine sharing a prison cell with Ricky. <laughs> oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it, Carl? <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. Would well, I be the daddy, wouldn't I? I hate it. <laughs> the suicide rate in the prison would shoot through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> now come over here and suck mummy's- now listen. What right. do you reckon, Carl, to, uh, you know, being Ricky's friend? Did you find that an exhilarating experience, something that you were joining the party? It, it's alright for about an hour, and then anything over that is when he's just messing about and he wants to hit me on the head with a tray. We went- uh, we went for lunch yesterday, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had a drink in the week, didn't we? That was more than an hour, wasn't it? That was- that was a good- Is day. he okay when he's- when it's just the two of you? Cause I find as soon as there's a third person- Well, yeah, just to give he you- He just starts showing off. Well, there's a little bit of that, right? But I went out with Ricky, like he said, right, for a drink in a week, and uh, you know I went home, and Suzanne, my girlfriend, said, uh, "Where have you been?" I said, "Been out for a drink with Ricky." Hey, you've been out for a while. What have you been talking about? I'm fr I so sort of sat there for a minute and thought, "There's nothing that I can tell her we've been talking about that she'll show any interest in." <laughs> she said, "Well, you must remember something." I said, "I can't. I can't." She goes, no, something, just anything that you're talking about, what are you talking about? I said, right, the one I remember, <laughs> one of the topics that came up was, imagine that the only way to have a kid was you had to sleep with a squid. <laughs> How many kids would you have? I would say it was the future and the squid's taking over, the only way they could do it now is like a filter, you had to sleep with a squid, I was going, would you? He's going, what do you mean? <laughs> I was going, would you? He said, there's not a time he hasn't gone home with a conversation, it, it, buzzing in his head that he got confused about. Would anyone want a kid that much? <laughs> does, does the child look like a squid when you have it, or is no, it No, I was going, no, no, it's, it's normal, but it's like a filter with a system. The only way you can do it to make sure, you know, you have to, imp you know, you have to impregnate the squid and it's filter, and then you can, you know, test tube baby in the future. Did the busted it, lads mention that? In the <laughs> <of the street laughs> did, but he did run the water. That's yeah, where I got it yeah. from. I said, well, you probably sort of like get quite friendly with them. Eventually, you probably would be breeding with the squids and, you know. So what does prawns. what does Suzanne make of Javex? Has she met him a few times? Yeah, she just said, oh, she can understand why we sort of get on, because we both <laughs> sort of come up with daft stuff all the time and- Yeah. But I'm quite happy to have a discussion. I love the way that, it, it, it talks about his partner like, the adult. Well, I like, we're the two kids it. that go out playing that's talking about I, squids. That is exactly how I see Suzanne. <laughs> it's like, if, if she wasn't there, I don't think you'd get out of the house in the morning. Well, she's- You'd she's have tied not... your shoelaces together. Yeah, you'd have your ear <laughs> You'd have forgotten in. to put your trousers the on. The fire alarm would be going off, and, you know, someone would left a frying pan on, the builders would be sort of like throwing you round. Yeah, I imagine and she makes you like a round of sandwiches. <laughs> well, she, she's noticed that I don't ask as many questions now. Cause like, last night was one of the first times in ages that I'd asked her something, right? What did you ask? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> no, right, do you know like I'm always thinking stuff when I'm bored, right, <laughs> if, it's, if it's when I'm washing up or what have you. Yeah. And uh, last night, um, she was watching uh, that Midsummer- S uh, Midsummer Murders, Midsummer yeah. Murders, right, yeah. I don't like it, I think it's rubbish. Right, so uh, I'm sat there. <laughs> another thing you've got in common, then. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? I, but I let her watch it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? She really likes. He it, was so. standing, he's watching the microwave. She's going, Carl, no, <laughs> exactly. this is the telly. 
This is the telly. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, this chicken, this chicken's it's, gonna come I've seen this second. before, it's before, it comes round again in a minute. <laughs> Carl, come, that's the, what's the washing machine, Carl? <laughs> so she's watching it, loving it and that, and I'm, I'm bored cause it's just, you know, it's a boring program. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sort of looking through magazines that we've got. Trying to find animals without heads. And, yeah. uh, it was in one of her magazines and there's this article, right, about these I identical twins, <laughs> brothers, right, and one of them meets this girl, right, and it turns out she's got an identical- I've heard this, this is true. Right. They get married. She's got an identical sister. Right. So, they both go out. So two identical twins, male going out, going out with two identical twins' sisters. Yeah. yeah. So I was looking at it going, oh, that's, that's weird. Cause you see them like, they're always wearing the same cardigans and that, and that's like- But then, that's no, right. but if you were a technical twin, then you probably would fancy the same sort of person, wouldn't but you? But then, I was asking, she was going, shh, it's getting near the, you know, the plot, the murderer. <laughs> if they had a kid, would they look the same? Yeah. Would the, would, would well, not the necessarily, not necessarily, because it, it depends on what, what genes are passed over. Even though they've got the same exact sets of genes, that, that you don't pass on all the genes, do you? It's 50-50, but you don't pass on exactly the same genes in each sperm, let alone with an identical twin. Yeah, but even though you don't do that, like my brother and sister don't look like me, but no. you know they were related. Because they share, they share 50% of your and father's genes. And they talk genes. gobbledygook. Yeah. No, you share 50% of your father's genes and 50% of your mother's, but not the same 50% I I on two occasions. I think you completely lost, you lost already. it. When, lost you brought, already. when you brought in the word genes, yeah, I yeah, thought you were thinking, yeah. what, what, what no, they wouldn't necessarily. For? They wouldn't necessarily, no. They could do by. Did Suzanne chance. look at you <laughs> like Oliver Hardy looks at Stan Laurel <laughs> when he's just like nailed his hand to a wall or something? <laughs> she just, she, she went, ask Ricky tomorrow. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and then turned up John Nettles. And then turned it up. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, that is brilliant. I think there's a st I heard a story once where two, um, sets of Siamese twins married. What if you fancied the one on the left? Yeah. What if one of them was having an affair <laughs> behind the other one's back? <laughs> That'd be difficult to conduct, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh. Can you fetch him off? He's waking what up. Are what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing down nothing. there? What are you doing down there? Nothing. There's no one down here. Well, 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 I think there is because I can, I no. can see her sister here. <laughs> no. Well, no. What's she doing? What's she doing? No, they just She's covering for him. What are you covering for him for? He's your husband. <laughs> Is my wife down there? <laughs> I read something about some Siamese twins. Go on. And, um, <laughs> one of them was saying, you know, oh, we get on each other's nerves and that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the other one was going, we don't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. I ne yeah, I've never and, liked you. I've never liked you. <laughs> one of them was going, oh, you know, I hate doing the washing up, but I'll let her do it. And, um, the, the person doing the interview said, well, why don't you help out? Just dry up and get the job done quicker. And she was like, no, no, I, I can't stand it. I prefer just to hang around there and wait for the, for the other girl yeah. to do the washing up on her own rather than help and get the job done. Sure. Just selfish. <laughs> well, I, uh, there was one set of Siamese twins. One, one had a job and the other one didn't. <laughs> That's ludicrous. Yeah. The other one was unemployed. The other one had a job. She had to go to what? She had to get up at six o'clock on a day I'm off. I'm supporting you, literally. <laughs> yeah. Then they get done off the social for sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everyone was signing on. <laughs> uh, are you living together? <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. Feeder, just the way I'm feeding on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve and Carl. Right. Just having a having a whale of a time. Both of them. They they love being in this room with me for two hours. They, that is their favourite part of the week, I think, isn't it? That's, I, I, I haven't said that, but I'm assuming they love it. Um, right, competition time. Brand new competition we come up with. Uh, my favourite we've ever done, I'll be honest. Um, and a great prize, the six cents. You get a, you get a clip of a great film and then you get to keep the great film. Now, I'll just explain this competition. Um, I think Carl is a little bit of a frustrated actor. And so, by the power of technology, Carl takes the role in a film, um, and, uh, there's a question about it afterwards, um, this is, uh, a, a scene starring Carl Pilkington from The Sixth Sense. Hmm. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Hey, all right. Very quiet. I'm just 
Just think about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Clay, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but your loss. I'd give anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't, but like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said, right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This'll scare you, right? The other day, so so men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella, having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just 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 the old fellas having a Twix, boy. They they talk to you? No. They tell you to do things? No, because they were too busy eating. But what's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that... I would never think that about well, you. Well, ever. No. Got it? All right. <laughs> well, well uh, it's a very <laughs> chilling scene, that. That is great. Oh, that is sad. <laughs> It's a very spooky scene from the film The Sixth Sense. Rick, I think you've got a question. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Carl played it wonderfully there, the role of the, uh, the child that sees weird stuff. But who played the original role? What was the name of the child actor who played the original role? It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You can win a copy of The Sixth Sense. But I think we can, we can probably play it again later for those that missed it or those yeah, that caught the tail end or those uh, that need we'll another one. reminder. Yeah, you got, yeah, get, get, get your, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes, get your, um, answers in, we'll, we'll pick a lucky winner and then, uh, we'll play it again because I just, I think that we can, I think Carl can go to Hollywood with some of the things I've seen there. Mm. Absolutely okay. stunning. Absolutely Brilliant. stunning. Ricky at xfm.co.uk. Um, I'm gonna play uh, a track now. We tried to play it a couple of weeks ago, but the jumped. So I got a new CD of it. It's Papa Garcia, and this is La Natalie and Nusi. Natalie and Nusi by Papa Garcia. Um, well, we've had lots of emails already. Uh, in fact, my favourite one is a suggestion of the name of that feature, specific to this today's, is the Twix Sense. Indeed. Which, uh, was great. And feel free to send in your suggestions, because we're gonna try and do one a week, a classic film, with Carl in the, in the, you know, an important role. But if you wanna, you know, see Carl as maybe as, uh, you know, Michael Corleone in The Godfather, s you know, send in, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do, won't we, Carl? And don't, don't imagine that it has to be a, a male character. I imagine that you could play, for instance, Sharon Stone's role in, uh, Basic Instinct. I don't imagine it has to be a human. I mean, I'm a, 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 I mean, an animal he might, object. He might be better suited. He'd be very good as a rock. Yeah. Or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, mm -hmm. um, we're gonna, uh, pick up something we, we spoke about before. Um, we're gonna re announce we're gonna play that again, um, in, in a few minutes. But, um, uh, Carl wants to put the record straight, don't you? Carl's fed up with when he comes up with something that's a bit, a little bit fantastic and far-fetched and, wrong, that we take the mickey out of him. So, uh, he's brought in some hard evidence of the story, haven't you? Now, do you know, like, I find stuff on the internet and that, mm. right, and I come in and tell you about it and you go, that's rubbish. Yeah. And then you'll say, show your workings, mm. which I've never liked doing. No. When teachers say that, I hate that. Yeah. Because no. I, I normally can't. <laughs> no. No. I've always gone. He's, he's just got the answers five and I go, no, I asked for the capital of China. <laughs> yeah. The answer's five. <laughs> yeah. But, right, so, we started a feature a couple of weeks ago, um, chimpanzee, that, the thing about monkeys and stuff. Let's yeah. do the, just play the jingle right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Yeah, yeah. Right. right, we started that. That's facts about apes, isn't it? And yeah, monkeys, monkeys, chimps, chimps yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, um, I told you a story about, um, a monkey that was in a zoo. Yeah. And, um, it, it got pally with the zookeeper. Right, yes. Remember? It moved into his house, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, and did it ultimately have an affair with his wife? Yeah, it liked a little, uh, brandy at night and a cup of tea in the morning, then he went to work and it moved in on its wife. Yeah. Right. Now, I read that in a book. Yes. Right? But then I was looking for some more monkey stuff online the other day mm. and I found the same story. Right. From a different source. Okay. Which is always a good sign. And it's corroborated what you claimed, is it? 
Kind of. There you go. It's not a different source, though, is it? It's someone who read the same thing as you and printed it's it in the story, then. I left out a fact. His name's Oliver. <laughs> what, the monkey? So I got that wrong, yeah. The monkey's called Oliver. Can you see that, Steve? Oh, yes. Right. There's do a picture wanna, of him here. Do you want to read it? No, do you, do you, where is this from, then? Where, I, I, was, I was looking for world famous monkeys online, and it- www.apenaut.org. <laughs> <laughs> this is someone who, in America, is it, who set up a, a sort of similar website to, uh... where he is, but, yeah. Okay, uh, he was originally brought into the US with twelve other chimpanzees, but immediately stood out as different. He learned to drink, enjoy coffee and beer, and smoke cigars. <laughs> in the evenings, he would sit on the sofa and watch television. If his caregivers were out of coffee, he would walk into the kitchen, pour a cup, and take it into the den. As he got older, he made sexual advances on the wife, and as a result was sold. I reckon it was a, a stowaway. And to, to, to not get caught, he pretended to be a monkey. Yeah. Whereas really he was just a. That would make fella. sense because the final line is he's now living in retirement in Texas. <laughs> yeah. But well, I, I get the, my only query, and I don't mean to be disrespective, is that it doesn't really give much more information. I mean, I, I mean, someone who's set up a, a website like this, I'm worried that what I'm saying is I'm worried he's just kind of an American twin of you. Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I mean by that? There's no real hard evidence. There's no kind of dates. There's no uh, references to where where he was specifically or what you zoo he was in. Carl Pilkinhorn. Yeah. From Dallas. <laughs> Hi. We're cousins. Why do you need to know all that? The story's What there. do you mean why does he tell her that? Why, why not accept it? Because another fella reckons a chimp moved in on a, a, someone's wife. What I'm saying is th th he could be as he could be as much of a nutter as you. Do you see what I mean? I, what, what do you mean? Could be, he is. Yeah, exactly. What, and go to that much trouble of, like, yes. sorting out a website and that? You host a radio show, for goodness sake. To spout your idiocy. You say you have a website, it's hardly anything. He you might get a job. He was stressed yesterday, because we want to do, uh, another Chimpanzee That. Have we got a new story coming up for Chimpanzee That? Yeah, yeah. He was stressed yesterday, he goes, he's, he said, I'm really overworked, I'm really getting fed up. He said, he said, I haven't even, um, sorted out the story, um, about, uh, this monkey. He said, how overworked am I that I, I haven't even got time to sort out a story about a monkey? <laughs> you know how much I love that. Rick, do you think there's any way we could lure Oliver out of retirement to come over and produce this show? I think we probably could. <laughs> I'm uh, parched for a cup of coffee. Would you pop to the kitchen? We're gonna play a bit of Springsteen. Oh, I love it. For Martin Freeman, he said, please play some Springsteen or yeah. Bowie. I'm trying to get him into Motown, but he only likes level 42. Yeah. But this is for him. Well, that is the most popular competition we've done, judging by the amount of emails. The Twix sense there. Um, to be fair as well, Rick, there is a question that is answerable. I think that's also a reason why people yeah, have... it, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that's because I did it and not Carl, probably. <laughs> exactly. I asked the question there. Yeah. Um, we're gonna play it again, because other people want to hear it again, and, uh, then we will, uh, give the winner's name, and they will win that copy of it. Carl, in the sixth sense. Hmm. Jeez, I hope nobody got hurt. Big all right? You're very quiet. No, I'm just, just thinking about stuff. So. You're mad at Mr. Clay, aren't you? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. Uh, went down a storm playing the drums in Little Donkey, but your loss. Like if anything to have been there. Well, you wouldn't, because you didn't, but like I say, it's your loss, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just quiet because I'm thinking about stuff, like I said, right? I'll make a big deal out of it. What is it? Well, uh, I was just thinking, what would happen, right, if you put a chameleon on a mirror? How, how would it handle that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Well, you're scaring me. That's scaring you. This will scare you, right? The other day, so two old men sat there having a Twix. You never see that, do you? Old fella having a Twix. You see ghosts, Cole? No, just, just, just the old fellas having a Twix, but... Uh, so, they talk to you? No. They tell you the good things? No, because they were too busy eating, but... What's that got to do? What are you looking like that for? Do you, do you think I'm some sort of freak or something? Is that, is that I would never think that about well, you. Well, ever. Just, no. Got it? All right. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, oh, there you go. And so the question was, uh, who played the original role of that kid in the car who saw strange things? And the answer is Steve. Haley Joel Osment, of course, yeah. uh, who um, is a talented young performer, but I don't think really has anything on Carl Pilkington, who I think made that scene even more chilling and yeah. more uh, atmospheric than the definitely. original. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, we'll give this to, let's see, I think it's uh, Francis Marnie, who's emailed in. Uh, he or she said, I don't know if it's a he or she, but uh, says I that is, basically- I is male and, and he is- No, oh, well, I, think it's I is female and it, Frances or Fran- I Francis, don't know, anyway, do I? That could be a fake name, who knows. But uh, he, let's assume it's a he, he says he's a sad little nerd who, um, it was, it was his birthday yesterday and only his mum remembered, even his best friend forgot. Definitely a, definitely um, a bloke. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I can't really relate to life as a bit of a loser, a bit of a no. nerd, so I don't really know what he's talking about, but I imagine a lot of our audience do, so let's give it to him and sort of- I imagine, he's, I imagine he's a little four-eyed geek. Oh, <laughs> little loser. Little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, as I look again, I notice he's not even got the name right, he's spelled it Hayley Joel Osman. Oh. It's Osman, but, um, so he really is pathetic, I mean that's, what a pathetic Actually, little Actually, well, totally fun now, now we've humiliated him, don't give him the prize, give okay. it to else. Well, it's on TV tonight anyway, on ITV, no, so- No, no, well just done, Says, thank you for uh, listening and uh, well done for spotting who Carl was trying to. And whatever a... girl you fancy at school, ask her out. Say, come back to my place, watch The Sixth Sense. Yeah. She'll love it and you'll be guaranteed a shame. Why do you assume he was at school? I don't know, because his spelling is terrible. Although I'm looking at Carl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just a very badly put together email. I just assumed it was a kid. Right. Well, if he yeah. is a kid now and he's going through four interviews, he's probably really. I never dreamt it was a kid. I'm, really? I feel a bit bad now. Well, you thought it was a sort of 25 year old loser, yeah. even more pathetic in a way. Yeah. And now <laughs> I'm worried that, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've embarrassed, a, you know, a, a, an adolescent mm. live on, well, one of the biggest radio stations in the building. <laughs> it's not even, it's not even the biggest radio station in the building. <laughs> I true. can't believe that. It's the smallest radio station in this building. Right, now we've done that, right? Are we doing a proper competition? Yeah. Setting up the old, uh... Rockbusters, rock your favourite, yeah. innit? Well, let's play a tune before. I can't, I don't think I can face that well, straight away. Well, we've also, we've also got... That song sounds alright. Aren't we? Uh, yeah. Another new feature. That, that, that song sounds good. Can I just say before we play a record that, uh, we've had an email from Dickie Anderson. Dickers! <laughs> Richard oh, Anderson. Oh, Dickster, you dicky docky <laughs> dido, are oh, ya? Yeah. If you're a new uh, listener then you won't have uh, come across Richard before, but, but he loves he's, the a, show. he's our biggest fan. He's a bit of a and he loves the show, he taped it and listens back to it four or five times. But he... the great thing about him is he's not afraid to offer a bit of constructive criticism. Oh, well! What's he said? What's he well, said? Uh, all I'm going to say to you is he said, um, is it true that companies are now getting rid of hold music <laughs> and are instead using your show to irritate their customers while they're waiting on the phone? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, we're trying to we'll look into that, Dickie, but thanks for that. <laughs> I need direction. Teenage Fan Club on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Do keep your suggestions coming in for uh, roles that you'd like to see Carl playing in future editions of the quiz. This is the most popular comedy we've ever done. Has it got a name yet? Have we come up with a name? Uh, Holly Wouldn't. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, anyway, we had some suggestions. Um, <laughs> Neil Wilson in Bedford, he suggested he'd like to see you, Carl, playing the role of Clyde the Monkey <laughs> in yeah. uh, Every Which Way But Lose. That'd be great. Oh, and uh, also an excellent suggestion from Lee Gridley in Essex. The obvious role for you is, of course, Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man. I, I said that, didn't I? That's perfect. That'd, That'd be like, great. Yeah. Just imagine going, okay, you remember? Bet two for t yeah. good, remember? Yeah. Well, you've lost again. Yeah. It's, that'd be fantastic. I'm worried that you- I don't know, it's a bit of a stretch, Carl. Can you play someone who's that clever? <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> yeah. I want to do Elephant Man. <laughs> okay. Why, what sort of ideas you got for Elephant Man? Well, I don't know whether I'd be him or, like, the Doctor. Mm. What would you say if you were the Doctor? Just like, uh, oh, how do you do that? You know what I mean? How do you do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, can I- can I hear it? I've seen your head. <laughs> <laughs> or he goes, I'm not an animal, and you go, wow. Well, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Judging victim. by your head, you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Forrest that. Gump. Yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. Slows, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll keep them coming in. That's brilliant. So, uh. The competitions don't stop there, sadly. Yeah. No. Rockbusters. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, how about, right, we've got this other, other thing, right, this other music thing. Yeah. How about we make that part of How it? How many competitions have you got? No, well this is what I'm thinking, right, because we can- if you- if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, 
then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it. Do two of your rockbusters and th and one of these. Right. Are these Come the on prizes, Carl? They're the prizes. Well, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. All right, what we got here? Let's speed this up because I'm dropping off yeah, now. Yeah, I think. It's, it's either warm in the air or, or this isn't the most scintillating conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's uh, tracks that were sampled by <laughs> uh, various artists, including Jay Z, Happy Mondays, and so on. It's the original versions. That one looks mm. like good fun. Sure. I love you. Let me see. It's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Nat King Cole. Yeah. Some great, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters. Oh, yeah. That's another CD. Dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about. The Best Air Guitar Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good though. It's Paul Whitehouse's uh, TV show Happiness. That's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince. You can have that in your collection. Probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And so uh, subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and uh, M's Pop Music. So not oh, that yeah. bad a selection actually this week. He's Cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. So right, here we go. go. Rockbusters. Rockbusters, first one. I uh, will do two of these and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E. Right. And the second one, that builder's a I've bit. I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. that, that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute. Yeah. All right. And that's B T. BT. BT. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song and you've gotta guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it and then the show Here we go, here we go. There you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. not of an XFM type okay, song. That's great. Email so, so only. First, so I should just clarify that the first two are uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah. That's okay. Right, it's that's so right. confusing. No one's ever going to figure this out. They will though. They will. They'll do it. Ricky.gervais <laughs> at XFM. Hey, listen. We've got the best fans in the world, Steve. <laughs> remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Without them, we ain't nothing. Yeah. So good luck to you. <laughs> Pick a track, Steve. Uh, I'd love to. I want to wear some monkey magic. I want to wear some chimpanzee that. I want to wear some aping around. <laughs> we've got that still to come. Oh, about, I really. can't believe it. We've got Rockbusters. <laughs> that film sounds good. And we've got, oh, look at him up in Hollywood. -ant. And we've got, like, oh, monkey me, monkey you. We've got Gibbon on the horn. <laughs> Jesse Maiden, this is a great track. Coldplay, Clocks on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl. Pilkington. Right, give me some monkey magic, Carl. Hang on, you better do the jingle, ain't you? Oh. Oh, chimpanzee that! I oh, you'll like this one. Um, what I've found is, uh, found out like a lot of monkeys' names, like that's how I found out about Oliver. Yeah. What do you mean no. you found out a lot of monkeys' names? Well, there's uh, a lot of monkeys out there, and you think they're just called monkey and what have you, but they're all given names, right? So this, this one that I found about, bit of a weird name anyway, it's actually called Crap. Its name, right? And so they—they—they're th they're, they're not born with those names. It's not like their parents give them those names. You know, they're just yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But well, this one, right? And um, it's called crap. Yeah, I know. Right, but do you know what it's famous for? What crap? Yeah. No Go one. Is it involved with this show? <laughs> it, um, the first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> Yeah, again, I will say not by choice. There is no way that a chimp would go down to Camden Lock and go, uh, are you a registered tattooist? I am, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the cleanest, yeah. Go, okay, um... Can I have a look through your book? Can I have a look through your book? Um, I'm looking for something quite gothic, but, um, uh, I'd, I'd like, you know... What's your name? Crap. Oh, I'm not sure I can do that because you're not drunk, are you? I have another drink. I have another drink. I've had some, I've had some, uh, umbongo and that's all. <laughs> uh, but no. What are you talking about? The first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> what are you talking about, There's Carl? gotta be more information. Don't tell me you're leaving it there. There's gotta be more information. That was it. And then I read it thinking, well that's weird because that means there's loads of monkeys with tattoos on their head. If that's the first one. No. It could be still the only one. The first and only. Yeah, but would they report that? But, you what do you mean, mean would they report it? This isn't the Washington Post you're reading. <laughs> this is mentalists who do websites about themselves every day. Oh, I, yeah, I, 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 what? There's got to be a third Why is that, act that news? To that story? Why is that news? What, how did you come across that? 
Well, do you, you First mean, nut monkey with tattoo head, W- I mean, what are you talking about? But why did it have its name tattooed on its head? T- no, didn't, it didn't say, it didn't say that. I, I mean, I, yeah, I know, it's mad. But, <laughs> but he didn't say why. Was that enough for you, though? Did you feel satisfied out having read that? Did you not have other I questions? I mean, that, there's no way that that is in the Guinness Book of Records. There's no way uh, that that is, uh, excited in the Guinness Book of Records. I just read it as like, what a weird name for a monkey. And then, <laughs> ooh, you won't have that on your head. What and, would be a good name for a monkey? I don't know, uh, anything but that, really. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Ted. <laughs> but, what do you think of that then? Well, I don't know what to think about it, because I don't know what- I don't know what you're telling me. I don't know- I don't know that that's news, I don't know that it's true. Mm-hmm. I- I- I mean, I don't know where to start with that. Is that all you found? You found a, something about a ta- no, a I'll monkey? tell you right, when I was searching for stuff on monkeys, right? Yeah. I was searching around, like I always do, looking, finding information, right? Yeah. And, um, found out- uh, are you aware of the Iceman? The Iceman? Yeah. Go on. Right, and to me the monkey thing was more- What's the Iceman? Oh, uh, the man that was found in the ice. So you're aware and of And the Neanderthal man. Right, yeah. So, Ricky, do you know Not a monkey, the Iceman? No, no, I know, but I just was looking at, like, info. Right. right. The five thousand year old fella, it was preserved in a- in a glacier. That one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find that more fascinating than the monkey? Well, I- I know that it's true. Yeah, it's true, but do you find it more fascinating? Well, simply <laughs> because it's true I find it more fascinating. I can't act on some- uh, uh, if someone- uh, anything that's true is more fascinating. But, you see, what I get from the monkey thing, you yeah. go, oh, I wonder- wonder if it was happy about that and- <laughs> But you accept it straight away, you accept that that is true and interesting and I don't know what that is. I mean, to me it sounds like a bit of cruelty towards animals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that, 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 uh, I mean, if that's true, it's disgusting to tattoo uh, a monkey's head. It's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't do a- if a monkey, if they, if they reported that a monkey um, uh, went in and got a tattoo <laughs> and chose it itself and then was uh, riding a Harley Davidson down <laughs> Camden. I'd go, that is incredible, but I'd really want to see it on the news and it mustn't be anywhere near the 1st of April. You know what I mean? I think you've just blown next week's. <laughs> <laughs> Letter to Hermione, David Bowie of Space Oddity Album, XFM 104.9. See, do, 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 I don't know where- I, I, I thought you'd sort of learnt a little bit, Carl, what is a- an interesting fact and what might just be a mentalist online. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? Do you know what point we're making here? What- why the truth is so much more fact- even a little bit- uh, even something that's just, uh, you know, mild but is definitely the truth is so much more interesting that- than just wish fulfilment of truth. To me, if it starts with there was this ghost, right? It's not interesting. You could say anything. There was this ghost that could turn custard into wine. It doesn't matter. There was this ghost that had nine heads. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There was this <laughs> you know go- Carl's looking at you going, there's a ghost that can turn custard into wine? <laughs> yeah! It doesn't matter what you say after that. There's a ghost that can uh, uh, swallow alligators whole. The, f- the premise means it's not true to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like people say, you know what? Uh, God, right? He's incredible. I go, I'll stop you there. It, the fact that you can make the earth in seven days, well, you've lost me already. Do you know what I mean? Where if someone says something like, you know, a cockroach can live five days without a head, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right. Do you think when you die, they say, you're a ghost, this is gonna amaze you. <laughs> yeah. You can go and you can spook people out. Yeah. Do you like custard? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come over no, here. No. Well, if you don't, oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you like wine? Of course I do. <laughs> You are gonna love it. You're gonna love me. You're gonna love it. Yeah. I've lost all my loved ones. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? It's, it's it's what your sort of beliefs are based on. Mine are sort of on, I suppose, logic and and, and science. And so but what, I'm amazed by the world and and. So the Ice Man, why why does that amaze you? What's what's like? Oh, well, they 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 found some uh, uh, part of our preserved past. You know, it's interesting. I, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm amazed by anthropology and evolution. Yeah. Go it's on. just that- that- that line on its own like that, you know, they found an ice man is great, but then it went on and on and it's going on about, you know, they've had to get different people involved to find out how, how old it was. Because first of all, the story started off, right, <laughs> an old fellow on holiday somewhere, 
uh, where did they find it? In Sweden or something? And he was walking in the hills, and, He was uh, walking? In the hills. In hills? Was yeah. he a transvestite? In the mountains. Oh, right. In the hills. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's walking, walking about, and he sees this body in the, in the snow, and he thinks, oh. So he calls the, calls the police up, and they come and have a look, and he goes, oh yeah, it's probably a murder. So then, they di dig it up, and find out he's got hold of a spear in his hand. Right, and he's, and he's dressed like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Right. And they realise it's probably not a recent murder. Right. His knuckles are drugging on the floor, <laughs> he's yeah. a Neanderthal man, they yeah. think, hang on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> but when they found out, hang on, it's an old thing. It's an old thing! Can it? If it was a murder recent, then you'd go, hang on, how did this happen, who does he belong to? Yeah. Well, the chances are whoever murdered him is also dead. Five thousand years ago, probably, uh, yeah. So leave it. Just bury it. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's a murder investigation. No, but they are. It's not Quincy going, this is really, this was before my time. <laughs> it's no, not that, a murder that, investigation. Uh, yeah, just, just one thing bothers me, sir. Um, just one final thing. My wife loves you, <laughs> but, um, this guy. This that's, guy. That's how they were Why would he have a spear <laughs> yeah. and a leopard skin? <laughs> I, I just can't, I can't get over this. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. But what are you saying? What are you saying? Right, shut up everybody. What are you saying? You've got one chance now, you've got to ask me a question, and I will answer it the best way, but what are you saying? I'm what saying, is your question? Right, you probably spent a load of money trying That's not to a question. Out. That's not a question. Yeah, let me tell you what I'm saying, right? They're probably spending a load of money finding out stuff about this fella who died. And even if, even if he wasn't murdered, he'd be dead by now anyway. So get over it. Right? <laughs> Three thousand years ago, he, he, he died, mm. right? So then they start messing about with it, saying, well, how did he die? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It was, it was ages ago. Then, they start digging his belly open, seeing, uh, last meal that he ate. Yeah. Oh, he, he ate seeds and leaves. Well, no surprise, really. <laughs> he was now else around, again, spending more money. Someone's been paid money to sort that out. Then they bury him. And then said, hang on a minute, are you sure that he died by, like, a spear? Let's dig him up again. So they dig him up again and find some splinter Sorry, or something. Sorry, I don't believe they buried him. They did. Well, in some sort of fancy coffin so everyone can see him. But for me, that is more wasteful than sorting out something that's, you know, like someone who's ill. Sort, sort something out, you know, something. Yeah, they, 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 they're sorry, it's not either or. They don't- they didn't put a doctor out of surgery. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's not an old man in a bed in a yeah. corner or somewhere. Yeah, going, uh, Ted, oh, what are you doing? Someone... I'm just- I'm just giving this bloke a, a stat clear. <laughs> no, look, we found an old fella in a ski- okay, uh, <laughs> okay, you yeah. take over. It's not either or, Carl. What are you talking about? It's scientific research. But don't you see why this is fascinating? It gives us an insight into how we lived 3,000, 5,000 years ago. That's an incredible historical document. The what if it was your equivalent? What if it was like the Carl of the time and there's people, uh, you know, ghosts now through there going, oh God, you don't believe, don't, I, I don't believe it, they don't dug up Carl. They think we're all like that. Oh no, don't, oh no, they're going into his brain now. They're looking at how his brain works, we're gonna get such a bad rep. Oh, well, dear. Well, each to their own, if you like it. I just thought it was a bit of a... a waste of money. Bit of, bit, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, okay. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, we've, uh, will we give out the answers to Rockbusters next? If we yeah. must. Yeah. It sometimes stuns me. Mm. Sometimes I, I'm taken aback, do you know what I mean? But what worries me, it, it, what worries me is if one day aliens do visit... <laughs> I'd love and that. they come down, yeah. But what worries <laughs> me is they might bump in- what if they bump into you? What if they bump into you and they think that you represent mankind? And they, they go are. up and they- they okay. start another planet. They can act- they say, oh. we'll ask you three questions and if you answer them correctly, we will not blow up your planet. Yeah. We'd be doomed. Well, or, it depends. It depends what they ask you, don't they? What if they said- what if they said, right, Carl, what's the weirdest thing ever found in China? I'd say every Chinese kid. And they go, okay, right. Okay, interesting. Two, all right. What and don't you see anymore? What do you see an old book they're doing? Don't see an old fella e eating a Twix. Yeah, and they say, um, uh, what if they asked you, what's across the road from you when you're washing up? Uh, well, there's a few- three things, so you just want one of them? No, yeah. I want all three. You want all three? There was a Chinese kid dancing about in his underpants. Yeah. There was a bouncer every yeah. night getting ready to go to work. And the third one, the old woman reading a book, the same book. And they night. go, right, your planet's safe. See, <laughs> see- back in the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are a superior race. <laughs> Answers? Nearly done. Let's play Rockbusters. Alright, um, first one was, um, the Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E. The answer there, Eminem. 
M&M. <laughs> All right. The second one. Um, that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were BT. That was Bonnie Tyler. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we introduce a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. <laughs> and, uh, that was Prodigy. Smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that effect. There you go. No. Right, so have you got a winner? Yes, uh, Rob Preston from Croydon. He has got all three correct. And he wins a set bag of, of shite. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, so good luck. Enjoy that, uh, Rob. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. Sell it. Record and tape exchange and <laughs> 40 minutes of receiving it. I imagine the one good album that he likes. <laughs> Bob didn't on the tracks for all this bag of shite, please. <laughs> Should we play a record? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, can I just ask now, what are we thinking with Rockbusters? Are we sticking with this, or because I really thought we'd cancelled it? What about, what about that it? format we've just done, where there's like two? This is another off-air discussion, I think. Well, I just feel the listeners should be able to contribute. They do. Yeah. They phone in and say the show's rubbish. Mm. Move on. Um, can can we experiment on Carl? I'm yes. a doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would we, like to tattoo on would Carl. Would like to tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, Carl, have you got any tattoos? Have you have you ever thought about that? Any kind of piercings? Don't like the idea. Don't no? mess. Don't mess with your body and that. Okay. He doesn't like yeah. the human body. He's scared of it. But I told you then about me uncle mm, tattoo Stan. We've talked about that. Haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> tattoo Stan. Stan yeah. yeah. He's he's got loads, and I, yeah. I think now he sort of you know looks in the mirror and think, oh, what have I done? Yeah. But then again, so do you. I was With telling, life, telling Ricky before about someone who had a tattoo. Uh, it's a bit horrible, really, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember the t the skin thing. Oh God, yeah. You're not going to tell us it again. I'm, I'm hoping it's not true because it's from Carl, but it's pretty disgusting. But yeah, I'm, I'm, fortunately, because there's no paranormal or animals <laughs> <laughs> acting like humans involved, I think it might be true. It's a fellow who kept his dad's tattoo. Yeah, he just sort of when his dad passed away, he got the skin off and put it in a frame. Who'd you ask to do that? Oh, man alive! Uh, Ashes just to Ashes, that's- sorry, um, before we- Barry, you don't- <laughs> Before we come in, I've got do a Stanley knife. Do you do any other services? Like what, my son? I'll just- just pop- pop some of him in a- in a jar for me. I'm sorry? <laughs> Uh, how do you? I mean, that I is. I bought this clip frame from IKEA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could just slip yeah. that between. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, oh, that I, is I imagine your father is a man who's probably appalled by the idea of tattoos, earrings, things like that. I imagine he's quite an old school gent. He's, he's never sort of said anything, but uh, if you came back with an earring, what would you have said when you were a youngster? I never saw him that much as a kid, so I don't think he'd have noticed. My mum would have said, "What have you done that for?" Yeah. Our kid had a tattoo. And, uh, and, a, and an earring. Sorry, is this the one that took, uh, borrowed a tank from the army to go and get a packet of fads? Yeah, that's Well, funny. there you go. We must tell that story again next week. For yeah. those that are fairly new listeners, that's got to seem tantalising. Yeah. Your brother once drove a tank down to the local shops to buy some cigarettes. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's an extraordinary story. But that's it. We don't it was that it. other auntie you told me about in the week. Not Auntie Nora, the one that farted for five minutes, but there was another auntie you talked about. How many aunties have you got? I haven't really got another auntie. I've got me, me brother. Yeah. Who I haven't seen in ages. Yeah. My sister I haven't seen for about twelve years. Then I saw her again, and then she got fed up because I said, "Oh, you had a new kid. And you went with all the same. I've seen one. I've seen them all." Yeah. Why are you saying that to your sister? Your sister? You haven't seen her for how long? I haven't seen her for about twelve years, and then for some reason I met her in a car park in Wales. Right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And um, she got she got in the back of the car and she said, "Oh, I want to show you something, right?" And uh, she got this picture out and said, "Look at that." And it was one of my new nieces and nephews. You it was her, her, her daughter boy or, or her girl. son. Yeah. yeah, or whatever. And, uh, she said, look at that, and so... And I sort of said, well, there's no point showing it me. All babies look the same. There's they? no point in showing it me. It just takes two seconds of your life to go, oh, lovely. Yeah, right. That's all you have to do. If it was a first... Yeah. I'd say, oh, I'd show a bit of interest, even though... Do you, think the, do you think the novelty wore off her with the second kid, third kid? <laughs> Six kid. Yeah, I think even she should be bored of looking at pictures of babies. Kind of a woman is she? And can I get her phone number? Play a tune. Have we got? Is this it? Is this yeah, it? Have we got to wrap it all yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Go on, on. I forgot to bring in a song for the ladies this week, so I thought I'd play a song for people who enjoy the work of Deep Purple. <laughs> <laughs> that run and run. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's Deep Purple. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Ooh, chilly weather. Why not put on a cardigan? <laughs> that was the cardigans. <laughs> and for what it's worth, a lovely tune there. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a joy. We should definitely talk like that one. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Would you like Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton, all right? All right. Yeah? All right. Well, we got a, a jam-packed show today. Go on. We got, we got, oh, we got so many features. We got more features than Carl's got on his face. <laughs> which, is, which is about the same as Morph. Yeah. Very few. It's just, it's just really a head, isn't it? A little that's where I've seen him before. More. On Take Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we've got, uh, Rockbusters, that's, that's we? still oh, going strong. Have we? No, on that. No, yeah, but he's, 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 he's said he's gonna, um, buck his ideas up. We've got, oh, chimpanzee that. Carl finds a, uh, an amusing, uh, monkey or ape related story. Um, we've got, uh, Khan in a film again. Right, excellent. Yeah, we've had a lot of great response from that, Carl, uh, on the internet. It was my favourite thing we've done. People raving about that. Um, so and, what, uh, uh, can we say what the film is this and, week? Excuse me, friend, if you've got some bloody great music. <laughs> oh, pardon me, moo. Why? I don't know, I guess we French. <laughs> well, something. I'll just give you a, a taste. We've got Oasis, Cardigans, you just heard there. We've got Lloyd Carl, we've got a bit of Pretenders coming up, Eminem, Feeder, Coldplay, all the greats. Can I play some TD fan club later? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do we have now? Oasis. Go on, then. Yeah. Brilliant. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. Of it's a Saturday. Yes, thank Eggs you. XFM 104.9, Look at your face, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you sh we should, uh, do the competition, the, the, uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature, Do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's so good, it's yeah, so good. It's we should, exactly. we should tease it out of well, them. Well, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've Sure. So I haven't really... Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. And now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. Amazing. And, uh, Amazing I asked Carl's piece opinion. Of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe se mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotels suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hands are? I'll tell you what though, I did. What? Yeah, how are you look at, the man's got like a face that he's had reconstruct- well I can't I know. Say that, it's libelous. Yeah, no, but, no, um, he, hasn't, he hasn't, he's got he's an he's had two, he's had two nose jobs. Yeah. And you're looking at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like, it's, it, there's a bit of androgyny there but it's sort of like a- it is quite a, um, petite, sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these <laughs> labourer's hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? What? You can't accuse him of being a tranny? No, he's not. No, I'm, no he's not what a tranny. What are you saying? <laughs> no, I know, he's, he's not. got enough issues, now you're accusing him of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really, I really felt sorry for him. Um, and, uh, no, I think, he cleared up a few things, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work. But, um, uh, I did like the shopping spree, that was great. Extraordinary. Cause just got going around just taste. pointing. I know, it's, it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's uh, anything, sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like men. But if, it, yeah, I mean, and if it he, sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those, uh, porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or, uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of transvestites. Well, what? Like, what was it about his hands? But you, know, you know when you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he, he decides to uh, turn transvestite about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know right. what I mean? He's got a twin set of pearls and he goes, I've never felt so comfortable. But his hands are still big, he's got a little wig and he's got the lipstick on and he's with his teenage kids who are going, kill me. Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that why he was wearing that glove? You must be it. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. but I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hand. It would help him climb the trees. It, it's, it's <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, it, you know, it was alright. But, um, like, that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha programme got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like, ten o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <coughs> and he goes, uh, you so think so at ten o'clock? So you think you're yeah. preparing this show? Are Most people go to work about eight or nine. You're watching Trisha and that. I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? 
Um, freaks. Was it, f um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had me dinner late. <laughs> Like, mm. instead of having it at, like, one o'clock, like I normally do, yeah. I had it at, like, two-thirty, yeah. sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV2, um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we, we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the airy kid. Right. And, uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was, it was weird that this program was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I think you, you can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think, I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Right, right. Anyway. And, and, and that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no, it's so, conjoined, Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. You think that's Siamese legal twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Now, were you stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Right. Because they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh. God. Sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. God. What if one had bad breath? I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> 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 Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. Because there was a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, Amazing exactly. Things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like, t early learning um, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slight, open slight like dribble. <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know what I mean? That, like, where the cat sees a bird land on the balcony. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, 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 it can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a, like a birthday present? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? Um, I'd probably ask, uh, Yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. Like, ...what would happen? <laughs> How would handle that? <laughs> it's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what did he talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... I well, guess what I did today. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> brass in pocket, and if uh, they're pretending to be good, they're doing a bloody good job of it. <laughs> I love them. That's Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl is still buzzing about these conjoined twins. Hey, it's just. One of them, of course, had to be, because one of them was sort of shorter than the other, and had to be sort of wheeled around on a kind of trolley thing oh, by, this, by the other. By this the other is thing. Molly and Dolly, is it? No, they're not called, one's called Reba, and oh. I forget what the other one's called, Sheena, maybe, or something like that. Do you uh, remember, Carl? No, I wasn't that impressed with the names. It's just... <laughs> yeah. So you immediately put them out of your mind. <laughs> 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 Those are rubbish names. I'm just, uh, forget, 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 Carl, forget, were them, they, forget them. They're gone. Were they British or American? American. Yeah, American. Oh, because I've, I've, I've seen some Americans. Well, bizarrely, one of them was a, apparently, a country music star. This is Molly and Dolly. Well, they're not called the Molly one that joined at the Oi. The one that joined. But they're not. I think you've made up the Molly. And no, Dolly. it was on Jerry Springer. There's a little one that sits on a seat, and the other one carries it round, uh, her round, uh, and uh, <laughs> they're not called Molly and Dolly. <laughs> there was something like that. They're called. It, well, we know that one of them's called Reba, and I forget. The and other one of them was a country and western singer. Yeah, that. and one of. But she was saying, yeah, I've just uh, made a movie. It's coming out shortly <laughs> in theatres. Is and your sister other in it? Yeah, and the other one said, oh, I'm not involved. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, it's utterly bizarre because they they live they they work so hard to live their lives separate. Yeah, they say oh, it's you all know, yeah, exactly. of course. So, yeah, you know they don't, they try not to. So, so she's talking about her music career and the other one's sort of not taking any kind of credit for it, which is nice. It's weird though because when she was singing as well, the other one just stands there. She doesn't join in. She doesn't sort of dance. Offer backing or, vocals. Do you know what I mean? Make a group out of it. <laughs> yeah, a duo. Yeah, well. But it seems like we're sort of being horrible, but we're no, not. We're not. I mean, well, no, we're not. No, no, we're thing, laughing but... at Carl's amazement at, mm. at this phenomenon. Sorry, I, we're, I just got to say, we're not, we're not, you, you know, know the, taking you know the, the mickey. The really weird thing about all this, what? right? And it's annoying because you were saying about, you know, oh, what should have Trisha have asked and all that. Yeah. But one of them mentioned, um, that one of them was adopted and the other one wasn't. Don't talk rubbish. 
<laughs> no, seriously. I didn't understand it, right? Of and course then, you didn't. And then Trisha sort of said, well, let's have a chat and, and they were like, no, I don't want to go into that. What do you mean one was adopted That's what he said, one of them- <laughs> I don't- don't quiz me on it, but that, <laughs> that's what was- that's what was said. Hi there, I'm a- <laughs> Hello there, I'm a multi-millionaire. Oh, and yeah. I've uh, just seen your orphanage. Oh, I'd yeah, love lovely, to adopt yeah. one of your children. You'd like to adopt one? L I'd love to adopt a children. Really? I've got loads from around the world, so I'd love yeah. to adopt one. I'd, I'd give you ten thousand oh, dollars towards oh, your, uh, well, well, your orphanage. Oh, well, we'll speed it through then, yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. We've actually got two left. I so need one. I'm only interested right. in one. Yeah, I don't okay. need any more. Don't need any more. They're sisters. They, uh, they're I know it would be tragedy to break them up, but I really only need one. Now, break it up. There's the, there's the rub, you see. Sure, because, sure. Um, you just need the, the one. There's $10,000 now. You can have that. I'll sign it now, but okay. I don't want to discuss I'll it further. I'll bring it around. I'll bring brilliant. it around. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Ding dong. Hi, yeah, brilliant. You brought my kid, right? Yeah, there she is there. That's the joy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just standing next to a bush. Yeah, do you want to- can you bring her out towards no, me? It's like, there's, like, there's nothing behind the bush, so just- you just want- do I you just want- I want to be able- I just want to be able to walk 360 degrees round her. Do you want her or not? Yes, I- I can't believe it! What's that little trolley? She's <laughs> talented. Oh, dear. You're oh. talking nonsense, Carl. Well, whatever. <laughs> Feeder. That's it, just the way I'm feeling. XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's time for the- the newest quiz in town. <laughs> this is where Carl inserts himself into a seminal film. Last week, um, it was the little kid in Sixth Sense. You remember? To, uh, the great acclaim. The critics loved it. They said a triumph. Uh, this week, he's fiddled with the graduate. Um, this is the scene where, of course, uh, uh, he goes upstairs to the hotel room. And, um, he's, uh, it's, it's on the cards. She's a dead set, Mrs. Robinson. Well. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. <sighs> Tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Web fingers as well, but not related. And, uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I've never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about me head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what what do you mean? So is yours. Ed should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy ass. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a joy. Oh, dear. Oh. It was an absolute treat. Now, I should say that, obviously, uh, the prize is a copy of The Graduate. Now, bear in mind that XFM is giving away these prizes. Yeah. Carl is so cheap that he wouldn't even buy it on DVD. He's oh. bought it for six ninety nine on VHS. It'll be panned and scanned. It won't be widescreen. There's none of the extra features that you get on the DVD. Oh, That's look at Carl's you. face. He's gutted. Carl, did you pocket the rest of the cash? No, no. I have to use my own money to buy these, right? What, you're, you're using your own money to give this stuff away? Yeah. So I had to go and buy that. XFM is so cheap, I understand. I know. Right? I know. And, uh, it's not worth having it on DVD, is it? Why it's, not? An, it's an old film, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the quality is, is, uh, do you know what I mean? They can't really tidy it up. Of course they can! They do it from a print. They don't do it from the video. They don't get, they don't get the video and go, let's make it into yeah, a DVD. An old Betamax copy <laughs> that someone had knocking about. 
Yeah. Well, anyway, it's you the can... same film, though, isn't it? Uh, Fine, OK, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, film, yeah. you can win uh, six ninety <laughs> worth of The Graduate. The question, and it's email only, Steve, uh, Steve, it's not Steve, it's Ricky dot gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. The question is, name the actor that Carl uh, was taking the place of in the film, and of course the actress that he's performing opposite. Ricky dot gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Lovely. Do you want to play something from there? I would love to. It would seem appropriate. Yeah. Dear Mr. Simon and Mr. Garfunkel, please, let's not have the sound of silence. Let's have some more beautiful music. Get back together, please, quickly. Uh, that's it. I think what? you should do every single link. <laughs> It's the best bit of the show. <laughs> uh, that's uh, on XFM 104.9. Are we well, going to have time go. to play the clip again before, uh, I don't know, before two o'clock, let's say? Are people not listening to the question? Is that what you're- I Some just... people are not listening to the question. Oh dear. Okay, we'll, we'll play it again at about two then. And personally, any excuse to hear it again, because I thought it was- I, th I think Carl should go out and get the DVD. I think it's embarrassing to give away the- uh, Yeah, the you have to get it, you have to go out and buy the DVD later. Carl, on the DVD, it's got a booklet, it's got an audio commentary, it's got behind the scenes features, and it's got this pristine widescreen version of the film. You've got some cheap 6 99 version. Yeah, and on so, the HS. because you were being mean, because it was your own money, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to waste that now, because yeah. no one wants it. So it's gonna cost you t twice as much as it would have done if you just got the DVD the first time round. <laughs> a valuable yeah. lesson learned. Have yeah. I have I rewound it? <laughs> 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 There's a penalty if you've not. No, you haven't rewound it. Go and get the DVD later. They still, were they gonna win a DVD? No, I looked up the DVD and it was 18 quid. I'm Go and get it! Quid and it. claim it back! No, you've got to wait What ages. a cheap station this is. It's outrageous. I mean, oh. Well, do you want to go on with the other prizes with, uh, what we're giving away later? What, what is this for Rockbusters? Well, We don't give away prizes, we throw away prizes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like cleaning out, cleaning <laughs> yeah. out some drawers in XFM. Go on. I'm just having a quick look through before I- Cause we sort of revamped Rockbusters a bit, there's that extra bit. In it now, isn't it? That audio bit. You're selling it, you're big, you're big sell. Oh, we've got, a we're not going straight there. into that yet, then. There's a DVD, oh, right, yeah. there's a DVD there, what's I'll, that? I'll go through them later, Rick, I just need to absorb it. Don't so, get excited, mate. So, uh, who did, uh, Carl play in the clip? What actor's place did he, uh, take and what actress played opposite him? Um, that's Ricky Dr. Gervais. At xfm.co.uk. Sure. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Is that it, then? What we'll have we got all coming up? We've got some... Play a bit of Coldplay. Let's have a bit it. of Coldplay, be right. Coldplay. Yellow on XFM 104.9. Get it on DVD. It's an embarrassment. Seven quids worth of old video, pan and scanned. I bought it now, that's what they're getting. Right. He's put a downer on it. All the work, you know, that went into that, and then just gonna fob them off with a bit of old celluloid like that. Well, listen, still to come, right? We've got, um, the, the monkeys thing. Oh, chimpanzee that! And when I was out last Sunday, right, at Johnny's birthday party, yeah. Steve was there, Yeah. got talking about stuff, um, and a debate that we didn't really finish cropped up. It blew your mind, didn't it? Amazing. Oh, but I know about this. Steve told me. This is the, uh, infinite amount of monkeys, um, or a monkey with a typewriter and an infinite amount of time would eventually come up with the works of Shakespeare. Yeah. There was no debate. It's a philosophical, mathematical problem. There's no debate. It's true. It won't happen. No, listen, Carl, listen. Infinity sorts it all out for you, right? An infinite amount of monkeys at a time, right? They would do- they do everything. They type everything. Infinity just sorts it all out for you. There's no getting to it and they're going, oh well, uh, let's have a look what they've done. <gasps> this one's come close. Did Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> it would do it all. It would type everything ever possible, conceivable. Yeah, but-, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a mathematical well, infinity Well, we've sort. heard your side of the argument, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, it's a persuasive one, but let's hear Carl, because he yeah. heard about this in a pub last week, yeah, so you've got some strong What's your problem himself? with it? What's your problem with it? Well, f first of all, right, you're saying it's a load of monkeys. It's not just one monkey, that's- It depends. That can live forever. It, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter, with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or, it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already, that's, that's sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one What do you mean, what, what, you mean, the, Let, uh, employment laws, what can't... do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out, please. Okay. If it's one monkey, yeah, with a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? 
At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't- it's not- Keep going! Cry. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like- it's like if you have too many- what's that saying about too many chefs- Too many spoil chimps spoil the soup. Right. Well, it's the same thing. It's like, well, I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it. I was gonna put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying uh, is- I, I, just, just leave him go. I can't oh, be bothered, Steve. I want to hear, I want uh, to hear it, the This rest. blows my mind. He doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just- I just don't think it will happen. What I do mean, you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you, by definition. Well, what's stopping them typing the same thing again? They would. They- in fact, the problem should be, if you had an infinite amount, uh, uh, of time, that, um, it would type- that works with Shakespeare an infinite amount of times, and everything else an infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's not- that's just- that's- that's not as- But not- not Shakespeare. Oh! Shut up! You, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of monkeys, infinite number of typewriters, they will e type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> You're an idiot! Play a record, said, no, I'm not having this conversation. Not doing it from I'm not having it, I'm not having it, because it really, really winds me up. But you're saying they'll do it with no spelling errors. Well, they do it, uh, uh, they do it an infinite amount of times. And they do it, they do it wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they spell, uh, the last full stop, uh, wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they get one thing wrong in Hamlet wrong an infinite amount of times. They do everything an infinite amount of times. But are they going off a story that they've- Play a record, Carl, cos <laughs> I'm gonna knock you out! I'm just saying- Shut up! Do they know the story? Oh, I'm They're gonna... monkeys! Oh, Christ. No. Right, okay. Lloyd Cole. She's a girl, and I'm a man. Good that, innit? It's on XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. As yeah. ever, Rick, there's always someone who steps in to defend Carl. Uh, uh, well, okay, uh, what is the defence? What is the defence? Uh, here's a, a, an email from Scott Coomer. He says, Carl is actually right. I've got an A-level in statistics and probability. It doesn't matter how long they have and how many monkeys you have, you cannot guarantee they would type the complete works of Shakespeare. Infinity makes it probable they, they would get it right, but not definite. Yeah. Well, y yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. No, no, you weren't saying, Carl. You don't understand it. Infinity sort of sorts it out. That if they do, if they do, if they do anything, they they nearly do everything, won't they? No, I mean they'll give it a good shot. Right? <laughs> no, that's not the point. But, but the I'd point be is this: I'd surprised if they did one page right. Right, right. listen, <laughs> it's not to do with consciousness. It's not to do with them aiming. They are it's, just bashing away it's at like, the keyboard. It's, it's like they're, they're, they're used to show that there isn't consciousness. They, they, they chose the chimpanzee because it can type, presumably, it's hit because, the keyboard. It's because they hadn't come across you at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to take out thought out of it. It's to take out reason and trying, right? Mm. It's just random. They're saying that if you typed enough things, if a computer was left without typing everything, if you left it for an infinite amount of time, and they chose Shakespeare because there is meaning behind it, and it's difficult to get it exactly right to show you that Infinity would come up with a it's not just Shakespeare, it's every novel. It's everything. Fairly eloquent there from Gervais. A quick riposte please from Carl Pilkington. No, I'm just saying what I don't understand. If it hasn't read it, then how does uh, it know where it's going? Oh! I- listen, right, I- okay, listen, right, I- I- can I can't- I, can, I just, look, can I just explain to people, right? Some people have said, oh, why are you cruel to Carl? He drives me mental with things well, like that. What do you mean, well? Can well, I just- well, let me just- you just, you just take a breather. Said, how do I do your ending? He keeps coming in the week. You know that I work here properly, <laughs> yeah, in the week, don't I? Yeah, yeah, I've got a proper job, yeah? Yeah. Uh, should be nine to five, but I normally get in at about eight o'clock and work A lot of people get in at eight o'clock. Working hard, trying to do my job. Three times this week, I've been rushing around, I walk past my little studio, he's sat in there, all right? <laughs> now, because I've got this sort of job, I can get away with it. I said to him, if I was a doctor, Would he keep coming to me practice? If you were a doctor, there'd be <laughs> severe problems with the NHS. Yeah. Oh, imagine so, that. Uh, the standards I'm would have lowered so much we to, go to if lunch. you can arrive at the hospital you're well, a doctor. We'll pop in, I go to lunch, don't we? We have a little lunch break, don't we? Yeah. I go, come on, let's go now. He goes, I'm busy. I go, come on, let's go now. He's going, oh, you're doing me, Eddie. Well, when I was talking about the monkey conundrum with Carl, he said to me, right, if I had a day off work, and I was, say, watching the TV, and with one hand I was typing a uh, typewriter, <laughs> would I type Shakespeare? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, but you see, there's certain things. We were talking a little bit about this stuff the other week, weren't we? When we said uh, <laughs> you were going on about Einstein, and I said he's not that good. Um, 
you know, E equals MC squared, you know, it sounds good, but I've never used it and that- <laughs> I've never yeah. used it! Uh, you haven't used two and two equals four, Carl! The fella with an apple fell on his head. You know, it could have been anyone sat under that tree. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just annoying. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, and Newton, gets all, Newton gets all the credit <laughs> no, yeah. for his laws of the universe. <laughs> well, other people were working whilst he was having a lunch break under the tree. Okay. So in a way, it's like he didn't deserve to have that again, success story. Again, forget the apple and the tree and whether he was sitting down having a lunch break. It's, it's totally irrelevant. Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's certain things that will just happen. You know, it's like, I think we were talking when we were out eating the other week. We were talking about Noel Gallagher. Well, this is the reason the, the monkey right. discussion came up, right? We God. were- Noel Gallagher- I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Rick, I don't want to misquote Noel. I'm mean, like, uh, but Lom in Clue Song, I'm gonna get a twitch whenever he opens his mouth. I don't know what- I don't know- I don't know where to start with some of his statements. Well, as I say, this all- this discussion began because we were talking about a quote that Noel Gallagher supposedly gave. Now, I don't want to misquote Gallagher, but the gist of it was that he said, um, uh, had I- uh, written Wonderwall or whatever, instead of the Beatles writing Strawberry Fields or whatever, I'd be the one that was considered the great songwriter and it wouldn't be the Beatles, you know, it's just the fact that they came first that meant that they get all the credit as being the greatest band I in the world. I don't know where to start with that statement and, either. I mean, that's Gallagher's thing and, uh, and he's, you know, well, whatever, we know what you think, we think of that. What was your point, Carl? I, you agreed with him, didn't you? Yeah, I reckon, right, do you know how we've talked about putting a baby in a room before and it, and it'll know what colour it is and stuff? If, if you've got a room that's painted red, Right, but uh, forget that because that's going to confuse. Hear him out. Hear him out. Can I? Can I? Uh, Rick, hear listen him to me. Say if they did some new TV show, right? Like, um, what's that film with Jim Carrey in where the uh, the Truman Show? The Truman Show, right? So they make up a little room, and uh, some woman has some kids, and you say, right, let's put the kids in this room, and they don't know what's going on outside. They they, they don't know anything about like East Enders and that. It's like their little world, right? They don't know anything that's gone on. How could a child survive without these tenders? <laughs> right, listen, so you sat in the room, right, and then when they're all asleep- right, this, Wait for this bit. Someone pops- have, have you heard this Yeah, bit? wait for this bit. They're all in a room. Yeah. They're asleep. Yeah. Someone pops in, puts a guitar next to the bed, <laughs> right, nipped off out again. They wake up in the morning and uh, one of them goes, what's this? They don't even know it's a guitar because they've never seen one, right? They're talking English though. Yeah. We just left a guitar out of the vocabulary. Right, so- There's plenty more to come. So, one of them will pick it up and they'll go, I don't know what it is, and they'll start strumming and they'll go, that sounds good, doesn't it? Give them a few weeks, they could come up with Hey Jude. Whereas, saying, typing Shakespeare, a monkey that can't even spell- I see that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't answer it. I might come with you, Rick, if that's alright. Okay, we've got, we've got sort of a Christmas special as well. Yeah, no, sure, sure. Alright, I see that. I'll tune off in as well. Cheers, Carl. Cheers. Yashimi Battles the Pink Robots and XFM 104.9. Before the ad break, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. Great track. Lovely to hear that. Brilliant track. We're not scared of playing that sort of stuff, are we? Indeed. We've got some great- I think we're underestimated here. People think we're just like, you know, two guys and a buffoon in a room. <laughs> but we're so much more than that. We, you know, we try and put together a whole package for them, don't yeah. they, for their Saturday afternoon listening pleasure. If there was an infinite number of us three in an infinite, in an infinite number of studios, yeah. broadcasting for an infinite number of shows, would we ever do anything half decent? Yeah, we eventually- Would we ultimately come up with something quite what good? What was that email that you were laughing at? I can't, it's too rude. What does it say? It's well, too- it's too nasty. Oh, ha go on, give me the gist of it. The gist of it was that, um, it would mean that if there was that infinite number of monkeys, eventually, besides the fact that they would type the complete works of Shakespeare, they would also type the sentence, Carl Pilkington is a genius, but- the email also said it would also type, Ricky Gervais is a- I can't say the word, but uh... I know. Yeah. But a number of times they type it and write, Carl Pugin is a genius and Ricky Gervais is a cund. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were, they were, that would be there a lot. Um, yeah. Before we uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Richie Anderson! Dicky Docky Do! Richard Anderson, thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan. He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, that's what's the he great said? thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week, he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs> um, uh, possibly, uh, Anders, maybe send in a CV. 
Or email uh, a CV. He's got a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, ask him if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't no, mean... No, need to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you, no did I? No need to get nasty. Well... I was, I was thinking about that, actually, Steve. Oh, God. <laughs> Just talking of... of the old, uh... What? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know, like... This better be good. No, you don't have that many girlfriends and that. What, what do you mean? Carl, why are we on this? I wasn't- I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's oh, your point? No, what's, no, your no, point? what's your point? No, what's your point? What's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking... If there was an infinite number of Steves? <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you, you know, you're an odd looking fella. Uh, come on, Carl, get to the- No, you know I know that. I've told you that loads of times. What do you mean, you know I know that? Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve, I'm- I'm flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money. Huh? He's mean and weird looking. Valentine's Day. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh. Are you sort of? Oh. Uh, oh. You know. You've got to love him though, haven't you? What What are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant. This is really mental. Or are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> <laughs> wait, let's have let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, wait, we've got. A we've got so much honest. to get into this show. Insults. We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> no. Condoms. You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can ever go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always. Do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. <laughs> you don't even treat her at Christmas or on her birthday. When do you treat Hang her? Hang on a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute there. Oh, uh, why I order. <laughs> what? Well. Wait right. a minute. What was that? Tiffany Dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> I took her out last night and she enjoyed herself. Where'd yeah. you go? Until she had to write the check. Where'd you go? Where'd to, you go? Uh, to a chippy. A, a really. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Play a record. It's to a, a chippy. <laughs> no, a really a quality one. Right. Oh God! One under a fiver for two. Oh, nice lots. wrapping. Not newspaper. Greaseproof paper. And bread. And bread. Ash. And sometimes, on XFM 104.9, I'm looking to with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. We've got so much to get through. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, all right, London's shit, innit? Um, sorry, I shouldn't swear on an on air, on air much studio. Never, never swear on an on air studio. Yeah. Um, apologies, not really swearing, is it? I'll tell you what swearing is. <laughs> oh. oh. Um, so, uh, yeah, graduate, you're gonna play that again and give a winner. Give a winner. Well, let's hear it. Uh, so it's Carl Pilkington featuring in <laughs> The Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Thank you, babe. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. Tell you what, I've uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I've never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about my head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. 
And you can talk. Look at your saggy arse. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, dear. A classic. An Oscar-winning classic. Oh, Carl Pilkington. In The Graduate. But what was the question, Steve? The question was... Which actor was Carl Pilkington taking the role of? Well, that's easy. Everyone which actress knows that. was he, uh, performing opposite? I know that. And the answer's Ricky? Hoffman. Mm hmm And, um, uh, Bancroft. And Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and the, <laughs> 699 VHS cassette is going to Laura Gomez because she says that she'd be happy with the VHS, not the DVD, so, uh, best of luck to her. I hope she enjoys that. All right. Yeah? What will we do next week? Uh, I've, oh, got loads of, um, uh, I quite like hearing Carl in a sort of seductive environment. It gives you another insight into it. It gives you another dimension. I know. E.T. it is then. <laughs> Exhibit X. And the track X. Have you seen 8 Mile, really? I, I, I really enjoyed it. You'll notice Exhibit makes a little cameo in there. Yeah, and uh, th that last bit, that, that wrap off at the end it's was, good, was lovely. It was so... It was just like, it was like Rocky or something. Should we have a wrap-off, maybe next week? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <three> yeah. Of <laughs> <us>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try and, um, uh, master the art of talking yeah, civilly to each other first before we start making it rhyme. <laughs> oh, Rockbusters, Carl? Yeah. I'm not a champion of Rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. But I'm going well, to go Well, I think Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's yeah. a popular thing, isn't it? Got some good prizes. The well, behind it. <laughs> let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. Brilliant. We play a lot of trance on well, this I, station. Well, I put that on quite a lot and dance <laughs> exactly. do it myself. Uh, there's the, uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film Adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You like that, don't you? It's a good movie, yeah. Nicolas Cage playing himself it. and a twin brother. And, uh, it's written by, uh, Spike, uh, it's directed by Spike Jones. Joined at the, uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined mm. at the hip at all. No. Or, or at the face. And, uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What have we got on there? We've got things like uh, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, 99 Red Balloons. The Rembrandt. In fact, it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, then it's followed up by I'll Be There For You, The Thing From Friends by The Rembrandts. Yeah. And, of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. <laughs> is that the worst name ever? <laughs> I think it probably is. No, Sixpence None The Richer. Sixpence None The Richer. That's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we, we, I know we've got a lot of, uh, Chill Out fans who listen yeah, to yeah, us, so, um, yeah, 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 the best yeah. Chill Out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by, uh, Carl from, I well, guess, People's Drawers. Yeah, looking in a drawer, looking in a drawer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean, it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes, Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single, so if yeah, you're that's, it's that's early, isn't it? That's it's early, isn't it? You get that. It is worth A lot of people have got to wait 11 months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last Christmas? <laughs> is? <laughs> exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome on to DVD. a place evil calls home. And, uh, it's on DVD, it's Certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking. And it looks, uh, appalling. Is Rogue Red Mansion truly haunted to find out Professor duh, 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 so might, duh, 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 Okay, duh, duh, we've got the gist of it. They're not very good prizes, place. they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not right, let them so call in, Rick. Please I'll don't let you, these people call in. I'll no, no, some, they're not uh, calling in. It's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just... Um, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> right, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue and it makes up the answer and that. Well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go There's on. two of them, there's a new aspect which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, God. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet it would have been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been alright. B, right? Uh, band or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. Alright, initials. Just fills me with. Oh. D, S, D, S. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Alright? And the, uh, final bit, <laughs> two rockbusters. <laughs> uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. Goes along right. with it. That's uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to him talk all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. <laughs> right. That's terrifying. 
Right. I told you not to play that one. It's rubbish. No one'll get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that a couple of weeks ago. I said, it's rubbish. No one'll get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah. Uh -huh. Right. So, um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can win that stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me, I, I, I'm here. I've heard what you're saying. We've discussed this in the past. I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, a, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue, that, that um, screaming to a song, is it? To a screaming. Well, don't say it. So it should stand up by itself. Don't give him any clue. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist. Yeah, the that's, sound that's, that's so the first two are bands or artists, and the the, the last one <laughs> is the name of a song. <laughs> I said we should abandon this. I said we should just pack it in. What the show? Yes. <laughs> Come on, someone talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at his face. His headphones are too loud. Instead of turning them down, he's just grimacing, going, "These are too loud." <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. I, I you lived this long? How did you make it to 30 without getting squashed or eating something deadly poisonous? Oh, I told you, you used to choke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've had an email from, uh, uh, Placebo, the bitter end. We've had an email from Andrew Forrest, who has just simply entitled it, Carl Pillockton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl Pillockton. What do you think of that? Well, that's gotta be your new name from now on. Uh, I had a mate who, uh, who used to use it? Well, he used to call school? you that. Yeah. Was that your nickname at school, Pillington? No, it's not my nickname. It is now. No, it's not. It is now. Pillington. Pillington. Oi, Pillington. Oi, Pillington. Pillington, do Oi. my homework. Where Actually. do you live? Where do you come from, Pillington? No, there's this lad who uh, called Mark, right? Who used to go to school with, who uh, used to call me that, and uh, <laughs> his mum, right, was like obsessed with cleaning. And I was never allowed in their flat. The flat. <laughs> he makes the place look untidy. So she used to, I don't know if it was just me or all his mates, but I used to turn up and she goes, yeah, he is in, but you know what you've got to do? And I used to have to go round the side of his flat, and he had a computer, right, which he used to play, I, I didn't have one at that point, but he had one. And I used to have to go round the side of the flat and stand at his bedroom window with his window open and I'd be sort of leaning in playing the game. <laughs> you are joking. I'm not, you had the weirdest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. The, the things you were willing to do <laughs> is the strangest. What is this town like? No, I stopped going. Was, once was there always music? There's the horse in the house there. Oh, look at these two kids with big heads and webbed feet. All right, all right, Ronnie. All right, Reggie. What? What was no, it, it was, like? She was, she was obsessed. It is like you've grown up in a cartoon made for children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, his mum was really, um, obsessed with cleaning. I, I, when, um... Can I play through his window? <laughs> I used to... Used Put to Mrs. Ramsbottom, can I play through Mark's window? Aight, you know what you have to do. She used to be up to that. Is that Pillington again? Have <laughs> <laughs> you, you washed your hands? Well, until three in the morning, washing. She used to be up doing the tiles in the kitchen. Washing until three in the morning? Until three in the morning. And for ages and ages, I, that's, that saying that out on the tiles, I used to think that came from, like, his mum, because she was out, like, cle cleaning them late, so, until I was about 13, I thought that saying, out late, on the tiles, yeah. was... And now you're not confused by anything. Well... <laughs> There's no misunderstandings in your life now, is there? So what yeah. did, was he was allowed to walk in and out of the house, was no, he? No, he was alright, but, and he used to come round to ours a lot, and my mum used to get these pies from Agenbach's, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's at that bakery where they used to chuck the cakes out the back, that oh, I yeah. told you about. Yeah. Oh, and you at six, you at six. He loved it, but I could never go round to theirs, or if I did, it was like, well, yeah, he is in, and I'd go, all right, and then I'd, I'd walk round the side of the flat, <laughs> stand outside. <laughs> Why did you ever knock at the door? Why don't you just go round and knock on the window? Just to check he's in, because he wasn't always in his room. If you he say was it was in the a... lounge, he'd have to go to his bedroom and then... That's you say meet you. I, this is the strangest, and you'd play a computer game through the window. You yeah. say it was a flat. It wasn't like a fifth story one, and you had to get in one of those kind of cleaning contraptions <laughs> and like winch your way up. <laughs> I love the idea of that. So. Oh, Pillockton. So, right, uh, we're done, Rockwell. Right. Right. Have you got me any, uh, chimpanzee that? We've or? got monkey news still, still to cram in in the next, like, Let's do monkey news now. I, want, no, I need some monkey no, news. No, I think we've done enough here, right? What do you mean? I think we've done enough here. We'll, we'll play a little song, eh? What? Play, um, play the verb. Alright. Hey? Go on, he's uh, getting all stressed because I screamed. Sparky Stream, Teenage Fan Club. I'll tell you, I'm sick of the screaming, Rick. I'm <laughs> sick of that. I mean, no wonder Carl hates you, and that is a word I don't use often, but he does, and I've spoken <coughs> to him in the past, and he loathes you. Monkey News. 
Give us one of the screams so the audience at home gets a taste of it. I'm taking my headphones off. No, I'm not going to scream. Go on, let's see what let's ah! Right, well, that come wasn't on. what you were doing. Uh, was it worse than that? Yes! Right, come on, monkey news. We're, we're not, not called we're monkey not... news. It's not called monkey news. Uh, chimpanzee, we're not going to pack all the monkey stuff in. We've got a quarter of an hour. <laughs> what other show can say that? <laughs> yeah. We've got our, we're not going to pack in all the monkey yeah. news. We've got 15 minutes, but we can't get all the monkey information. <laughs> right, come on. Well, you're going to love this one. Uh, go on, there's there... uh, other jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Right, um, I don't know how recent this was. Oh, God. 17th century? But it, ha it happened in Acne, right? Uh, if you're outside London, that's in that place in London. Um, and it's this monkey that's going about Acne, nicking DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Even the monkey didn't go for videos. <laughs> Even the monkey knew. Well, there's no point getting on VHS. The grudge were on VHS. You know, <laughs> do it back. Right, and. There's a girl called Lisa who works in our office here, right? And I mentioned it to her because she lives in Hackney. I said, uh, are you familiar with this? And, uh, she said, oh, I remember something about it, which annoyed me. The fact that a monkey was running riot, but she couldn't, she didn't know the full story. <laughs> and she lives there. What, you, what do you mean a monkey? Do you mean a, do you mean a chimpanzee? Or a um, monkey? I don't know. Is he a zoo in Hackney? Is he a zoo there? I don't, I don't know, know what sort it was. But it, it, it was like- Is gone. there a zoo in Hackney? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I was asking. <laughs> so, right, get um, on with the story. So anyway, so yeah, it's been robbing stuff, and um, <laughs> the p the other bit that really puzzled me, right, is the fact that. And you're not easily puzzled by monkey news. They took fingerprints. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they took fingerprints presumably because they didn't know it was a monkey to start with. No, they did. They saw it. They saw it. Nicking stuff, <laughs> and they said get fingerprints. What? So that means there's more than just one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart. Attack. He had to fax them to Interpol. Yeah, yeah. We know that is. Yeah, it's Brian. It's Brian the monkey. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry, I don't. He was stealing DVDs, specifically DVDs. Yeah, DVDs. I think it said watches and stuff. What breaking into homes? Yeah, in Hackney. Maybe. Are you sure somewhere. it wasn't a kid with a mask on? No, seriously. How was he breaking into homes? They're good, aren't Up the they? drain pipe. They're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? <laughs> but why would they do so that? So is that the news? Well, that's what, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news? For, for this week. Well, I don't know that it's true. Again, I've got nothing there was, to... there was other stuff. There was another story that I found about a monkey, but I'd, I would like to know from someone if, in Hackney if... Do you know what I mean? And I missed that one on Crime Watch, which would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> right? But there was another story about one that, uh Kept getting on buses, not paying its fare. Not paying its fare. And just sat in a corner reading the paper. <laughs> reading the paper, Carl. You're an idiot. Well, that, that wasn't in London. You're an idiot. That, that was in America. It wouldn't read the paper. Why wouldn't it read the paper? Because it was its way of sort of going, oh, well, if I'm reading something, maybe the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the inspector will notice my hairy hands. <laughs> oh, Carl, you're such a fool! Well, Pilotton. Carl, Carl, I've just had a news flash that an infinite number of monkeys in Hackney are nicking an infinite number of typewriters. Yeah. We don't no. know what for. At this stage, we've got no more information. And they've, they've taken back an infinite amount of graduate on video. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that this is yeah. rubbish. <laughs> Superglass, seen the light. I just think of people, sort of, uh, other Saturday, going, uh, you're coming shopping. I go, I can't, I'm listening to, uh, <laughs> XFM. There might be some monkey news. <laughs> and they waited two hours for that. That one. What sort of. What sort of a show has a feature called Monkey News? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, the, uh, the monkey story has been corroborated. Someone Which has one? Well, this one, uh, it says, uh, police in Britain this week are on the lookout for a very different kind of burglar, a chimpanzee who has been sighted breaking into a house in Hackney, stealing a mobile phone and leaving. The chimp is also the prime suspect in a break and entry in a nearby house where part of a radio was taken. One policeman stated that it might have been trained to steal, but a monkey's not gonna think, that's a mobile phone, I'll just have that. Look at Carl's face. Yeah. Fact. That's fact. So, um, rockbusters then. Yeah. Get, get these out of the way, we... We're out of time now. I have to say now that so. we've had no answers that have attempted even to guess all three. Right, you see, now, see, that's because you're an idiot. Uh, right, okay, right, do, do the question, do the questions and the answers, and uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we're binning it. 
Right. I thought we'd already been. I'm annoyed. That right. Come on. Do do do. do what was the, do do it quickly. Uh, the first one was well. If he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. Well, what's the answer? That was D. What's the answer? Busted. Right. That works. All Busted. Right. That's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got. No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right. What's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Um, Busted. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go on. That was DS. Yeah. Uh, 70s band, Detroit Spinners. <laughs> <laughs> the Detroit Spinners have become the Detroit Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um. Brilliant. And then the final bit, I'll play you some effects. Let's do this. Let's do this. It's terrifying, Carl. It's terrifying. Well, what's happened there? What what was happening? What, no, 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 no. What's it? the answer? That was uh, born slippy. She, the woman was having a baby. The doctor tried to grab it. It fell onto the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's and noise. in your head. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm. Uh, uh, do you know what? I haven't even got onto born slippy. I'm still on the <laughs> trout spinners. Well, let's put a song. That's it. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know what to say. A song for the- A song for the ladies, surely. Uh, Did anyone get any of those? Let's end with Nick Drake and the beautiful River Man, and we'll see you next week, and hopefully- Bob Slippy, Detroit Spinners. Detroit Spinners. Well, don't keep saying it. <laughs> you say it like that. Well, don't.